Well, a pleasant morning to you and welcome to round two of the Ghana Cricket Board Senior Male Intercounty Tournament 2022. We greet you with the exciting news that it's extremely good weather here at the GCC Ground Border where Barbies will take on Esukibo. Both teams winning their opening encounter two days ago at Burbies and the GCB President's Eleven. My name is John Ramsing alongside Matthew Kisun and former Guyana fast bowler Jermaine Neblet. We will bring you the commentary today on what's happening in this very enthralling encounter between the two teams that won their opening encounter two days ago, Burbies and Eskibo. The toss went up this morning and it was Anthony Adams of Eskibo calling correctly and Eskibo having a bat first this morning. It's a slight delayed start because I'm down and it will be Eskibo taking first strike. Eskibo team today, Anthony Adams captain, Garfield Phillips, Newland Cadogan, Kimo Paul, Ricardo Adams, Kevin Christian and Heyman Singh. That's the 11 for Eskibo. Kimo Paul and Heyman Singh coming into the 11 today. And of course no runs for beaten. I understand he has a, a little bit of a flu this morning. So Barbies uh, unchanged from their last match against Demerara right here at Border. Where Sami Pomal captain Shimon Hetmeyer, Jonathan Fu, Anthony Bramble, Romario Shepard, Clinton Pestano, Kevin Sinclair, Junior Sinclair, Gudakesh Moti, Nal Smith and the teenager Rampatab Ramnot, no Jason Sinclair, no Ian Hooper, and no Dimitri Cameron. I know my good friend, the good pastor Warren Matthew Kisun. Good morning to you, John. Morning to everyone following live streaming all across Guyana and to every part of the region and the world at large. Rung number two, top of the table after rung one with both teams, Asikibo and Borbis, coming out with victories. Uh, Burbies with 89 runs and Esikibo beating the President's 11 by 8 wickets. So both teams will be very positive, very confident. And when you look at the men coming out to bat for Esikibo, and you look at uh, one Budi uh, who got a wonderful 92 at Everest on Monday, the national holiday, and uh, coming to bat with him is Kevin Christian, who will be opening for the first time. Um, alongside him, uh, because I think Nathan Passard would have opened the, in that first game. Uh, Esikibo, they've got nothing to lose, John. Uh, we tend to believe uh, in these parts that Esikibo as a county has underperformed. They've got good cricketers, good players, but they haven't quite lived up to expectations. They tend to be the dark horse that you may expect to come and perform a miracle, win a match or two, show that they've got uh, good players, good quality players in the team. And uh, they've done well against the President's Eleven. But let's remember that the President's Eleven team is a young side under the leadership of Trevon Griffith. Um, he's got to marshal the good score. They were able to chase down that 237. And they got to 240 for 21.3 overs in round number one. Burbies, on the other hand, they, they've... There, there, there has been a run feast against Demerara. What? Three, six or three for six. Bramble, the big man, back in the, the tick of things, 106 for 71 at my 58, Shepard 40. The young teenager, Rampatab, Rampatab Ramnath 36. And it shows the strength of Burbies. We know that the structure of their cricket is exceptional. Uh, the clubs throughout the quarantine area and so on, they play a lot of cricket. These guys are able to practice a lot, and they've, they've set high standards. Thanks to a good leadership team as well, headed by Hilbert Foster and his team. They've done very well with these young men from Barbies down through the years, and they're the defending champions, John Ramsing, and one would expect that they'll perform well against Sessi Gable. Defending champions, perhaps the longest reign as defending champions we ever had in the county at this level for a number of years, dating back to, I think, 2014. It's going to be... For Mario Shepard, who's going to pick up the attack, opening with one of the two new balls. This is 50 overs cricket. Two new balls tend to be used, one at each end. So Romario Shepard will be coming from the Regent Road end here at Border. He's going to be bowling to Kevin Christian and Kevin Booty. We'll, we'll see who's going to be taking strike. Kevin Christian 
are the non-strikers then for this one and Kevin Budi, who, like you mentioned, 92 in the first round, will be, com will be coming off of that high. I know Budi had a double hundred uh, uh, many years ago for Eskibo at this level, and that gave him the opportunity to play for the Ghana franchise back then in the regional tournament. Correct. A, a very uh, pugnacious, aggressive, hard-hitting batsman. And I think uh, he will need a very good score here as well to give Eskibo a good start. And they don't want to lose quick wickets. It's nice to see uh, Kimo Paul in. Kimo Paul and Heyman Singh. Uh, they're in. Beaten out and Prasad out. I think Beaten had the flu from the first game. He had only bowled five overs. And um, he didn't pick up a wicket. But um, he's out. And um, it's good to see someone like Singh in. And of course, Kimo Paul, who we know so much about. Look at the attacking field, John Ramsing, for Bird. Yeah, you can see on the monitor, three slips on the gully. Shemar Hetmai in the gully. And Captain here, Sami Pamal, ringing the changes. Romario Shepard, number 68, on his back. Be running away from us as soon as he gets the, gets the marching orders from the umpire. So, umpire Nagasar. Dodger Nagasar, he's from the Essequibo area. Well, he's Bank of Essequibo. Yeah, and Flemroy, Flemroy Lambert, Lambert is the man from Linden. Good umpire as well. Yeah, sorry, he said he's an assistant HR, Guy Suko. Yes. He's currently at, uh, at Enmore. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. He's been around for a while. His a brother trade union mem member as well. That's right. Yeah. His brother works with me at the company I work for. He's been with that, at that company for a number of years as well. So the first ball. Ill-directed and already runs on the board for Esukibo. Too wide of the mark on that occasion from Shepard. But Border produced lots of runs recently in the last round. 363 when Burby's batted. Seems as if, as if it was a different track when Demar batted. 174 all out. Yeah, I guess um, you look at the Demar side... Um, a little bit lacking in in some of their players. They'll have to do well in their match against President's Eleven. Away movement from Shepard, just outside the line in the off stump. That was evident from Shepard in the last game. Lots of lateral movement with the new ball. Did not bowl a long spell and did not come back for a second spell because Demrara folded in just 29.3 overs. But what he did with that new ball was get exaggerated away movement from the right-handers. An inward movement to the left-handers. So I think he's going to be utilizing this new ball again in that same way. Hence the reason for the attacking feel as well. Uh, Budi picks up the line. Nothing too difficult about that. A little more to the off stump. And he can have him in a bit of trouble. And you've got three sips in a gully waiting there to gobble him up. I thought that Shepard, you know, he's been expensive. We've watched him playing for the West Indies and then uh, in the CPL. He's been expensive, sometimes difficult to know how to use him in T20 cricket. But I thought in, in the last two games of the CPL, he did improve. First run off the bat. So Budi's off the mark. The right handed Eskibian. He's won. Yeah, Shepard struggled in the death overs in the shortest format of the game. I must rephrase that, the T20 format, because we've seen 10-10 coming out recently. Yeah, but uh, and I think in the latter part of the CPL, captain opted to use him with the new ball and in the middle overs in that. I think if you, you're being smart in T20 cricket, because you, 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 you cannot be one-dimensional or limited in your way of thinking in T10, T20 cricket. Yes, if you give him a two overs ball at the top, and then give him one in the middle and one coming to the back end. That's where he struggles, at the back end. Young Christian playing and missing his first delivery. 
Ten not out. out. Ten yeah. not out in that first game, Christian. Yeah. In that total of 240. But this time opening the batting. He batted in the middle order the last time for Esquivo and their victory against the President's Eleven at Everest. How does the track look here, the good pastor? Look, it, it looks good. Uh, brilliant sunshine, cotton like clouds above, nothing threatening at all. But looks to be a good day for cricket. Into County, senior, this is what you want from a Guyana perspective. You want your top players to be on show. Uh, this is 50 over, so they've got to pace their innings well. The first 10 overs, only two men can be outside the 30-yard circle. That's the first power play. Followed by overs 11 to 39. Second power play, where you can have, what, four? Four outside. And uh, whatever little you picked up about that first game, I mean, you were here, but in that game with Esikibo, they hardly had men outside the circle at all uh, because they were attacking all the time. And they were picking up wickets too. Oh, that's a good short ball on the line of the body. That will complete the first over. So Esquivo winning the toss and batting. Two without loss, one to body and one to extras. Uh, and Shepard is one of the players that uh, you would expect to always be ready in the event of a, a call by the West Indies selectors in, you know, in case of any trouble down under in the World Cup. So I suppose he's got his bag packed and ready. So he's using the second bag, of course. So bags waiting with all the gears in, inside him, a flight ready for them to go up. But uh, I thought that, that Shepard, uh, his control wasn't bad at all his first over, uh, getting warmed up. And that's what you need from someone like Shepard. I, I thought that maybe after CPL, uh, someone would have spoken to him very, very nicely and seriously as well. And say, hey, Sheppy, you've got to get it right. You're one of the promising bowlers in West Indies cricket. And you just need to get it right. Uh, get on a good line and a good length. Bowl with good control. And you will always be a threat uh, as a medium fast bowler. Man on your screen is Niall Smith. He's going to be using the second new ball. And he's going to be running from the northern bowl with lots of pace as well in that last game. But Leon Johnson took a liking to his bowling. Took four boundaries off his over. Then he was out of the attack for the rest of the day. He looking to make amends, Niall Smith. Another opportunity for the right arm seamer. You mentioned Weston is in the last warm-up game for the T20 World Cup. It was rained out against Netherlands last night. Like Shepard, Smith starts down the leg side to Booty. So once now they'll travel to Melbourne. Sorry, it was raining in Melbourne last night. So they'll now travel to Hobart for the four strong matches in the T20, the men's T T20 World Cup. They have to play the first round to get into the main draw. Mm. On the 17th, they'll take on Scotland. The 19th, Zimbabwe. 21st against Ireland. Top two teams are expected to join the, the stronger teams, so to speak, in the in the World Cup. Good delivery this time from Smith, so bang on target. So the West Indies have to go through the back door literally to get into that main draw of the T20 World Cup. I think in one of the, the, headline, the headlines in one of the papers in Barbados read, uh, West Indies walk over the UAE. And it offended, um, <laughs> it offended a number of uh, cricket enthusiasts. I was listening to Andrew Mason's uh, show radio show um, last evening and that came out a lot I think the gentleman responsible for the papers had to come out and defend <laughs> himself and all he said to uh, over UAE that could never be a walkover I mean in the context of cricket two teams playing the strengths and the history behind these teams Western East you expect to, to walk over a team like the UAE but it didn't walk over the team was this a 17 runs victory, I think it was? Yeah, that's not a walkover. Certainly not. Uh, Niall Smith is one of the young cricketers that I've had my eye on for some time now. I believe that injury 
has affected him a bit in his quest to play uh, first-class cricket for Guyana. He hasn't been in the team uh, a lot because of injury problems and so on. But I thought initially when he started his career, he started with good pace, uh, good approach to the wicket, close to the stumps. And, you know, he's got good pace, drops the ball on a good line and length. But then injury him a bit, and so he has to try to be a consistent player. Gone. First wicket. Edged by Budi, the man who got 92 against the President's 11. And you would want to call that uh, excellent bowling. Just talking about him getting the ball on a good line and a good length. Let's have a look at that again. Brilliant. The ball came back a shade into him just from outside the off stump. He pushed the ball a bit. Maybe half-heartedly got the nick. Catch taken easily by Anthony Bramble. And uh, SQ Club have lost their first wicket. Four for one. Booty caught behind off the bowling of Smith uh, for one. And uh, uh, certainly, John, good start for Borbis. Strong team. And something was expected very early on in the innings. Yeah, that's very good bowling from Nile Smith. Did not pick up a wicket in the last game. This time, uh, just... Short of a good length outside the off stump and the ball slightly moving inwards. And then just a half-hearted push, you'd say, from Budi. Good carry to the wicketkeeper. That's an excellent start to the spell from Niall Smith. A little bit uh, down the leg side before this one, but that one was perfectly pitched. And that's what you tend to describe as a perfect delivery from a fast bowler. Nice bounce, nice carry. And did enough just to hit the outside edge. A little bit a little bit more inward movement, but it might have been taken on the middle of the bat. But that was just enough to get the edge. Yeah, brilliant ball. And now we see the informed savory, the Centurion. One of two Centurions in the first rung. 108 from 106 balls, 8 fours and 3 sixes in that knock against President Silem. It was a lovely innings from this young man, the left-hander, who, I, if I'm correct, started playing for the Denmark Cricket Club. And I believe he's now playing for... The police club, Jermaine Neblet is here. And I think Jermaine works with him a lot. Kemal Savory is a very nice young man. Nice to talk with, very manly. I've had a, a few discussions with him. He's a left hand. He settles, takes his first ball from Niall Smith. Shoulders, arms, allows but the ball to go by, to be taken by the keeper. But Flamroy Lambert, the umpire, says it's a wide. I guess after pitching it, that exaggerated movement took it very wide. And you can see the wicket keeper taking it just in front of second slip as well. Bramble. So lots of movement from Niall Smith and also Shepard. But Shepard to some extent controlling it a little bit. But having pick up, picked up that early wicket, Smith will want to continue to peg away. This is a very important battle for SUK Bo, The Centurion in the last round. And he has done the hard work to get his first century. Kimo Savory just needs to carry on. Bulletins feel, if anything, that cluster of feelers behind his bat. So Savory looks, looks up, you'll see the keeper on three steps going down, and Shimon Hetmeyer in the gully. There's a feel at backward point as well, extra cover. So tight ring of feelers on the offside. So no doubt that is the line now Smith is looking to maintain that off stump line. Good captaincy so far from from all. Psychological warfare. Uh, Borbis would have would have understood clearly what is happening with Esikubo. This is the man they've got to get out. They've got the first big one out first. That's Moody. They've got to attack this young man here. Loose shot from Savory. Flashing outside the off stump. And that ball moving away. And that's what pressure can, can build up in a player, especially a batsman. Uh, you know that you're facing top quality fast bowling. And uh, you've got to be patient enough. It's 50 overs, it's not 20. It's not like the four or six overs and you've got to go, go over the top and whatnot. Yeah, you'd also know that, that you just lost a wicket in the same over. You need to be a bit more patient, a bit more watchful. The ball is on a high. So... Uh, to get off the mark, Savory. 
and John also, you the informed man, your team didn't get to bat down the order because Booty and yourself did well. So you're going to expose him in the order. Well played on this occasion. You're going to expose him in the order that didn't get a chance to really bat and didn't need to because uh, the runs came quickly and nicely and easily first. You cable against President's 11. Second, third over comes to an end. In fact, the second over comes to an end. Five for the loss of one here at Border. But, John, I like uh, how Border looks. Brings back all the memories. Doing cricket commentary here. Many years ago, we had that small commentary booth downstairs. Did commentary with the likes of Sean Devers and Rex Pereira, our mentor. By the way, you know, in the Jeet and myself, 25 years in ball by ball cricket commentary. Congratulations, Pastor, and to our brother Indijit. Congratulations on that milestone. <clears throat> and you know, it's a hobby more or less for me. I just love it. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Deserves a run. Can get a run out, actually. Oh. Bad cricket there by Christian and um, Savory. Hesitation. It's always dangerous to take a single off a misfield. And that ball was hit with a lot of power down to cover where Pestano didn't quite clean it up nicely. And uh, here was Christian coming down the track. I think he was about uh, almost halfway down and had to scamper back. Got back in his ground. A bit wider on that occasion from Shepard. But your thoughts on the World Cup squad? We didn't we didn't get to discuss that even during CPL. But <coughs> Brooks is there now. Well played. Quick single taken now. On this occasion, you're looking for a second. You'll get it because Pestano misfeels. And I guess if the ball follows him around, they're going to pick up ones and twos. Yeah, he was attacking that ball and lifted his head at the last moment. And the ball slightly deviated from him, Pestano. And went behind him. So second run taken easily. So Christian is off the mark. Not trying to hit it too hard. Just placing it in front of him. Took off for a single. And eventually got two. That World Cup squad, yeah, I think um, generally based on performances and w what we have in the Caribbean, I'm very pleased. But I said it before, I would love to have someone like either Kota Kesh Moti or Fabian Allen or even the incumbent Hayden Walsh instead of Yana Carrier. Because it's a World Cup, it's a World T20. I don't want to expose players at that level. We should have had the best already. And that's the only person I would want to change, if anything at all. He has an injury now. This one is sprayed down the leg side by Shepard. And runs will be given two. As you give up three runs, you would call this five of them. So it's 12 to the loss of one now. Why not take it? Because Siri is yet to score. Christian is two. And Booty back in the pavilion for one. Dismissed very cheaply. So however you get the runs, take, take them. Yeah, but you're talking about the World Cup squad, Yannick Carrier, the dark horse. Maybe he can be the man with the golden arm. Is he carrying an injury? Yeah, he's he is. actually uh, was hit on his hand while batting, so hmm. did not feature the last game, but it was rained out. But the truth be told, John, when I pick my squad, caught at second slip, is it? I make it. That's the junior Sinclair, I believe, who took that catch. Easily done, and the Christian goes, push the bat at it, good line and length. That's what Shepard has been doing mostly so far in his, in his short spell. And another catch behind the wicket, Kevin. In fact, Christian going very cheaply for two. It's now 12 for two. Yeah, just got off the mark, and there you see the experience of Shepard against the young man. Just bowling on the line of his body, a nice bounce and carry as well, and the thick edge 
third slip takes it easily. And you did mention it is Junior Sinclair. And he's looking to get his feet at regional cricket. And he took it quite nicely. So two for 12 in you know, early trouble. SUK Bowl, remember they won the toss and they are, they're opting to bat first. They've lost both of their openers now, Savory. And gone very early and now Christian for two. In fact, it was Booty who was dismissed early. So Savory is still there. And now he's going to be joined by the experienced Kimo Paul. Sikibo. And when you're playing against the top teams like uh, Demara and Borbis, this is where Sikibo is, is showing up a lot. Technique in their batsmen. Exposed. Walking into a, a drive through square cover. Kimo Paul gets himself off the mark, 13 for 2. A lot of talk about Kimo Paul. You want a Kimo Paul to always be fit, but not just be fit, but also be cricket ready in terms of his performance. He needs to be in form with both bat and ball. You might say a lot, uh, it's a big ask for a young man, but if you're an all-rounder and you want to play for the West Indies uh, more, consistent, more consistently, you have to be in touch. You, you, you can't be struggling with ball in hand. And if you struggle with ball in hand and then you come to bat, you also struggle with bat in hand. So he's got a, a big task as an all-rounder, as someone who I believe was touted to be the next Bravo, bowling at the bottom end of innings, mixing up his deliveries and so on. He hasn't quite come on as yet, but he's still a young man and he's got a long way to go. It's all about the way Kimo approaches his cricket from here. He needs to be very professional and take his game very seriously and ensure that he can perform with a lot of consistency. Smith continues. His second over. Kibo gets a single. So he's not looking to waste a lot of time here, Kibo Paul. Yeah, lots of responsibilities on his shoulder in more ways than one on the field and off the field. Recently got married, expecting his first child, setting up his home, looking after his family. So cricket has given him the opportunity. So he'd want to prolong his career indeed. Plagued by injury is Kimo. I missed the last game because of a slight ankle injury. So he has an opportunity now to rescue his side with the bat. And then later on express himself with the ball. Oh, what a beauty. Well bowled, Niall Smith. Cutting the batsman in half. Playing, nibbling, missing. That's the beauty of a delivery. A gem. Yeah, so as I, as I was saying earlier, I like Niall Smith, you know, but I want Niall Smith to be a fit Niall Smith and to bowl a lot, especially in regional four-day cricket for the Guyana side. <coughs> I think uh, he's been looked at. Uh, he's under the microscope. Because you're looking for good fast bowlers in the region. And he needs to ensure that he stays fit. Very important for him. These inter-county matches will be used as the yardstick for selection for that kind of Harpy Eagles 50 oversight. And the fixtures for Super 50 2022 being announced earlier. The Guyana Harpy Eagles will be playing their first game against the Windward Islands Volcanoes. On Halloween Day, the 31st of October, at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad and Tobago. They'll be in Zone A, alongside hosts Trinidad and Tobago, Windward Islands, and CCC, Combined Campuses and Colleges. Edge dropped. Jonathan Fu at first slip just cannot hold on. Edge found excellent bowling from Niall Smith again. Trap set. And there we see Fu getting his hands to it. Bubbled and even on the second attempt, cannot hold on. Was pitched just on about the middle stump and there was Savory having a go. And there's Jonathan Fu as well. Not able to hold on. 14 for 2. That's a regulation catch. That is a regulation slip catch. I was wondering to myself why Fu is at first slip. But that's the way they, they set their, their players in the field. 
It marries in the gully, so it's three sips in the gully. Backward point cover. And then you've got a mid on in the captain. So that's a chance gone a bit again. Another flashing shot over third slip. Down to the boundary for four. Savory's taking his chances here. He's living dangerously. First equable. And um, not the best of shots, but that's when you want to free your arm when under pressure. But it went over the head of, I think it's Junior Sinclair. Third slip down to the boundary for four. Living dangerous. Just a single. Just a single. Well, in fact, a single. Beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. And see that man on the third man there. We are very high, John. <laughs> yeah. So to pick up the guys on the boundary below us, beg your pardon, viewers and listeners, 15 for two. So he got a single. Yeah, he's off the mark, but not in convincing fashion at all, Savory. Oh, this time Kimo now looking to go back over the head of the bowler. What is the message for us, Kimo, today? End of a successful over. For Burbies, 15 for two, Eskibo. One of the destructive elements in Eskibo's cricket, John. A lack of patience. It's been in West Indies cricket as well, but you, you, you know Eskibo is a, is a part of Guyana, largest county, where you would expect maybe, well, they don't play uh, two days cricket and whatnot. They mostly play white ball cricket. 10, 10, T20s and whatnot. A lot of their grounds are not in use right now, which is very sad because to my mind, sorry to say this, but there are a lot of people with a lot of money in the Esikibo region. And it's all about investing, but as my wife and I always say, money follows ideas. And if you don't have a proper idea for cricket in Esikibo, how will the money follow it? People are looking to see what your plan is, what's your vision. You got to have vision. You have some memories of this building? Did commentary there as well? Yes. Yes. I remember I, w w when you come to watch some of the big test matches, I had to squeeze into the landscape stand, which <laughs> would have been to the right of that uh, stand that you're looking at there. The, that was the media center. Move to that end. So Clubs so have got to manage themselves now, maintain themselves. But I, I still think you want to see good quality cricket played at Bordeaux. High standard. Maybe it's going to be difficult based on the policy of uh, West Indies Cricket Board. You have to use the stadiums for, you know, first class cricket and so on. Lofted in the air. Catch taken. Brilliant. Not a white third man. Absolutely fantastic. You're going to go for a shot like that, Kimo Savory? Come on, man. Not what you want. 15 for the last of three. Sliced it in the air. White third man coming in. Dolly of a catch taken. We'll have a look at the replay. But that's, that's going to happen to you if you're not going to put your head down and concentrate. Just across the left-hander. Feeler coming around to his left. Took it nicely and easily. That was Umoti. Took the catch nicely. Umoti don't drop too many of them. And Esikibur tottering here, 15 for the loss of three. Savory gone for one. So the fifth over now, picking up a wicket again. So Burby's picking up wickets at regular intervals now. That ball was wide. And I guess that's what he was looking to go out with that booming shot over cover. He missed. Did not get it out of the middle of the bat like he wanted. He got a toe end of the bat and went high into the air. The shot was on. Just he did not connect the way he wanted. Savory type of that batsman does not want to be bogged down a whole lot you saw him being dropped in the last over and then his very next ball had a wild swing again got off the mark so does not look comfortable at all Kimo Savory much better attack you may want to see from Eskimo today Niall Smith and Shepard with new balls and Savory must every inning start from zero and just managing a single today so the new batsman is Ricardo Adams been around a long time in, in domestic cricket. Had a few opportunities at a regional level, but just did not cement a place. Another opportunity again for him? Yeah, I think he's improved in his batting. He's a spin bowler as well. A lot depends on him now. Let's see if he can show his experience. 
struck outside the leg stump. Ball going down to a short back with square head. Maya came in. Get a leg by. Signaled by umpire Dodger Nagasar. Is he the man from Wakenham? I think. Yes. Wakenham, Ricardo Adams. I think he captained, uh, what, on the 15 side? Um, is he Kribble? He's been around, been around a long yeah, time. Yeah, he's been around for a while. So chances are might have done so. Savory, Bodhi, Kimo Paul, Ricardo Adams. Some of these guys that are under the wings of businessman in Guyana, Safraz Sherfuddin of VNet Communications. So a lot of these guys are being mentored, nurtured. Kimo Paul is actually the brand ambassador. He's on strike. Good delivery. I'm just allowing it to go by into the gloves of the keeper. So recognizing the talents of these young players, Safraz and the VNet team, the VNet Communications team, brought them under his wings and, and the, the wings of the company to give them an opportunity to play not only at this level but as a team against other teams in different parts of the country tape ball as well it's just a matter of giving these guys the opportunity and and I think Vienna Communications they're doing an excellent job they've been looking at other players as well not only in the SUK region I like the effort it's one man flowing with vision. You need many more men and maybe women to, to flow with vision because ladies cricket is on the rise. Yeah, you mentioned this, Kibo, lots of businesses and so on. Mr. Sherifuddin is one of the businessmen mm -hmm. putting money where his mouth is. But hold from Shepard. <laughs> this is a battle within this battle between Shepard and Kimo. I actually like how the pitch is playing, John, for yeah, the fast nice bowlers. And carry. Yeah. Well prepared pitch, I must say. Slight away movement again after pitching. So, Shepard getting that ball to a shape away. Just a bit of banana swing, you'd say. Not exaggerated swing, just a little bit of away movement from the right hander. Kimo got to be very watchful. Shepard targeting that off stump. So, you've seen the third slip being removed. <laughs> Down the track, fighting fire with fire. Not this time, Kimo. Well, bold Shepard again. That's the end of five overs. 16 for three. Funny thing about Kimo, Paul, he, he likes to get on his skin. He has this way of advancing down the track, improvising shots, trying to throw the ball off target, you know. But on this occasion, on, on the couple of occasions here, Shepard more or less got the better of him. So he'll have to try again. And Kimo, he'll have to try again in terms of his strategy, his tactics. Uh, but he's the main man out there now with, with Ricardo Adams. And you look at Anthony Adams can bat as well. I can't say too much for the others because you still got Heyman Singh and Cadogan, Phillips, Elk, Elknot, Passat, Samson to come. Don't know much about these guys. But John, I'm, uh, you, you're talking about Essequibo and development and so on. A little on. bit of worried faces on the dressing, in the dressing room there. Quinton Sampson is still to come. He's quite a good batsman as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, first delivery. Ricardo Adam nibbles at this one. So good bowling again from Smith. Smith one for five before this. This is now his third over. Supporting Shepard at the other end. Three overs, one maiden, two for ten. Making full use of the new balls. The Barbies fast bowlers. Yeah, you would expect the West Indies fast bowler too perform well, set high standards, and he's done that. But getting back to Esikibo, you know, a number of their players, of you, you, you would hear about them, and then they suddenly disappear off the radar, you know. So it says a lot about the structure of cricket in Esikibo. The continuity is important. He's off the mark, up in the face of the bat nicely. Ricardo Adams, slightly slow delivery from Smith. He'll get the boundary. That's the first boundary of the match. Of the bat of Adams. Yeah, nicely steered away, just forward of point, and picks up a boundary, the first of the innings. You mentioned continuity, indeed, because SKB, they play a lot of cricket at all levels 
softball, tape ball, beach cricket, hard ball, but not for long periods. I take your point. And I remember a few years ago, the big man cricket had started. Esukibo were in the final. In fact, the final cricket played on Saturday right here at Border. Esukibo were waiting to take on West Ham Warriors. And I think in many other tournaments, we will see Esukibo progressing as a team. It's a nice flick shot from outside the leg stump. Ricardo Adams. Yeah, these two will have to build a, a, a nice partnership to give themselves a chance, as you give a chance, against a, a very strong former Devil Bobby side. When you look at the, what you're talking about, continuity, so while they've gotten their opportunities as a team, you hardly find that players coming out of that as you give a team that would do well when they won franchise tournaments a few years ago, fifty and three day, four day. Kimo Paul, one of the pro the bright prospects in that. Shiv Chandapal actually was in that side. I'm sure he helped a whole lot of them. It's a no ball. But it was also ill-directed, so no ball signal by umpire Lambert. And now the familiar sign, a free hit. One person as well that came through the ranks of Esukibo Cricket, but it's not with Esukibo, it's actually the coach of Demerara this time, Ryan Hercules, played youth cricket played senior in the county and went back to Esukibo as a coach, qualified himself, was a recent coach of the Guyana Amazon Warriors, assistant coach, coach of the Guyana Harpy Eagle side, assistant coach as well, to his son Crandon, but is not serving Esukibo cricket for one reason or the other. And it's, for, it's guys like this who would go back and help. Yeah, he's a nice guy, Ryan Hercules, very humble guy. Free hit. And it'll be a double free hit because it, this one is also overstepping from Niall Smith. Kimo looking to get onto it. Did so, but did not get the power to get it down to long off. So just two more to him. And it'll be a free hit again, as you can see from Flemroy Lambert, the umpire signaling free hit again. One of the problems that Niall Smith has had in his fast bowling career as well, no balls. He, he has to work on that. That's an area of weakness for this young man. Uh, don't lose it. Keep your concentration span going good. Keep your rhythm good. You can do it. You can bowl two no balls in succession knowing that there'll be free hits anyhow. That's where you, you tend to lose it. And that's what you do not want from someone like Anil Smith. He has had this problem. It should not become the all too familiar at this stage. This time, Kibo gets a little bit more connection, but height, not distance. And will fall well short of the boundary again. The free hit was created to minimize bowlers overstepping because they'll be penalized and the team can be in some trouble after that. But still, we see players still overstepping. I know that there are some teams as well that institutes that are fine if bowlers bowl no balls because that's, a, that's basically on them. If they bowl no balls, they have to pay a monetary fine. And the players will continue to bowl no ball. It's something that they have to work on. Teams in Barbies? I'm just saying teams that I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you get that happening in Barbies, it shows the standard of cricket they, they want to have and want to always set high standards. I think that's good. Nothing's wrong with that. But you set teams. Yeah. But on the, on the flip side of that, it's good work from Umpire Lambert to spot the no ball. Remember this time... In the different parts of the world, you see the television umpire adjudicating the, the no balls. Hmm. Loose shot from Kimo Paul. Pushed the bat at it. Horizontal bat. Missed the shot taken by Bramble. Yeah, I think Kimo needs to get a good score here. You talk about the no ball problem, yes. Many a times when they bowl the no ball and it's a free hit, they then, they then bowl a wide and it remains a free hit still. So, you know, that, that's a, a problem area in... Uh, white ball cricket, whether 50 over or T20s. Um, we saw in the, the, the CPL some big no balls as well from the likes of Smith and Kimo Paul. Again, a loose shot. The width was there, but a little bit too wide on that occasion. Kimo Paul didn't really, no movement of the feet. He didn't get across the off stump to maybe get back onto that. The over comes to an end. Uh, it's 27 for 3. I make it. 
Uh, go through the scorecard quickly for you, Buddy. Caught Bramble Bowl Smith for one from six balls. Christian caught Junior Sinclair, third slip off the bowl of Shepard for two. And Kimal Savory uh, caught Gudakish Moti at white third man on the bounce area. Bowl Shepard for one. Three cheap wickets going back there for SUK. Kimo Paul not out six. Adams not out five. It's 27 for three after six overs with 12 extras. You can see the bowling. Shepard, three overs, one maiden, two for ten. And Smith, a bit more expensive, three overs, one for 16. And quite interesting, that's the first maiden in two matches bowled here at Border. The last match, there was no <laughs> maiden that was bowled. So Shepard actually rewriting the history books here today in the county at Border, 2022. He's going to continue for Mario Shepard. Very good figures so far. Why not? Appeal for a leg before. Umpire says you're out. That's the fall of the fourth wicket. 27 for four. Ricardo Adams leg before to Shepard for five. And the struggles continue for Esukibo. We can have a look on the replay. Perfect delivery. Excellent decision as well from the umpire. Good bowling continues from Burbies. There is Omari Shepard picking up his third wicket. Very good bowling. Early conditions suiting the Burbies fast bowlers. And now Ricardo Adams making that long walk back to the pavilion. Leg before to Omari Shepard for five. The struggles continue. 27 for four. Pitched the middle and off. Came back a little into him. Would have hit leg stump. Good decision by Dodge and Nagasar. 27 for 4. He's gone for 5. So you look at the scores. Uh, 1, 2, 1, 5. Sounds like a telephone number coming up. Yeah, 1, no, 2, 1, 5. Nobody into double figures as yet. Not sure why Esikibo would have wanted to bat first here. Knowing that they're not the stronger bat insiders compared to Barbies. But I suppose they... They don't want a, a repeat of what happened Monday with 360 something against Demarar, which of course is a, a better side than Esikimo. But yet their, their bowlers were slaughtered, taken to all parts. I understand some of our guys here were ducking in the in the commentary area. Balls were being hit hit out of the ground, maybe where vehicles are. Where are you parked, John? Very close to the, 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 the canal, I suppose, the trench. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking some shade today. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, last match I could not drive. I was tra trapped on the west side of Demoraro because of the Demoraro oh, bridge yes. accident. Oh, yeah. But I came across this morning very early. A little bit nervous, but I made it, and I'm thankful for that bridge. Yeah. I, I suppose not open to uh, heavy vehicles yet. Not just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's only trouble indeed for us to give up different kettle of fish here today. And that may not be a strategy you must look at if you're going to look at teams. Not trying to play to your strength, but trying to play to the next team's strength. Sure, sure. So back with three steps and a gully for the new batsman, Ignat Passat. Very well bowled, full and straight from Shepard. Shepard enjoying his spells this morning into his fourth over. Three wickets already. Yeah, you must not think that you do not want a team to get 300 plus on against your bowling. You must think that if you're going to bat first, you must bat because you love the conditions. You're backing your batters to get a good total on the board to go and defend later on. Must not play negative. Not a loose shot from Eknot Passat. He was hit to run uh, Everest on Monday. He bowled seven overs for 55 runs. Didn't pick up a wicket. I would say medium. And they brought him on to get in some overs, of course. Doesn't look a bad player, but he'll have to bat now. He didn't get a chance to bat, but extras a healthy 12 into, into double figures. I think as you would, would want to see the extras go up even more if their batters are not performing. Two no balls, remember those two no balls from Smith. And White's totaling nine. One went down to the boundary for four. So five extra deliveries from Wise, two extra from no balls. So that's already an over and one ball extra that Burbies will have to bowl if needed. Because at this rate, 
Parce que maybe bold out early. Except a miracle takes place in the batting department, Fessy Kibber. We're going to have an early day. All smiles from Mario Shepard. He's in form. That was pitched on the off stump and moved a little bit away from McNaught. Look at the commitment from him. He's on the back foot, pushed the bat a bit. Oh, that is a classical delivery. Many a great batsman will be beaten by that. Yeah, what he should have um, done, however, tried to get on the front foot. It was not that short that you had to be playing from the back foot. But he missed and it went into the gloves of the keeper. No damage done. So Shepard also looking looking fit. Lots of cricket recently, you know. Yeah, I want to get back quickly to the big man cricket. Nicely defended in his inside his crease, pushed into the offside, no run. Seven gone, 27 for four is the latest score here from Border. And that's the second maiden from Shepard this morning. Four of us, two maidens, three wickets, ten runs. We can see some clouds building up overhead, uh, Matthew. But to the east, just to the right of the picture, it's a little bit clear. So it might be a humid morning, no sunshine this morning. But so far, no immediate threat of rain. Nice shot looking out from our commentary box. Oh, yes. Generally, if rain comes from the east, the northeast, or if the clouds, the heavy clouds come in from that part, because right now it's east, well, it's north, uh, you know that you got to be careful <laughs> in terms of a shower. But a quick one with the big man cricket uh, after this delivery. That's cut away. Down to Rampatal Ramnaut on the white third man boundary. Get a single. If you're not performing well as a youngster, you then grow older. And you, you talk about Essie big man cricket during the finals here Saturday. A lot of the guys who've gone on to, of course, get old and mature, probably tend to play better at that age. <laughs> Bisham Sipasad is in that squad. He's the captain of Eskibo. He looks fit as ever, man. Yeah, so indeed, it's, it's like a second bite of the cherry. It's a second innings in terms of cricket and, and your career. It's wide of the mark. Smith now in his fourth over. So Kimo Paul on seven. We'll have to show the responsibility of this Eskibo lineup. If not, yet to get off the mark. Captain Anthony Adams, who can hang around, is yet to come. So, but not a lot after that. The cutting edge in a, in a cricket is very important because, look, you've got a lot of left-hand spinners now in cricket. But who's very dangerous and threatening to pick up wickets, to be able to play for the country? But you've got a lot of left-hand orthodox spinners. The West Indies have got a few as well. You're talking about Bisham, Sipasad, and so on. That, that cutting edge is what probably lacks in some of our cricketers in the Caribbean because who really is a threat to world-class teams in terms of a spin bowler? Nice to see young Akil Hussein playing his trade well, reasonably well so far. He's still got a long way to go, but he's got a good start to his career. Let's see if he can pick up on that, grow and develop, and become the kind of bowler that West Indies want him to be for the future. We just mentioned the clouds, and I can see his own drizzles coming in. Oh, good short ball again from Nile Smith. So good use of the short ball. Umpire Lambert signaling that's one for the over. Telling the bowler, telling the batsman, telling the square leg umpire and the captain. And also, I, I think I saw umpire Nagasar square leg just having a look at the. The groundsmen asking them to stand by to get ready. We've got a drizzle here now at Border. Yeah, 
Yes, you can see the groundsman led by Basil getting ready. That's a good follow up delivery after two short ones from Smith. See the groundsman there, Matthew, getting a bit busy. Yep. Always a little rain here and there when you, <laughs> when you come to border down when through the years. The you see, half cricket in Guyana at border, and you'll have rain. Rain will be the, the center stage. <laughs> Doesn't look too threatening. I think the cloud is going to blow across the border sward. 28 for 4. Yeah, there is a high breeze indeed. You can see some breeze going under the covers. Off the mark, Passar. Looking to come up for the second, will do so. Uh, Shepard had to move to his right, covering, to his left, sorry, covering some distance at the backward square. And that's the end of eight overs. So both bowlers bowling four overs. And the umpires, they're signaling the covers on. So we're going to have a delay in, in play at the moment. So after eight overs, and it's now 11 minutes after 10 o'clock. Escobar winning the toss and batting first here at border. We have a rain interruption. 30 for the loss of four, eight overs gone. Shepard, four overs, two maidens, three for 10. Smith, four overs, one for 19. We've seen the fall of Kevon Buri, Cod Bramble, Bo Smith, one. Kevin Christian, Cod St. Clair, third slip, Bo Shepard, two. Kimal Savory, Caught Moti, Bowles, Shepard, one. Ricardo Adams, leg before Shepard, five. The batsman dismissed. Kimo Paul is still there, seven from 12 deliveries. And Iknot Passat, two from 10. It's Operation Rebuild. 12 extras in that, total of 30 for four. Eight overs gone, but we'll have a break. Um, I don't think it will be a long break. I don't think so. Yes, we've got a drizzle, but the clouds are blowing across. Because if you look to the, the northeast, uh, you, you can see blue above, so they shouldn't be too long, but the covers are out. And of course, the law says that the rain has to stop totally before the covers are removed. So even if you, you, you have a little dri drizzle, they cannot remove the covers. So it could take a few minutes, but uh, 30 for 4 after 8, John, um, not what the doctor ordered for Esikibo, but they've been in these situations many, many years ago, coming through their career, uh, playing into county cricket, five-year absence when they introduced the franchise. Now it's back on the new leadership. Um, the same old, same old. The same familiar pattern, especially when you play, you're play, playing against the top teams. And they've got to play Demerara as well. But against a formidable Burby side with uh, international bowlers, um, always difficult for a team like Kessie Cabo. Not because they would have scored well against the President's 11, getting up to 237. When, when at one stage, John, they were 90 for 5. Nice recovery. Thanks to some good batting down the order. All right? But uh, you look at the fact that uh, four top batters have been dismissed. You've still got uh, Kimo Paulo there. You've got uh, Eknard Passad looking to give support. But to lose Buddy, Christian, Savory, and Adams very cheaply, it has certainly set back Esikibo terribly here and uh, um, put themselves in a very, very difficult position to, to get up to maybe 150. All right, so we'll take a break, and we hope that we come back with you very shortly to bring you some more action on this top-of-the-table clash between Burbis and Esikibo. There's the next match on in the round at Everest Cricket Club, maybe two miles away from where we are, where home team Demerara taking on the President's Eleven. Not sure what's happening over there, but we'll take a few minutes and we'll come back with you. Hope to bring you some live action. Until then, stay tuned.
Well, welcome back to Abora. I always used to love hearing that, listening to cricket back in the days when it was play, being played at Abora. Welcome back to Abora. Well, 30 for 4, that's the score. When the rains came here at Abora, players went off the field. And there's a sharp shower. Players back now on the field. 49 minutes lost due to rain. I remember there was a 50 minutes late start this morning. However, umpires have decided not to reduce the overs. We're still playing 50 overs per side. Eight overs in the Escubo innings gone. Escubo winning the toss this morning. Captain Anthony Adams deciding he's going to have a bat first. Kimo Paul will res resume. He's on seven. Iknot Passar is on two. Twelve extras in the innings of 30 so far. We've seen the fall of Kevin Bodhi, one. Kevin Christian, two. Kimal Savory, one. And Ricardo Adams, five. And Shepard, four overs, two maidens, three for ten. And Smith, four overs, one for 19, sharing the new balls. So we resume the action now with Shepard, bowling to Kimo Paul. <laughs> and there's Kimo Paul running down the track, playing and missing, and the ball goes into the gloves of the keeper. Say good morning for the very first time to former Guyana fast bowler, Roderick. Sorry, the German Neblet, the Hunted Piers, German Neblet. Hello, German, good morning. Hello, good morning to you, John, and good morning to our listeners and all our viewers right across Guyana. Lovely day for cricket. Good showing by the Barbies fast bowlers thus far. Able to um, get some early breakthroughs. Uh, both Shepard and Smith have been bowling well thus far. You mentioned the fast bowlers very early. What about the batting of Eskimo so far? Well, it has been a little bit indifferent. Um, if we look at someone like Savory, I believe that would have thrown his wicket away, coming off of 100. Uh, Kevin Buddy, um, you know, he, he got a good delivery and was caught behind. But apart from that, I think um, the, the other two batsmen, they were left wanting. Um, you know, looking at everything in a nutshell, I think, yes, the bowling was good, but it wasn't that spectacular. 1st run after the interval. Paul gets one to third man. Smith collects. Uh, this is a nice battle between the two all-rounders, Kimo Paul and Romario Shepard. Fourth ball after resumption, we saw Kimo Paul running on the track. Where was he going? Probably I was thinking to myself that, you know, you and him seem to be very good friends and probably maybe wanted to say something very nice to you. Has a start, Kimo Paul. Eight runs. He has the ability to bat long and to score heavy. It's a perfect opportunity for the right handed all rounder. Good temperament being shown by Ignat Prasad, the other end. This is a new look for uh, Eskimo team. Lots of new faces, new names as well. A lot of new names, new faces, but I still believe the core of the Eskimo team centers around the likes of um, you know Beaton who's not playing today Anthony Adams Ricardo Adams uh, Kevin Bodhi Kimal Savory Quinton Sampson who I think is a very exciting player oh well bold very good short ball on the line of the body and there was Passard ducking backing away doing the limbo well bold well bold good short lifting delivery but what I find happening is that you know every time you find that uh, a short lifting delivery is being bowled batsman seems to be very much uncomfortable even on these easy pace track and one could say that uh, probably the technique um you know most of the batsmen sometimes uh, i want to say most like the modern batsmen or caribbean batsmen tend to place mostly on the front foot um so you find them like lunging on the front foot so to speak and then you know you don't have any balance End of the first over after rain, one run conceded, 31 for four. Yes, as we've seen there, John, just looking at how things is unfolding itself, Borby seemed to be going more with their fast ball. It seemed that Niall Smith would be continuing from the northern end. Um, and in these conditions, you'd want to give your fast ball most of, most of the opportunity already on. Uh, with four wickets down, I think probably they may look into probably give Smith an X over, maybe Shepard one other, and then probably switch with Prestano, but it's yet to be seen. But I think right now, 
Smith and Chapo, they're in, a, they're in a good rhythm. Shepard's last three overs, just two runs were conceded. So excellent stuff from the right time, Seema. Three for 11, including two maidens from his five overs, Shepard. At 30 for the loss of four, you'd think that Ezekibo was a team that really needed a break and they would have been welcoming the rain. Definitely, they could have regrouped and come out back with new strategies and try to, to put something on the tins. It's a wonderful shot from Kimo Paul, full delivery from Smith. And we'll get at least two runs. Good work from Junior Sinclair. The ground is hard, so the rain there just freshen things up a little bit. Yes, definitely. I think on um, the normal board of Swar, that would have been hitting the boundary boards by now, John. But, um, you know, good shot there by Kimo Paul. And Kimo Paul needs to bat and bat sensible. You know, these two bowlers, they're bowling well. No need to counter-attack. Just, you know, tell yourself, you know, this is still a 50-over game. You're batting number four. Take some responsibility and just, you know, do the little things right. Dealing in singles as well. So he's the first batter for a scribble into double figure as Kimo Paul. That's a start. You mentioned Samson. Quentin Samson still to come. I'm surprised that there's no um, David Williams in the Sesquibo side. David Williams, Quentin Samson, Kimo Paul, Anthony Adams, Ricardo. These guys tend to play together. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with David Williams. No, I'm not so familiar with him, but actually I was more looking at, um, thinking that Anthony Adam, uh, it's, um, Ricardo Adams would have been coming ahead of Passat, but uh, probably the Sesquibo team, they have their strategies and their plans worked out different. And what the Barbies fans would need to do is not to get too much ahead of themselves, John. You still need to make the batsmen play in these conditions. You know, you have them honest about the pressure. You know, it's good to bowl dots, but sometimes when you're on the gas, you have to step on the gas. You know, you're in a Good position so far. Smith probably could say, well, you know, let me just try to get a bit close and force the batsman to play a little bit more. Well, bold there again by Smith ball and a good length. And there it was Passad not knowing to come forward or go back that corridor, John. I think Smith, with that delivery, probably was listening to me get it a bit closer there. And, and then again, once we see that once the ball kind of just bounce a bit, that the batsman seems to be very much uncomfortable in playing those kind of deliveries. I think he made a late decision to play at that one. We felt it was going to be moving away from him. Passar came back in nicely, shaping to cut, shaping to defend, missed it altogether. Luckily, he did not crash into his stump. Oh, no ball again. From Nal Smith, that is third over and uh, third no ball this morning. As a fast bowler yourself, you will not be happy with that. Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, the little things could cause you to overstep. Probably just looking for a yard more pace. Um, you know, not getting the run up right. Um, we just had a brief shower. Probably his footing is not that. Well, you know, little things could cause you, but, you know, somehow you have to try to keep that foot just behind that line. The line belongs to the umpire. It's a free hit. Came, came off the back of the bat and into the gloves of the keeper, Bramble. But off the free hit, the batsman will not be out caught, bowled, stumped. Just run out, really. In this case, if not Passad, survives. Yes, yeah, survives a good shot, left in delivery there by, by um, Smith on a line just about, just over the top of middle stump. Good shot, left in delivery. Very vocal Borby steam here and a lot of, coming from the slips of the, the slip card in there, Fu and, and, and Sinclair. Not a short delivery to end the over. 10 overs gone. Eskibo, 35 for 4. 
thus far we could say that um you know as equivalent with these two would want them to really bat and probably look to bat maybe the next 10 15 overs without taking any unnecessary risks probably just look to score maybe around four or five runs per over and able to set some kind of platform for the others to come i think if when you look at it now john with uh four wickets down and just start odd runs on the board you might want to be saying that yes they're a bit behind but given the circumstances they were playing against good bowling um you know they they the balls are not giving them anything away not giving anything away so they, what they need to do is try to work out ways not just to survive but how to score some high-rise buildings going up around the border area you see one just beyond the boundary where the landscape stand used to be and some workers on top of that building you can see a scaffold still there so work still to be done in that building but it, it is a beautiful building really making this area prime real estate I'm sure you're perhaps thinking to buy some some land over here Nebo well, just looking at it look all bright and beautiful and you know it would be so lovely to see that the border sword returned to its swarm of glory taking into account with the kind of buildings that are going up around so the first power play completed 10 overs gone it means now that this middle bunch of overs between overs number 10 11 and 39 Four or four bowler, four feelers, hurry, are allowed out of the 30 yard circle. It'll be Shepard to continue. Oh, your scheme of Paul, no movement of the feet, just hanging his bat out. Just one slip on the gully now. And Shepard just looking at that ball increase, did some repair work in between overs. Looking to get a foot in very firm as he lands. Yes, you'd have to be very careful with it too because um, you don't want to find yourself landing too hard on it or landing different. You could actually injure yourself. Oh, well bowled. Slightly slower delivery, but on the line of the middle stump, there's Kimo Paul, very watchful. Kimo Paul from Saxakali on the Yasukebo River. Nice little community there seven days Adventist hello to Miss Helen hello to Miss Rita and to Uncle David hello to everyone in Saxacali trust that the weather is fine over there and you're getting the stream clear When was the last time you were on that Eskimo River, Nebo? Uh, it would have been some years now. I haven't gone back to Eskimo, maybe some three, four years. Kimo, Kimo must take you on a personal ride on his personal boat. Uh, well, I guess um, maybe. I know he's an exciting batsman. You know, he loves to play a lot of shots. And he's very careful in the river, trust me. Oh, he's careful in the river. Yes, okay. Yes. I see where you were heading. <laughs> okay. And I was just thinking that he would be an, ex an, 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 you know, an exciting speedboat driver. But to all assurances from you, John, once you say that you're my good friend, I, I trust you and I trust your judgment. Take it from me. I cannot swim, but I trust Kimo. Oh, while swinging a miss this time from Ignat. Three slips back in play now for the, this right-handed batsman. But he needs to support Kimo, Paul. Yes, they need to support each other. I think uh, we're seeing, you know, batsmen trying to play shots, uh, you know, without any foot movement. There was Passage looking to hit that ball over, probably over mid-off or just over extra cover, but the head was up in the air and the feet was nowhere close to the delivery. Oh, back in the way, Shepard followed him. He managed to squeeze it down towards backward point and come back for a second. That's good running. You take it anyway. It comes. It's good to see that the little sizable crowd that we're having here—no big crowd by any means—but they're giving some good support for the Sikribans. You know, they want to see good cricket. Yeah. And this is commendable. There was a good Monday crowd, Monday the public holiday in Ghana, when Demrara battled Burbis right here at border. Very colourful. And a sort of picnic basket re-emerging. Re Half-hearted appeal for a leg before. 
That one came off the bat. Now some overthrows. Can we get one, two. And we're going to go into the boundary now. Four signaled by the umpire. So that's the first boundary of Shepard. Uh, what what could In you fact, make leg of buys. that? Leg buys. Leg buys now signaled. Yeah, what could you make of that? I think he might look at it and see that it's four runs or overthrows. But then I think that the, 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 the man at slip there would have been Sinclair would have been saying to himself, there's opportunity with Passad kind of looming out the crease for a run out. So he took the chance. So that's the end of the over. So Shepard now six overs, two maidens, 14 runs, three wickets. Will you continue with Shepard? No, I want to continue with him. I think it's time for him to get a break now. Um, you know, having bowled six overs, um, you know, he seemed to be not getting the same kind of zip that we would have been getting already on. Yes, it's overcast conditions, but still just, you know, try probably to use the next team or probably give um, Pestano a run from this end or, you know, probably bring himself on. But it would be quite interesting to see who would be bowling from the southern end. Um, taking into account you have um, the distance. The Manual scoreboard is up as well. In the years at Border, there used to be a huge shell scoreboard. And now we've seen a little bit, <laughs> a little scoreboard. There's two operators this time. That shell scoreboard used to have about 20 persons on that scoreboard. Remember those days, Nebo? Yes, those days was quite interesting, quite fun. Um, the good thing is that the foundation for that scoreboard still remains. And I'm sure that the memories of all those who would have scored up there, the likes of Rayon King and... Lennox Kush, you know, those guys have found memories scoring on the scoreboards. It will be spent to continue. Kimo Paul will take an easy run. Umpire Lambert not signaling the leg by, so a run to Kimo Paul. This is over number 12. Still slightly overcast, but I think we've seen enough rain for today. It has gone somewhere down towards that Essequibo River that we we're speaking of. Quinton Sampson, who's still to come, is from the Carrier Carrier village, also on the Essequibo River. A village that has produced the former president of Guyana, Donald Ramotar. Yes, yes I think um, you will see something whenever he comes out about Sampson. You know, he's a player that once he sets in, it will be very interesting to see how he goes against the spin twins of Pomal and Moti. He is a 360 player and that's why I'm saying David Williams could have also added value to this SQ side or even uh, find a place in the, in the Guyana Cricket Board President's 11. Down the leg side and there's an appeal. Good take from Bramble. He's still asking the umpire how is that? Now the signal coming from umpire Lambert, leg by. So brushing the pad on its way through. It was angled down the leg side, first of all, from Smith. Yeah, Smith looking for the Yorker probably. He had Fassad most in the back foot in the previous over, so he was just saying, looking for the Yorker and just falling away a bit and pushing that ball down the leg side. Good take there by Bramble and good running. Good awareness by Kimo Paul recognizing that Bramble wasn't fully much in control was he able to scamper through for the leg by must acknowledge Trevor Ben former Eskimo player always in the thick of things in terms of Eskimo's cricket police inspector Ben no I think he he's now on Assistant Superintendent of Police. Assistant Superintendent. Yes, um, Assistant Super ESP Ben. You know, he's someone always very vocal, very enthusiastic, full of energy. And, you know, he's never short of words when it comes to cricket. You know, he's always um, a positive person in terms of, you know, wanting to see good cricket. And he won't be shy of telling anyone, you know, when, uh, as, as we see in Ghana, when they, when they, when they step on your toes. I would believe that the thinking should be now, John, that with these two, Barton haven't seen, um, you know, 
Shepard and and Smith, they should be telling themselves, you know, um, I don't think they will be continuing much longer, and they should, you know, just try, you know, start just building, setting themselves to to, to to have a diet of spin. Um, sooner or later, you'll be seeing the, the either Moti or um, Pramal. That was very much overpitched uh, from Smith. I went to his sixth over for the rain break. He had sent down four overs. So two after the, that rain break. Picked up one wicket. Very well bowled delivery to get rid of Kevin Booty. Perhaps the delivery of the day. This pitch just outside the off stump slightly coming back into the right hander. And faintest of edges went through to the keeper at good height. He wants to have more wickets, get back his confidence, Niall Smith. Uh, that's good judgment being shown by Young Prasad. And that's the end of 12 overs, 45 for the loss of four wickets. Eskimo winning the toss and batting very early this morning, looking for the second victory in successive matches. But the work is cut out against Burbies. And so far, Prasad could see that he have weathered the storm, um, got a few tests and deliveries from Smith, short of a good length. Um, you know, he was able to handle it. Also, you could say that um, Kimo Paul himself who would have played a few in different shots looking to go down the wicket to Smith at times and even Shepard. But they are still there and they have a work to do for their team. You know, they have to go about it in a way in which could be able to be useful for both of them and even the team. Here's a flashback for you, Jeremy Neblet. Look at Ron Can I stand packed with spectators? White clothes means it was a test match here at Border. Yes, Do you remember those days? Yes, it had to be a test match. Um, if, I, if my memory serves me right, um, I can't remember which would, have, which would have been the last test would have been played at Border. Maybe you could pull it up. But I would want to believe it would have been Australia against West Indies. Um, I'm just talking off the top of my head. Probably could be that. But I can remember being in the wrong can I stand. So um, I was just wondering if that was the game. <laughs> 2004, I think, would have been South Africa in the Caribbean. Shiv Chandapal's first test as West Indies captain. Narsin didn't run debut. Double hundred from Jack Callis. Double from Shiv himself. And I think Bill Hines had some runs in that match as well. And there's a Castle Lager on one of the advertising boards. Suggests maybe South Africa. So change in bowling. It's going to be spin for the first time. Moti, go to Kesh Moti, the left arm spinner. Replacing Shepard from the Regent Road end. Kimo Paul without his helmet now. I've noticed something about Kimo Paul though, John. His, his stance seems to be a bit open up more, you know, more like kind of, um, you know, somehow his batting stance look a bit different to me. I don't know if you've seen him a lot more than, than I did over the past few months, but something kind of looked different with his batting stance. We'll have a look at him. Is it is he getting a solid base you're looking at, maybe? Yes, yes, he's getting a solid base and he seems a little bit more open up than, yeah. than normal. I've seen that stance. I don't think it's a regular stance. I think it's a situational stance. Whenever the situation calls for it, we'll see him going into that stance. Quick single, chance for a run out, and there's an appeal for a run out. Kiba Paul has made it. He is very quick between the wickets. That was played just at that gully region by Passard and Kimo Paul set off very quickly. You can see him. And that was a good throw as well, right over the bales. Yeah, but I think it was the Sinclair down there, I think, is, uh, would have been quite, quite disappointed. I think he should have done a little bit better, get into that ball a little bit quicker. I think he was kind of surprised that actually played the ball team and run. So just a slip and play for Kimo. This one is swept away. Nicely runs for Kimo Paul. Runs for Eskubo. 50 on the board. What a way to bring up the Eskubo 50. 51 for 4. Kimo Paul gets a boundary. Well played there by Kimo Paul. Just watching the ball onto the bat. A bit short. Slow and he was able to just swivel around and play a lovely little sweep shot and able to get 4 runs. Good placement also. Knowing exactly where the fielders are. 
see the stance that you're speaking of. Open stance from Kimo. Nice flight to delivery this time from Moti. So this is a good battle as well. International left arm spinner, the test spinner from Albion. Against the international around uh, Kimo Paul. You find that most batsmen who would have that kind of stance, like, you know, would able to cover the ball, moving the front foot more. But if you don't watch yourself, you could be put putting yourself to play very much on the onside. With that kind of open stance. Long forward in defense, and that will be the end of Moti's first over. Six runs conceded, Escobar 51 for four. Good over there by the Escobans, uh, and able to get a boundary off of Moti there, and some probably two runs. Uh, had an anxious moment when Kimo Paul actually had to really scamper through for that single, and he made his ground. But just looking at it, John, we have seen that with the play still overcast and spin being introduced. We're now looking at um, Pestano who will be picking up the attack from the from from the, the northern end. Let's have some lessons in seam bowling. You mentioned with overcast conditions. What does that mean in the in the context of cricket? Well, basically, what it means is that um, you know the fast bowler could be able to relax in terms of you know not overworking himself, not you know getting too much worked up. And, you know, you just try to put the ball in the good areas, not trying to do too much. You know, the conditions would help you. So I think Pestano would want to say to himself, let me just bowl a close off stump line. Starts short and down the leg side. And Ignat Passard looking to hook, misses it and goes into the gloves of the keeper. So in terms of conditions, how does that help swing movement? Well, you know, once the place is overcast and you're... Uh, a seam bowler, you know, the atmosphere itself add value to your bowling. You know, you just need to just, as the old boys used to say to us, lose the ball in the air. I think so far we've seen that uh, Pestano, to me, the radar is a bit off a bit. You know, he's trying to come in and bowl fast. You know, he's trying to to, to really try to unsettle the batsman with some shortage deliveries. But in this con these kind of conditions, as we speak again, John, as a fast bowler, you know, the conditions are very much suitable for your liking. You just need to, to you know, not be in so much um, agitated in terms of trying to get the batsman out, but just look to find a good line and a good length, and you just leave the rest. That's a short ball on the line of the body. Again, looking to pull Passar. But it's an attacking field employed by Versamir Pomal with Passar on strike. There's it would be very interesting to see what would be the line of attack from Pestano you know, when he's bowling to Kimo Paul. It seems to be to Passar. He's trying to unsettle him with some, a few short lifts and deliveries. Passar, at, at you know, if we look at him for the past few deliveries, once they're short, he's not that comfortable. And he was kind of late on that pull shot just now. Nice partnership of 25 building here for the fifth wicket. This one, he gets a little bit of connection, Passar. Again, Pestan with that effort ball. Ramnath was under the bat, but uh, some distance away. Not to that silly mid-on position. With Passard on strike. But now Kimo Paul is on strike. We've seen him disappear down towards the third man. Jonathan Foo is at first slip. Kevin St. Clair at gully. So Kimo Paul. Expected his first child anytime soon, Kimo. Short ball, but well handled from Kimo Paul. Pestana looking to work his way back into the national side. Played a few first class matches early this season, then four day tournament. Lost his place. And the son is living on the highway now at Laluni. 
And he's been up and down the hills running. He looks a fit man today. Here he is with that familiar hairstyle. Oh, well, bold. Yes, it's always good to to live in areas where you could be able to to do some training and the loony area. Um, some lovely little grungs on that side. Um, you know, no, not, nothing big. I think there's the Rambaran grungs on that side where they have the, the chicken farm. Played a few games there. But it's good to know that he's, 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 he's up in that area and probably just doing some farming. His first over comes to an end. Three runs in his opening over. As he gave over 54 for four. Kimo Poad looking solid on 20. Ignat Passat giving good support on six. Yes, uh, good for us over there by Pestano. Um, I think he was a bit on the short side early on. But um, afterwards, he would have found a good line, a good link. Both a few good deliveries to Kimo Paul. Um, I think Kimo Paul and Passat would be, you know, they would be saying to themselves, you know, we would have to bat deep into this innings. They're by no stretch of the imagination out of the woods, so to speak. They would really need to carry on. And it won't be easy because these Barbishan bowlers, they won't be giving anything away easy. So they'd have to really work for every run. So it'll be Moti to continue. Oh, that's well bold. You hit, sorry, you miss, I hit kind of situation. Full and straight from Moti. Yeah, I think um, Kimo Paul will have to be very careful how he's playing on the back foot to Moti in particular. Yeah, it could be Moti could be settling up Let's see for the arm ball. Let's just watch and see. A wily customer, Kurakesh Moti. Kivo playing off the back foot again. This time we get a single to long off. I must say though, John, I'm really admiring the way how this surf surface is playing you know it's it's a true batting wicket you're seeing that once the ball is on that could hear a batsman could actually drive through the line and it's good to see the whole board of swords still still being consistent names like feather bed batsman's paradise used to be thrown out when describing border and it is a batsman paradise again. Yes, it's a batsman paradise. Um, I could recall that there were a f there was a famous cricketer. I can't remember his name, but as a youngster, heard them saying that if you can't make a hundred board, you doesn't worth your salt. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of the over. Fifteen go on fifty-five for four. Doesn't worth your salt means forget it. Forget it. <laughs> you know, but um, I I I, t I still believe that I've seen some. Good border tracks over the years too. I have seen tracks that where uh, fast bowlers bend their backs. They got they got life out of the wicket. They got pace. They got bounce. They got movement. So it was not all in all the batsman's paradise as it's normally proclaimed. We're part of the fly zone as well for domestic flights. You see one of the trans Guyana Airways aircraft overhead. No doubt heading into the hinterland of Guyana. Navigating some clouds, however, some heavy clouds. You'll definitely feed some turbulence on that flight. <laughs> definitely. And I think going into the interlands in this kind of weather could be very much troublesome, so to speak. <laughs> this one is back down the track. Keep up while hitting his teammate back, over, uh, back down the track. Pestano starts in the over. Uh, leaks a boundary. Yes, Kim up while just coming down the wicket there, covering it and able to Hitting Prestano straight on the wicket. As I said again, John, this is a very good batting track, and you could see Kim Paul was able to hit through the line of that delivery without any, without much trouble. The good thing is when when he's when he went down the track, dear John, his head was still.
This is batting intelligence at the next level. Just opening the face of the bat, taking an easy single just after hitting that boundary. Yes, I think that, um, you know, King of Paul have been around the international circuit for some time, play in a lot of the leagues around the world, a lot of the T20 leagues. So he could say to himself that, you know, he has the amount of experience that is necessary at this level to really turn in and to, and to give a good score. It's still kind of strange that, um, you know, for Sad, you know, he's playing all these hook shots and he's not getting through. Probably Kimo Paul would come to him now and say, listen, forget about the hook shot for now. Just leave it, let it go and just wait till they come into your half and then you're able to play. He's not that comfortable. He's not balanced when trying to play the hook shot. And in my estimation, when, if he ever got any contact on it, he could be on his way back to the pavilion. He would have to be very careful. And that's exactly what he did. He just moved out of the way and allowed that delivery to go. And I think that, you know, this is what you need to do as a batsman. You need to understand your strengths and your weaknesses. And sometimes, especially in this case, you allow the bowler to bowl to you. Yes, you're, you're bitter under some pressure. But there's Pestano coming. He's not particularly looking for a line and a length. He's probably just looking to say, well, okay, I'm going to bounce you out. So you just have to come up with your plan and able to to counter attack in a different form in a different form so best time with the ball two short lifts and deliveries in this over to facade let's see what the third delivery to him would be be better served John at things looking to bowl a good line and a good length this is not the kind of wicket that you'd want to think that you could really like blast a batsman out on you know you still have to look for your areas you know don't think to yourself that probably Posad in his estimation may not be looking the part but if you give him a chance to look and get his eyes in probably could come back and hurt you later on Very well played from Passad. Under some pressure, but he's weathered the storm nicely. The standard two over is none for eight. 60 for four, Esukebo. Yes, he has weathered the storm. I think what he needs to tell himself now, Passad, is that, you know, he's batting with Kimo Paul, who is scoring. So, you know, don't worry too much about scoring, so to speak. Not to say that he's just going to bat to survive and to, to use up deliveries. But, you know, he should be telling himself that, you know, I'm not going to do anything silly. I'm going to be here to support Kimo Paul, get myself in, get my confidence, and then I'll be able to do my little thing. Just Kimo Paul and double figures so far for Esu Kibo. Still to come, Quentin Sampson, Captain Anthony Adams, Garfield Benjamin, him and Singh for Esu Kibo. As Moti starts the new over, this is over number 17 of the Esu Kibo innings. So 50 overs aside, four teams in this tournament, each playing each other once. Flighted one, swept away in the air. Pestano cannot hold on. There's Kimo Paul looking to sweep. Got the top edge and not carrying to hand. I think, uh, I don't think Pestano teammates should be too pleased with him. No. And um, for all I know, there might be some nice language to be, be used towards him, but nonetheless, this is a game of cricket. And I do believe that at this level, um, you know, that catch had to be taken. I think Pestano was in the wrong position. He was actually looking to back into back instead of turning and run and run backwards. How costly would this be, John? Would Kimo Paul go on to make 100? He has 99 on his back. He's looking to go one more than that at least. Yes, I, I was actually joking around with him this morning and I said that, that cannot be your score. That's not a hundred. So I just got a text message as you're speaking about that aircraft overhead. It's one of Kimo's friends. Captain Loknot is, is actually heading that, that flight. 
17 gone. 61 for the loss of four. Uh, good, good, good over there by Motia over in which um, uh, uh, Kimo Paul could have been his way back to the pavilion, but nonetheless he's out there. And what he should do is make uh, make this opportunity count. You know, being given a life, he should be able to just say, "Listen, I'm going to make Barbies pay for this. I'm going to bat, and I'm going to bat well." On the next hand, Pesano would have been the person who dropped the catch. May want to say, "I'm going to take the responsibility and getting Kimo Paul out." And yes, we could be able to see a little tussle here, John. Four bowlers used. Three wickets to Shepard. One to Smith. Pestano Moti yet to pick up a wicket. And this one is floored as well. Down in the gully. Kevin Sinclair is there. Take outside edge, found off, keep a pause bat. And it's floored. I would want to believe if I was a betting person that today could be Kimo Paul's day. Good delivery there by Pestano, getting a full good line, good length, a little bit of movement. Kimo Paul on the front foot driving, catch not being taken. Pestano seems a bit frustrated, but what he'd have to do is go back to the drawing board, continue doing what you're doing, continue bowling that good line, that good length, and don't do anything different. Laps in concentration now from Kimo Paul. Chasing a wide delivery. Chasing a wide delivery there by Kimo Paul. It was quite interesting that the keeper Bramble didn't take that cleanly. Seems to not be moving that well behind the stumps. Probably need to just be skipping a little bit more and able to cover in some ground and, and doing some clean takes. That's a captain, Lokesh Reed. Heading that flight, heading to Region 1. Also a major part of Essequibo here in Guyana. This time he gets a single, Kimo. This is over number 18. Good recovery from Esu Kimo. Nice partnership. 35 runs with Ignat and Paul so far. Yeah, 35 runs. Good recovery. Um, I'm kind of disappointed in the drop catching of the Barbicians. I know they, they normally set high standards in their feeling. Um, a few floor Floored today, one by Fu, one by Sinclair, one by Pestano. I think um, you know they themselves, with the standards that they set for themselves, wouldn't be pleased about it either. So your good mate is saying hello to you. You gotta say happy birthday to him as well, Vishal Nagamutu. He said he always wanted to be a commentator like Nebo. <laughs> Short ball from Pestano. There was look, uh, Ignat. Oh, he just flay his bat. Hi Vish, good day to you and I'm I'm glad that you wanted to be a fast bowler. I, I'm, I'm not going with what John just said, you know. It would be better for you to be bowling fast instead of taking all those catches behind the stumps. I think Vishal did bowl a bit of medium pace. I think one time in a school game he got some eight or nine wickets in hands or he got all ten. Maybe you could ask him. I could remember that time. Those days... 11 with bat, 11 without, so maybe he got all 11. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, those days were funny kind of cricket. But it, it, uh, it, it's strange that Pestano, you know, he's still persisting with the short lifting delivery to Passad. And Passad is still trying to hook. And he's not making any contact. Maybe he should just rethink his strategies. Allow the bowler to bowl to you, young Passad. This time he pulls, but forward of squ square. It will go down towards deep mid wicket. Chase is on. Hetmeyer's going to lose the battle. <laughs> so four runs to end the over. That's the end of 18 overs. Finally a boundary to Ignat Passar. The score moves up to 66 for loss of four. Good pull shot there by Passar. The ball dogged in short. Didn't really get up with any amount of venom. And he was able to get into position and hit it far the square and able to get four runs. But quite interesting there though, John. I know most fast bowlers, whenever they use the short ball, they wouldn't be using it in the very last delivery in the over. You know, you'd always want to use the short ball maybe in your, in your third or your fourth delivery that it gives you a little bit more time that, you know, you could be able to come back and do something else, maybe try to surprise the batsman. But nonetheless, the game has moved, the game has evolved, and fast bowlers have different plans and different strategies, and it's all about that. 
part of the infrastructure wrong border is the GWI the shelter belt. There's a national flag just in front of that public building. So Moti Sass and Newbel uh, new over. This is his fort. I want to say good morning as well to Anup Basdio of South Florida Softball Cricket League. Getting ready for the Prime Minister's T20 Softball Cup right here in Guyana next month. Softball, is that part of your game too? I've never played much softball. The reason being is that I couldn't get a ball shot lifting deliveries. It was never <laughs> something I liked. <laughs> what, 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 what I could tell you about a softball game though, John, it gives you a different kind of exercise. When you finish with a softball game, you know, trust me, you get fit, man. Twenty four male teams, four female teams in this year's Prime Minister's T twenty Soft World Cup. That will light up the Georgetown area November eleventh, twelve and thirteen. Yes, I think in that Prime Minister's Cup, there are a lot of former national players who plays in that league. Um, the likes of Shamir Sadlu, Troy Gobin, uh, I think Troy Lewis, all those guys kind of play. So it'll be very interesting to see. Nice tight over from Moti coming to an end. He has bowled four overs now, none for nine. 19 gone, 67 for four. Oh, well, it will be very interesting to see the line of attack that um, that Pestano would be taking now, you know, taking into consideration if it had been, you know, on a bit on the short side to Posada in particular. And after being pulled, the very last delivery, you know, one would want to see if his, uh, if his line of attack would change, if he would try to weigh up the options of bringing the slips into position, into play. No, let's see that to be seen. Quinton Sampson's padded to come next. It'll be interesting to see if he will come next indeed because Captain Anthony Adams is also padded in the back. So much more relaxed as we keep outside now after 19 overs, 67 for four. So Vishal Nagamudu says nine for no run in a 19 match. Yes, I could remember that game very well. I think it was against um, one of the one of the, the school teams in, in, in Borbis, if I could recall. So actually, when I heard this Nagamoto getting this nine wickets for no runs, I said, man, this man coming from my place. Thankfully enough, he decided to wicket keep. So probably had he playing continue bowling seam, I probably wouldn't be getting the game for Guyana. Vishal Nagamoto, his uncle is also on the stream. Derek Kalicharan never misses a, some of the action from Guyana. He's always on that stream. Yes, I can remember playing a game against him, Derek Kalicharan, at the GDF ground. I think he came back with a USA team and um, he was way past his spring then. And, you know, I was just trying to bowl quicker and quicker to this, to this guy. And, you know, even at that age, he was still very much compact. As a batsman, and he was primarily a leg spinner. So, very good all around the Derek Alturan. So nine wickets for no runs in the under 19 match. Port Morant against Kill Donan. Wow. Uh, you know, you're talking about Borbis and the cricket has gone by, and, and you know, we're speaking about Vishal Nagamoto, and I'm just you know, imagine it's just seeing him, his brother Mahindra in the gully, especially to the fast bowlers. Man, he used to be a sight to watch there. In those days, the Barbitians didn't really had the, you know, in our time, they already had a firepower in terms of the fast bowlers. They didn't have them that much. Would have been Kevin Darlington and sometime Andre Porcy for opening bowling. But here it is now. I think Borbis is well blessed with lots of fast bowlers who I believe some of them are even better, good enough to, to make the Demerara team and other teams.
There's a youngster, Silas Tyndall. I would have loved to see him featuring in some one of the teams, probably the President's Eleven. You know, he's, 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 he's sharp, and I think it would have been good enough to see him being given an opportunity. Final delivery of over number 20 coming up. Some adjustments being made to the field by Captain Pomal. Looking to get the breakthrough. Partnership so far, 41 runs for the fifth wicket for Eskibo between Iknot Passar on 10 and Kimo Paul 30. Swing and a miss. And that's the end of the over. Pestano four overs, done for 14. Eskibo winning the toss and batting first, 68 for four. 20 gone. You see, those deliveries, John, they're deliveries that could be scored off. But the problem is, is that um, Passat is not getting close to the line of the delivery, you know, just standing and playing the bat. But he would need to get a bit closer. Once he gets close, he would be able to, you know, to, able to, 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 to get the ball into different gaps and so forth. So you must have some kind of foot movement. Just standing there and throwing the bat at it won't do you any good. As I say, good afternoon and welcome to uh, my very good friend. Machu Kisun. Chairman Neblet, good day to you. Good day to everyone following, live streaming, Guyana, around the world, wherever you are. A little bit of a recovery by these two batsmen after we had the <coughs> break for rain. When the rains came, they were what? 30 for 4 then after 8 overs. Now up to 20, they progressed to 68 for 4, so they've added 68. Extra is a healthy 19, but uh, what's important for Sikibo, German, is that Kimo Paul is still there. He's 30. And uh, good support from Eknot Passat East 10. And that's what you need. Partnerships. These two need to bat long because we're in over number 21 now as Moti continues. If you're going to stray outside the line of the leg stump, you're going to be swept away. And that was the perfect sweep shot down towards backward square, and he picks up a boundary. A lovely shot there by Kimo Paul, who I believe is playing a very good innings. He's playing smart. You know, he's not really going about looking to hunt um, what we, we would normally call it. He's just, you know, playing very much within himself, waiting to, for the bar deliveries and punks on it. So every time that he sees the scoring opportunity, he scores. And that's, this, this is what you want to see a player of his caliber doing at this level. I guess the, the break would have helped them in terms of the discussion they would have had in their camp, the Esquibian side. Because Kimo Paul looks a little bit different now in terms of his stroke play. Wanting to buckle down and get a good score for Esikibo. Yeah, he's playing Moti well. He's the main man in, in, in this lineup now in terms of the batting department. I think three boundaries in his knock so far, 34. On another date, might have been five, six boundaries. Uh, he's got a long time to bat there. The over comes to an end, 21 gone, 72 for the loss of four. Yeah, so far, we've seen him, you know, being able to curtail his natural aggression. You know, he's a player who could really come out and look to be aggressive. But here it is, he recognizes what is required of him at this time. And he's doing just that. Um, having good support from Passad, you know, who would have had his challenges. But nonetheless, he's soldiering on. And this is what you want to see. Passat seems to be a fighter. You know, he's not a person that who's just going to throw up the arms. He's a fight. He's going to fight. And that's exactly what he's doing here. Let's see how he would come, how um, uh, Pestano would go against him. I sure saw Pestano trying to bowl a few short ones with him early on. Let's see if he would continue that same line of attack or he would decide to just probably bowl a bit different. Slip in a gully in place. It's a nice shot. Nice shot by Eknot Passad. Back and pulled it. Lovely shot there by Passad. As I said again, and I was, as I said earlier on, he had his difficulties, but he seems to be a fighter. He's someone that is not going to go out just like that. And there it is. 
you know, hitting Pestano just over mid on one bump into the boundary, four runs, good shot. And I think he had already picked his spot. And this is what I think Pestano will be doing now. He's growing in confidence. And I think that, you know, he he could be able to just hang around there with Schemo Paul and they could be able to put on a sizable total for their team. Partnership 49 runs now for the fifth wicket between these two. Good partnership. That's what you need. If they can take that beyond 50 to 60, 70, 80, you get it. In 10s, well, you can get 100 partnership easily. 3.59 the current run rate. 50 partnership with a lovely shot through cover, over cover. Well played by these two gentlemen, Kimo Paul, with a lot more experience than, than Eknot Passad, who's moved up to 16, but a lovely shot over extra cover. And this young man is beginning to look very nice indeed for Esikribo. Yes, he's growing in confidence, and I think, um, you know, he's saying to himself, yes, I'm batting on a good batting wicket. And once the ball is in his half, he's going to play his shots. And this is what you want to see. You want to see positive stroke play coming from a batsman. Slow bumper on that occasion. Actually bunks, bunks before it got to Bramble. But I thought that Pestano, we look at him, I think he's a little bit guilty of bowling a bit too wide of the off stump. He hasn't gotten his line uh, uh, very much correct the way he wants it. He needs to be closer to that off stump and bowling a little bit too short as well on occasions. I believe that he's bowling a bit too short. Um, you know, this conditions, he needs to utilize it a bit more. You need to just bowl a good, foolish off stump line and force the batsman to come on the front foot. I think he's having the batsman playing too much back foot shots and a track like this. You don't want to be doing that. I think if you were to take a, a good look from the from the way in which um, Shepard and um, Smith would have bowled, they would have had the ball in the good areas most of the time. And even if you have to look at himself too. Um, I think he, Kimo Power was, was dropped at Gully and that was a delivery that was pitched up. So I think those are little lessons and little things that you have to learn as a bowler. And you have to remember how to do it instead of just trying to be flamboyant. Uh, Pamal having a chat with him. Uh, down at mid-off. Back to the top of his mark. So you've got what? You've got a third man. There's a point, cover on the boundary, extra cover mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. There's a forward square on the boundary, and a fine leg. Short ball, the trap set for the, the pull shot, but that was a little bit quicker. He missed it, looking for the, the pull. Niall Smith is out there, and you've got uh, the man at fine leg as well. That's Shepard for that shot, uh, Jermaine. But a couple of years ago, Pestano... He did well when he played for the Jaguars. I think he had a very good season a couple of years back. And then I think injury uh, struck, and then he fell off the radar. Up on his toes, rides it down to the man inside the 30 yard circle, at short third man there, Jonathan Fu. Gets a single as. He overcomes to an end. 22 gone. 79 for the loss of four. Yes, I think the strategy seemed to be from the Borbys camp to probably to bowl like not Passad. Um, you know, a few short deliveries or bowl him short. But, um, you know, I always believe that even though those statics might work at times, it's still good to try to bowl the conventional way. I believe that, you know, Pestano could be saying to himself, I'm bowling in overcast conditions and I haven't really swung the ball. I haven't really seen the ball. And this is what you want to do in these kind of conditions. Moti continues from the commentary box then. You could say Eknot Passad, they're flirting with danger, come down the wicket. Luckily for him, the ball then wasn't really that quick and was able to adjust and, and get back into his crease. I think many felt that Moti should have been a pick in the World Cup squad. But I'll tell you what, he'll get another, he'll get another chance. He's young. And maybe in the next World Cup, he'll be there for sure. Of course, if Akil Hussein gets injured, he may have to fly out. 
So many well, things can happen now in, 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 in the shorter version of the game, German. Injuries to players creates opportunities for others to get in somewhere along the line. And nothing's wrong with that. You've always got to keep yourself fit and ready to play cricket. Well, stranger things are happening in West Indies cricket, and probably you could see. Passad, they're just looking to go over the top. Didn't really make good contact. But still able to get off the strike and get one. Bring back his senior partner, now in Kimo Paul, and strike. And Paul seems to be very businessman-like with the last few overs. But you must be impressed with Moti uh, over the past few years. His cricket has certainly grown. He's, he's maturing. Yes, I think the very first time I saw him in Adan at the 19 level, I know he would have been one for the future. You could have just seen it in him. And, you know, he has continued to do well. On the other hand, if you look at Kimo Paul, once Kimo uses his feet nicely, he plays well. He plays his spin well, Jormin. Use your feet nicely. Get the left pad out. He's a right-handed batter. Get that left pad out. Kill the spin. <laughs> Moti's having a smile. He didn't deliver because Kimo was already shaping to play the reverse sweep shot. And then he didn't bowl. He didn't deliver. Dead ball signaled by umpire Dachan Nagasar. Cat and mouse game between these two large counties in Guyana. <laughs> But, but Paul always looks good when he uses his feet to the spinners. Any, any batsman for that, for that matter would look good. But Kimo Paul in particular, as he overcomes to an end, 23 gone, 81 for four. He looked pretty good. He has looked good so far to the spin. Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, but I, I always say, you know, Kimo Paul, as we see just now, probably was shaping up to play the, the switch hit, so to speak. But, um, you know, Machu, I, I have my own views on the switch hit and the reverse sweep and the scoop, so to speak. Um, I believe that those kind of shots are always premeditated. You know, um, it, it, it comes with, with, with some amount of premeditation because, you know, you, you're, you're premeditating to play the shot based on the line you think the ball is going to bowl. Um, it comes off well when you get through and when you miss it, you look ugly. So I think, um, you know, even though that those are some of the things that are being played in, in world cricket now, you would see the, the people like the Coley and the, and, and the Steve Smith and, you know, Clayton Williamson. You won't find them playing Joe Root. They won't play those kind of shots. They play more conventional, and I still believe in the conventional shots, not taking anything away from the flamboyance. Good balance statements there, Jeremy. I take those points very well. <coughs> the captain... Bowls now, and uh, that's edged what? Just a one bounce to Jonathan Fu, I make it. Coming forward, Kimo Paul, first ball from Pomal. Yes, I think, Machu, that um, Jonathan Fu standing at slip. Um, you know, sometimes for certain bowlers, you know, you want to know which might be the ideal spot to stand. And I think Fu could be caught in that position. Uh, strikes him on the boot outside the leg stump. Looks to sweep. Kimo Paul looks to play the slot sweep. Bramble tidying up from behind the stumps. So, Versami Pomal, the veteran, I think he picked up three wickets in the game against Demerara. He's leading this side well. West Indies test bowler as well. Took him a little while to get back into the test team. I want to remember it was his trip to where? Was it Bangladesh, I think? And many felt that he should have been in the side still. Um, but having that long break. But it's all about consistency and being able to bowl, uh, you know, at a high level. We're going to take a quick single now. Push into the offside by Kimo Paul down to cover. But consistency, the name of the game, and um, remember you've got quite a few spinners around to in the Caribbean. You had uh, Cornwall playing the off-spinner when he was in the test side. He's not in the test side now. The guy from Barbados, the other left-hand spinner. 
as well. So it's all about competing well and setting your standards high. Out leg before. Full length. Look to sweep. Eknot Prasad. We'll have a look at that. Oh, that pitched, I would think, on the leg stump, more or less, Jarman. Yes, did, did it turn in enough to, to have hit the leg stump? I think Eknot Prasad could see it himself. Probably a bit unlucky being hit on the full. That ball probably would have been sliding down the leg side from this vantage point. But nonetheless, he has to go. Good batting here by the young man. Played well. Bit unfortunate. But it's always good. I believe to play straight, you know, try and especially, you know, a new bowler, Pramal, come on, try to pick up what he's doing. I don't know if he would have been playing against Pramal before, but try to understand what he does, and then you could have a go. Nonetheless, this will be very interesting as I see Quinton Sampson making his way out, and I could tell you, Machuki, soon, if this guy gets set, I don't believe this ground is big enough for him. He could really hit the ball far. Very strong man. Tell us a little more about him. <laughs> I don't know much about him. Well, at he, all. Played, he, played, he plays for the, um, the Ghana Police Force cricket team, of which I'm one of the coaches there. And, you know, over the years, I have seen him really come down to the bottom at the back end of the innings and really play some real good shots, especially of the spinners. You know, he's very good hitting straight down the ground. You know, he's he's not that, you know, flamboyant in terms of stroke play, but he's a clean strike of the cricket ball. Mm -hmm. That I can tell you. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll have a look at him in a moment because Kimo Paul is on strike as over number 24 came to an end with that wicket. Moti, six overs, no maiden on for 15. Uh, will continue and Pamal in his first overs struck already as a captain leading by example. Very experienced over what? 500 plus. Uh, first class wickets, if I'm correct, on this belt. He's in that elite club. But let's watch Moti. Ball sweeps down towards backward square. Passad, LBW, ball per mall, 18, 53 balls, two fours. They needed some more from him. Maybe he could have got another 20, 30 runs for them. No partnerships really from the top order. Four for the first wicket, then eight, three, 12. But a nice partnership. Could have done with some more. 55 for the fifth wicket. Coming to an end with Passard's dismissal. Moti, my estimation, is born a little bit too flat and a little bit too quick. He just needs to, to, to hold it back a bit. Born a little bit too quick there. No, in one of the CPL matches, he was he was hit. A lot of runs came off his bowling. He was taken to the sword. But having said that, it's all about continuing after that event would have taken place and you would not have had a good day at the office. Apply your trade well. Make a, a nice comeback. The over comes to an as... Paul pushes out, plays the spin well. 82 for 5, 25 gone. We are at the halfway mark. Yeah, it's all about trusting your ability, Machu. You know, once you know that you're a quality player, you know, you know that you would have good days, you would have half days, and, you know, you have to take them both. All right, so Shepard, six overs, uh, three for 14, two maidens in that. Niall Smith, six overs, no maiden, one for 25. Moti, who just completed his seventh over. One maiden, none for 15. Prestano, five overs, no maiden, none for 21. And Pamal, one over, uh, one run, one wicket. Good bowling. They've all chipped in nicely. I think Prestano would want to improve his figures a bit. But having said that, they've all bowled well for Borbies. The bowlers have done very well so far at the halfway mark. No time lost. 39 minutes lost to a little bit of a shower that we had earlier. That came at what? 10.21, and then we restarted at 11. 10.11, 10, 11, beg your pardon. And then we restarted at 11, beg your pardon. 
So that would have been 49 minutes lost. Thank you, John Ramsing. He's our statistician, you know, now. He's taken over from a great man that we had years ago. Ron Legall. <laughs> Big name. Pushed down to long off wide. And the young man you're talking about gets himself off the mark. Yes. I'm going to have a good look at him. Well, um, I think what you have to do is go about it smart too. You're playing against um, very Sammy from Mall and and, uh, and Moti. Those guys won't be giving you anything easy to hit. So you would have to choose your deliveries and you would have to find ways in which how to score and how to survive. But you don't want to bat yourself down in a hole and also you don't want to curb your natural aggression. So it's about a balance. So you played in the under 19 tournament for Sikibo last year. Samson, can Quinton Samson? I think he's a bit older than under 19. Well, a couple of years ago, probably. Yeah, I think it would have well, been a couple year, of This year, actually, I've been told by our good scorer that he did. This year. Wow. He has it in his scorebook. Would you believe it? <laughs> hmm. You're the run number two. <laughs> For more balls. Cracked out to point. I guess, um, you know, when you look at it, probably by just looking at the bowl step that the young man took, because I know sometime earlier this year he got married. So I was just thinking that, um, you know, um, contemporary, most young guys or most men get married at a, what we'd want to call a mature age, John Ramsing. But um, probably that's why I'm just thinking a man is, 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 is older than, than he actually is, but very much young. We're talking marriage. I don't have a problem if, if, if someone, if a young man gets married young. Well, I guess it's always good to be stable. All right. Having a look at some of the spectators on hand in the pavilion. Nice little crowd giving support. Very vociferous over there. You can hear them all the way here. Barbicians, of course, always supporting their team as Moti Bowls. It's so, always, you did, so you did play some cricket this year, Quincy yeah, Samson. It's always good when you strike the cricket ball to have a good defense. And that's one of the things. The crowd roars because he was going to play a big shot and then he checked it and defended. <laughs> yes, I think. I think they know Mo their man. <laughs> I think Moti is very much mindful of it too. Probably you have done some homework on him. Up the Esikibo River, this guy is from. Yes. Um, he probably hits balls in the river. <laughs> if I'm not too sure, I think he has some kind of relationship with Kimo Paul, their cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And they're both batting together now. Big shot. Six. Into the Georgetown Football middle Club. Middle. Into the middle of the field. Next door to border, would you believe that? Yes, as I said again, big shot that once he gets going, he's very, very dangerous. Look at that, he on hits the, the ball a very far away. Mm. Good shot there by Samson, kept his balance, all his, all his position, and able to hit that six. And it looks like a lone young man in the GFC ground. Well, I think he, he came down from the pavilion there to retrieve the ball. There are a couple of guys there. Looking over now to, to, to actually admire the gentleman that played that shot. That was a big one. That's the biggest we've seen in, in, in a long time. 90 for the loss of 5. Uh, 27 overs have been completed. Moti, 8 overs, 1 for 21. And Pamal, 2 overs, 1 for 3. So Samson uh, is showing his class, showing the, the, what he is, uh, the 
being touted as the famous big hitter of a ball. We have a little break. As the Barbies team take some refreshment, Dion Fiasco coming out to ensure that his fellow colleagues, the umpires, are fine. We'll take a little break as well for a minute or two. Welcome back to the famous border ground, Essie Kibbo, 91 for 5. They're fighting, fighting hard with a young man who cracked a blistering 6 off of Moti. And now another one over White Long on. Out of the ground, I would make it, yes, yeah, 6. Two consecutive 6s off of Gudakish Moti. 8 overs, 1 maiden, none for... 22. He's gone up now to 13, Quinton Sampson. In fact, we want to correct some information we gave earlier. His brother, Quincy Sampson, is the one who would have played earlier this year. He's the under 19 player. And Quinton is 22 years old. So we've corrected our viewers, our listeners. Uh, there are two brothers, of course, one younger than the other. Uh, and the elder one is on display now. German, welcome back. Well, you're getting, you're getting your money's worth if you had to pay to come in. Those two sixes alone would have, made you, would have lit up your face. Yes, but I think that uh, he would know, Samson, that two sixes does not make a century. <laughs> so he would look into to push on. Cut away by Kimo Paul. Off the back foot, cracking shot off the outside edge down through the vacant gully area. Gets his 40th run. 99 for the loss of five now in over number 28. A good fight back. A very good fight back. And I think the momentum is kind of shifting to SCP will now with the crowd all behind Kimo Paul and Samson. 
the slug sweep for six over square leg not even Nile Smith who's planted right there on the boundary could have got a hand to that and not a lovely shot but this time picked up by Kima Paul look at the shot again wow the slug sweep beautifully done by this young man and Kimo Paul batting out there with Quinton Sampson showing Sampson well you know I've got more experience take a look at my shots too lovely six 105 the 100 coming up in the 28 over this yeah this time he swept it again and this time Niall Smith came in took the catch that's the end of Kimo Paul after that six what an anti-climax let's look at the replay took it easily roll the ball along the ground thank you very much says Niall Smith Kimo Paul a disappointing 46 didn't get up to a half century has brought his innings to an end and uh, that little partnership that was building 105 with a loss of five Jermaine a bad shot given the circumstances the feeler was planted there the previous delivery cleared him nicely this time around not so well it was a little it, it was a little you look at the little things that were that was done there the previous delivery that he hit for six was a delivery more on the leg side now what very summary from all did with all his experience is just pull it back a little thing more to the middle stump so he had to fetch from a little more distance so to speak but having said that the thing that Kimo Paul played a good innings for his team would have been very disappointed in the win and the man in which he out probably could have seen himself I could have probably looked to stroke that ball along the ground work it to the same long leg position and look to get a single instead of going for the maximum but these are the little things that you would have to to, to, to learn from and to do differently Right, so Kimo Paul caught Smith ball from all 46. 82 balls, 111 minutes, 3 fours, 1 6. 54 dot balls in his innings. So the, the captain comes out now. That's Anthony Adams. He's a right hander. 83, the number on his shirt. Samson, 13 from five balls. 15 minutes he's been out there. Two sixes already. Just two dot balls. What always interests me though, Machu, is to see um, players playing against their opposite number. Um, you know, Anthony Adams is out there, right-handed batsman. He also bowled left-arm spin. Orthodox is the same as Vers Sami Pramal and Gunakish Moti. So it'd be very interesting to see how he bat against these two. Just 23 runs for that partnership before Paul fell. The over comes to an end, 28 gone, 105 for 6, Essekibo winning the toss and electing to bat here. In round 2 of the Ghana Cricket Board, senior in the county 50 over tournament. Well, Borbis has just put the brakes on Essekibo, so to speak, for just for a moment. Um, we look in the past last three to four overs, we'd have seen that Essekibo found some kind of rhythm with Kimo Paul and uh, Quinton Sampson going some guns, uh, scoring some, some hitting some lofty blows. But there's Borbies pulling their way back into things again as Moti would continue to Sampson. Uh, Pamal has been good 2 for 11 from 3 over so far. That's on the leg stump. Driven to Moti's right, came across, got the right hand to it, and then parried it down to long on where Junior Sinclair feels, gets a single. 106 for six now. So the captain comes in to strike. Samson picks up his 14th run. Motin is ninth over. It's penultimate over, none for 29. One maiden on this belt. Too short and wide, and Adams doesn't put it away. Jormin should have done a little bit better with that, even though the man is there at backward point for that shot. I think what Adams would be looking to do here is just look to rotate the strike. He's not a hits of the ball. He looks to work the ball in the areas and, and run his singles. Yeah, Kimo Paul's innings, 46, 82 balls, 3 fours, 1, 6, 111 minutes. And you look at the amount of dot balls in, in his innings, 
you want to do better with that. You really want to do better with that. Back driving down through extra cover for one. Quinton Sampson. But I noticed German, he, he really hits the ball clean. His timing is, is excellent indeed. Yes, he is. As I said, you know, once he gets going, he could be a joy to watch. As I said, you know, he don't have that much flamboyance, but he strikes the ball clean. And, you know, he knows his area as well. You know, he wouldn't be trying reverse sweeps and these kind of things. He's very strong, straight down the ground and so forth. What might, have, what might have saved him there? we we'll probably have a look back at that replay if possible. Yes, let's have the replay. Struck on the par, but I think he pushed out. Let's watch that. Came forward, pushed out. Mm. That was a good shout. I thought that was a good shout indeed. But I think in the mind of the umpire, pushed out a bit. Probably saved him there. But he overcomes the end. 29 gone. Here at the border, famous border sword, SQB 108 for the loss of six. Samson's 15. Anthony Adams, the captain, is on one. I would, I would, I would really love, Matthew, that uh, that a lot of youngsters be following this stream, especially young cricketers from Georgetown. I'm hearing, you know, um, umpire Matthew Kisun on air, and you know they would know that once you get right out and you struck on the front pad, your chances of survival. Is 99% once Matrick is on his umpire. <laughs> That's a good one, German. I love that one. Yes, always, you know, you look at the distance from impact to the wicket. Yes, you learn that as you study that law. You tend to always give the benefit of the doubt to the batsman with the spin on. That's a nice back foot punch to Junior Sinclair at cover by Samson gets his 16th run but yeah. I like this fight back from Messi Kribo you've got to like it and 27 what, what, for 4 at one stage and what we have seen too much is that Borbis has maintained that 4 slip especially with, it, with, with Pramal and, uh, and, and Moti in operation let's go through the field for you slip it's a backward point. There's a cover and an, ex and an extra cover. There's a long off. Mid on in Hetmeyer. Mid wicket. Backward square. You've got a mid wicket on the boundary actually. And then you've got a more or less a mid on wide or mid wicket wide. Forward he comes. And then you've got backward square. But you correct. Jonathan Fools at slip. From all to Anthony Adams. Comes right forward. Respectfully forward to the spinner. It'll be interesting to ask John Ramsing to pull up some stats on Pamal in terms of his his bowling overall in regional four day cricket, how many overs he's bowled and so on. But we know he's in the five hundred club. What a player he has been. A real fighter, a real soldier. In Guyana's cricket, and he's still a fit, still a fit cricketer from all. Five hundred and sixty-eight wickets. His over comes to an end. Thirty gone. One hundred and nine for six. One twenty-nine first-class matches. Being a statistician, I guess you'll be able to pick up how many overs he's actually bowled at some point in time in. In first class cricket. <laughs> 568 first class wickets. Look at that. And you rank him with some of the other good regional bowlers as well. You've got the likes of uh, Imran Khan from Trinidad. You've got Miller, Nikita Miller. 4,000 German, 932 overs. Big shot! Coming to the right of our commentary boot, six. Guess who played that? Of course you know, Quinton Sampson. He's got strength like Sampson in the Bible. That's a lovely shot. Picked it up beautifully. I think uh, Moti's got to watch himself here. He's gone for a couple of sixes, uh, one for 31, and he's in his final over. Good, good hit there by Sampson, holding his shape and able to 
just clear that front leg and hitting the ball just over the country, but able to get six runs. I think what Samson has to do here now too is although he's hitting these sixes, is just think about just scoring and not just scoring sixes. Just not looking to hit sixes, so to speak. You know, you won't be hitting good bowlers over the over the fence or over the ropes all the time. You know, so when you hit a six, you know, try and work out what the bowler is trying to do. Work, get a single, play smart. Back foot punch through the covers. Now Smith shots in from off the boundary. One more to Samson. Looks very accomplished. He's 23. 116 for six. Adams comes in to strike the skipper. And when you bat with your captain, you, you cannot make fundamental mistakes at all. You've got to get the basics right. Forward he comes, Adams. Plays to Pamal, no run. Hazy conditions, dark clouds over the Nova border. You know, s s some might look at Anthony Adams there just batting and they might say to, to themselves that, you know, he's not scoring. But, you know, he's a very smart cricketer, I think that he don't really get the credit that he deserves, but trust me, he have a very good head on his shoulders. You know, he knows how to manipulate the strike. You know, he's not anything flamboyant, so to speak. But, you know, once he's there, he could be the one who would be guiding Samson and controlling Samson. So, in other words, he could be batting from the non-strikers end, so to speak. Pamal over comes to an L and his spell comes to an end. Ten overs, one maiden, none for 38. Very Sammy Pamal. He's done the work, but hit for... In fact, sorry, Moti, I beg your pardon. Ten overs, one maiden, none for 38. Beg your pardon. His spell comes to an end. Uh, hit for a couple of sixes. That would have spoiled his figures, Jormin. But we know, Pum we know that Moti is a good bowler nevertheless. But still, none for 38. Not bad at all. We're going almost less than four runs for over. I think that, um, you know, he would see it himself. He could have done better. But, you know, this is how it goes at times. And... You know, you're bowling to a very, on a very good batting wicket, and, and I think that um, going less than three runs, less than four runs over, is still good enough. At one time in the Jaguars lineup, it was Pamal and Vishu bowling in tandem. And now it's more Pamal and Moti. Big shot, pulled over mid wicket for six. Into an area of GCC where they do some practicing. <laughs> uh, tell you what, that's another lovely shot. John Ramsing will replace Jeremy Neblet. And I know he's been entertained thus far from this knock from Samson. 29, I think he's gone up to now as he watched the replay. Just to the right of the place, the left of the, of the place pavilion. Forward he comes and drives down to the extra cover, cover area. Was looking for a run. Welcome back, John. 122 for six. Good exhibition from Quinton Sampson thus far. He's 29. Thank you very much, Matthew. Yes, uh, we did make mention earlier about Sampson. We know that he's very capable with the bat. He's putting on an exhibition here for us after a good partnership between Kimo Paul and Iknat Passar. He's chasing the wide deliveries and still making full use of them. A different batter would see allowing that to go through to the wicket keeper. Evan Sampson looking to get on with things. He was actually, for two consecutive years, the leading run scorer for. The Prime Minister's T20 softball tournament. I'll tell you what, he hits it a long way. Very far. With this year's tournament, the MVP set to get a 50-inch television set. Samson has two already. <laughs> the next thing you know, John, you'll be hearing him in CPL. Never could tell. Well, hmm. I actually, his name came up, I can tell you that. Wow, wow. Hmm. That's the thing about T20 cricket. Back foot punch down to extra cover. Pomal's over comes to an end. Five overs. No maiden. Two for 19. 123 for six. Samson's on 30. And the captain's still there. Steadying the ship. He's not going to go for the big shot. He's on one. 32 overs gone. It's a different kettle of fish here today. 
Esquivo and Burby's battling. And word out of Everest is that Leon Johnson's brought up 100 for Demerara against the President's 11. We see the manual scoreboard here at Border reading 122. They're one behind what we have as 123. 31 to Samson. They have, we have 30 to Samson. And one to Anthony Adams, the captain. So Leon Johnson now stole, brought up 100 at Everest for Demerara against the President's 11. One of the players that you always want to be consistent. He hasn't been consistent enough. He's a good cricketer, good cricket brain. He's captain the Jaguars for a number of years, led them to what, five titles, consecutive titles, then he's, lost. He's yet to pick up a regional 50 over title, however. Hmm. Change in bowling. Kevin Sinclair has his first ball. You can see the Manhattan since Quinton Sampson has gotten to the crease. That very big over. 13 runs and over one of the overs there. So certainly looking to capitalize on some opportunity given here. Nice shot played through to the left of Pamal at mid-wicket for a single. But he's looking to dominate. Yeah, and that's what you've got to do. Look to dominate, but not get yourself out. You, you, you're going to put the feeling side on the pressure. With the likes of a Hetmeyer, Pamal, they're good feelers. Shepard as well. Uh, if you can put this Barbies feeling team under pressure, it shows that you're doing a good job. You've got to find the gaps, and that's important. Sinclair in the last game against Demeraro, eight overs, three for 42. So he's been among the wickets, like Pomal. Pomal picked up three for 30 against Demerara. So bowling in tandem, Pomal and Kevin Sinclair put a lot of pressure on this Eskibu batting lineup. Moti picked up two wickets as well, as well against Demerara. Runs here now for Eskibu. The ball eludes the keeper, chases on, but will not win the battle. So wide's signaled. Yes, yeah, so more extras. Trying his level best to pull that one in back. Just could not get there. So 129, the extras helping as well. Yes, yeah, certainly. You see, the Barbies, the Barbies team is strong in the batting lineup. So you've got to give them some runs. If they can add another 120 plus to that, make a nice game of it. Why not? Don't be afraid of 363 that was scored against them around. It's another day of cricket. So Captain Adams can also hang around. We know that he's picked mainly for his left arm spin bowling, but he's also capable with the bat. Just a single so far. But his role as he overcomes to then is just to give support to Samson and may perhaps take over when the lower order battles come through. 129 for 6. Well, even though you want Anthony Adams to remain there as a captain, you don't want him to face 42 balls for one run. He's faced 21 balls for his one run so far. No. Need to, get <laughs> <laughs> need to show a little bit more support. Need to give more support to the batters around him. In this case, Samson. 29 years old from Surrey on the Escubo Coast. Hmm. Anthony Orchester Adams. They have traveled the Esquibo Coast a couple of times. Nice place. So Adams would have been a part of the Guyana Harpy Eagles side. 
and he deserves his place. He's been steady, steady player. Still Samson backing away, making room outside his off stump. Still cannot pierce the gap. There's a ring of feelers starting with short third man, Jonathan Fu. Backward point in Junior Sinclair. Extra cover, Moti, and a short mid off in Kevin Sinclair. Then there's a deep cover and long off. Tight offside feel for Pomal. Pomal with two wickets already. Three in the first match, so five wickets. To the left arm spinner, the champion spinner. He's captain this year of, of Burbies. The likes of Shibron Hetmeyer. Touted to be a future captain domestically, maybe internationally in the, in the side, not as captain. Probably should have been in leadership a little while back. <coughs> After the under 19 World Cup, he won several years back. But never trust into that sort of situation. And you see a different complexion in terms of where Sydney's cricket with its leadership now. I think Pamal has been very good to Samson this over. And he's got the fielder's position nicely. Setting up the young man, looking to set him up with all his experience and guile. And being a smart cricketer. Final delivery coming up. Two for 19. Finds the gap. Between cover and extra cover. Back punching. Nice shot by Samson. Comes back for a second as the return comes in. From Pestano down at long off. The over comes to Nen. 34 gone. 131 for 6. Esikibo fighting back, John. But they need to hold their wickets intact here at this stage of the game. Four wickets in hand, still to come. Kadog and Phillips sing. So, this is a very crucial partnership now with Anthony Adams facing 21 deliveries for his single. But good fight back start to the Kimo Paul, 46. Ignat Passat supported well, 18. Samson now out of battle into double figures, starts a three from 23. That's 11 dot balls from him. Four sixes. He's at a non-striker's end, Samson. Sinclair is going to continue. Quite interesting as well. We haven't seen Junior Sinclair bowled in the last match against Demerara. And so far, 35 overs now being bowled. This is over number 35. We haven't seen Junior Sinclair as yet. We saw what he did for the guy in Amazon Warriors as the emerging player in the recent CPL. I thought he did well playing for the Warriors. He did well in the matches he played. Played quite a few. Matthew Nando, an emerging player as well, was in that squad. He didn't get to play a game at all. But being around the guys and the atmosphere uh, sets up something good for you in the future you grow you develop learn to communicate well understand them and flow with maturity growing maturity that's pulled away not getting a hold of that delivery how he wanted to samson got it out towards the mid wicket boundary area for one rampatab ramnat is out there yeah so nandu was with that side the warriors another good play actually Someone that is being looked at. I uh, like this opportunity for Machu Nandu playing with the President's 11. At least he's in a side. Let's take lots of responsibility with the bat. Open the batting with his captain, of course, with the pre President's 11 side, Trevon Griffith. Yes, he, he has to take on responsibility. He's known for his batting skills mainly. He can bowl spin as well. He got 27 in that first game. <coughs> Big hit of the ball is this Quinton Samson. 
some solid strokes. He's 35. Uh, 135 for 6. 35 overs gone. Adams is on 3. And Kevin Sinclair, 2 overs, no made none for 10. From all 6 overs, no made 2 for 21. See, manager Fredericks getting a message from Samson. So they look a bit relaxed now, Esukebo. Earlier they were a bit tense. Sukimo Paul wearing a Bangladesh shirt. And his dad, Kimo Paul's dad, is in the, in the fray as well. Down at the back, Kimo Paul's dad, Mr. Mr. Paul, David Paul. So he never misses chemo matches, you know. He's right there. Quinton Sampson's mom is in the in attendance as well. She's in the members' pavilion here at GCC. Sampson, 35. Pamal continues now into his seventh over. Jeremy Nebbett was mentioned earlier. Cool conditions will allow the fast bowlers to have a little bit more time in the middle with the ball when it's heated they tend to use a lot more energy any projected score John from here yeah we can start looking at some projection it's six wickets down it's gonna be difficult for I think they can look to get maybe same 240 that they got against uh, uh, well if Samson stays there yeah we'll look at it the and they don't lose wickets they can get over 260 this. probably yeah. Needs that support, but it's four wickets in hand. Everything being equal, this one is it into the gap. There's a flock of birds that was hanging out there, and that's good feeling from Nile Smith. Yeah. So just two more to Samson. Maybe if you'd have pressed that big boundary in the onside, you could have gotten the third. Yeah, but I think two four will be a decent, a competitive total here at Borda. Not for Borbies. Yeah, I think the way Burbies batted in the first game right here. Maybe we want some more, but given the start that Skibo had, the struggles in the middle, and now losing six wickets with 14 overs still to go. I think two f let's go to 250. Give him an extra 10, uh, 10 runs. But lots will be dependent on Quinton Sampson. Yeah, I'm going to support you on that. As long as he stays there, 250 should be on. Over completed. Seven gone for Pramal. Picked up two for 24 so far. And the Sukibo won 38 for six. thought Kevin Sinclair did well in that game for the Patriots when he came in in the CPL. Bowled very well. I think many were surprised that he wasn't snapped up initially by none of the, the franchise sides. You've got you've to stay with him in the game of cricket. You've got to give him opportunities. You can only develop if you're given the time to develop as well. Opportunities mean a lot. You grow. That's a bit of misfeeling there from Pestano. Down at backwards square. They've taken two. They're coming back for third. Good run in. Guilty there, Pestano. He's been a little bit ragged in the field. He's also bowled quite a number of short deliveries and wide. I suppose he's trying to work his way back into some semblance of uh, fitness and having the standard that he knows he, he needs to have as a cricketer. Yeah, cricket fitness you're probably looking at because he looks fit generally, but that cricket fitness is very important. Muscle memory will tell you this is what you need to do and this is what you should be doing and so on. Speaking of muscles, perhaps a little bit of cramping on Captain Anthony Adams. Oh, just his laces being attended to by 
none other than Shimon Hetmeyer. Season six, Adams kept quiet for a long time. This one is muscled away. Over mid wicket. Bang into the zinc. That's a big shot once again. And that will bring up 150. It's actually 148. So that's another big one. Muscled away. I remember Desmond Haynes playing a lot of those shots as well. And would hit the zinc as well at border. From both sides, well, the northern side and the southern side. But from the south side would have been lovely drives through the offside going over extra cover and so on that that was Desmond Haynes for you sir Desmond Haynes is he doctor these days right honorable doctor Desmond Haynes lead selector for cricket West Indies and Dr. Richie Richardson as well oh yes if we have so many doctors in West Indies cricket all cricketers should never be become ill <laughs> not medical doctors <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Shivdan and Chandapal, remember that? That's right. Well. An aspiring medical doctor or a statistician just to your left. Young Ronaldo McGarrell. I wonder where he will serve when he when he when he my is bet completed. Is, my bet is gonna be in a medical fraternity and not cricketing fraternity so much. Hmm. But he loves it both, I can tell you that. The ball is back. Sinclair at the top of his mark. Sinclair has developed a bowling style like Chris Green at the start of his run up. You see him taking a deep breath of a deep breath and then would go to deliver. Much like Chris Green. I guess he needs to watch his line too because he tends to bowl down the leg side, bowl into the leg stump, going further down the leg side at times. Like that. But Samson Samson shuffled. And then worked it away through mid wicket for one. Balls quick through the air. Doesn't give you much to work with. You remember Manju Nagamu to the leg spinner? Very quick bowler through the air. Played test cricket as well for West Indies. The over comes to an end. 149 for six. 37 overs gone. So if you look at your monitor, you'll see the projected scores. At uh, this current rate, after 50 overs, it can get to 194. But if they score at six runs and over, they can get to 100 and, uh, sorry, 222. They must be looking to get more than 240, 250 to be competitive. I like how you're using the, 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 the phrase to be competitive. To be competitive. You must look at what's... In the opposition camp, I Ramble 106 in the last game. Rampa Top got a star 36. Jonathan Fu 71. Hetmayo 58. <laughs> <laughs> That's gone. That's gone. That's gone. And we hope that the clouds you're seeing on screen can go as well. We don't want those clouds around. They're looming over the Queenstown Jama Masjid. That's slightly to to our left. 150 coming up in the 38 over. Very good for Sikibo, knowing at one stage they were 27 for 4 in the 7th over. Then 82 for 4, 55 run uh, wicked partnership. Eknot Pasad and Kimo Paul. And then 23 runs between Paul and um, Samson. The Cousins. But whilst you say uh, to make it competitive, I would say to make make it a decent game. Yeah. <laughs> a both decent of, match. Both of these teams won their opening encounters. Right. Eskibo will be the president's 11. Sweeping, missing, taken on the part. No appeal coming out. And of course, Barbie is beating Demerar by a whopping 189 runs. That was a mammoth victory indeed. 3, 6, or 3, and 45 overs. Nothing from the big hitters like Barnwell and others. Consolation knocks for the likes of Johnson. Four runs. Swept nicely. Picked that up from the leg stump. The captain. 
the touch bats, mid pitch, the confidence level growing. The captain has gone up now to what? Ten yeah, double he, figures. He was looking to sweep the previous delivery. He got it on the pad, missed the shot this time. Got good connection. And finding the gap as well, Anthony Adams. Yes. Good defense technique as well from the man from Surrey on the Escuba coast. I understand Quentin Sampson plays for Rising Stars Sports Club, which is also on the Escuba coast. We all know that he lives where he was born and bred in Caria Caria, in the Escuba River. And that's the fifth partnership between Samson and Captain Anthony Adams. Partnership coming at very good time for Esukibo at the end of 38 overs, 155 for a loss of six. So Samson has been around. He was part of the winning franchise side for Esukibo that won the three day and the 50 overs title a few years ago for when, the, when there was franchise cricket around. He played in the county at on the 15 level for the President's 11. He played in the county on the 17 and on the 19 for Esther Kibo. Yeah, five sixes in his knock so far, 47. Quinton Sampson. So he's heading up for a half century. Will be the first to get there. Kimo Paul missed out, 46. Then the next best total would be what? Uh, extras, I make it. Extras 24. Mm -hmm. But Ignat Passad contributed 18 in that good partnership with Kimo Paul as well. Had judged leg before to Pamal. So Pamal picking up two wickets. Shepard three now. Smith the other wicket. 36 balls, Samson's face. So he's doing pretty good. His strike rate 130.56. With 16 dot balls. Not trying to use up a lot of deliveries. He's trying to be more positive, more at attacking, but he's played sensible cricket shots, Samson. 15 wides in that total, extras total of 24. It's going to be a change of bowling. Romare Shepard is back, six overs. Before this, two maidens. Three for 14. Did the early damage with the ball from this, the southern end of the ground. Coming back from this end again. Before the rain, he had four overs on the trot. Then came back after the rain, two overs. The captain took him out of the attack, saving him for the back end. So here he is now. Bowling to Anthony Adams. Within your ball, Shepard got a lot of movement, lateral movement, especially bowling to the right-handers. So it'll be good to see how he's going to come now with the older ball. The two right-handers at the wicket. Still in the middle phase and four, o four fields out of the 30-yard circle. The last 10 overs, an extra fielder will be allowed to go out of the 30-yard circle. Whether they will need it, still to be seen. Burbies. Second 50 partnership coming up between these two. Really good indeed. Beats him outside the off stump, looking to flash through the offside. Play a big drive. That's Shepard for you. Your strike bowler. One could understand why a Sherman Hetmeyer would have used him the way he used him in the CPL tournament because he depended on him as a strike bowler, as his key bowler in the Warriors team. Yeah, that was a really good ball. No swing on that one. Just held its own after pitching. Beating, beating the outside edge of Samson. You can tell the crowd is really in behind this Esukibo side. Really pumped up and really supporting, cheering on Esukibo. Looking very golden in their gold uniforms, Esukibo. Samson now getting some attention. His lace is also becoming loose.
It's a good descent over so far from Romario Shepard. Just keeping it very simple. Not looking for too much pace so far. Just hitting the good areas. Right on target again. The man from Tokber Park in Barbies, Romario Shepherd. He's come a long way in terms of his cricket, Shepherd. One of the more sought after players at the limited overs in the leagues around the world right now. Would you have had him in your World Cup squad? For sure. Who would have you, you, you've left out? Would have, who would have you, you have left out? Given the conditions in Australia, over comes to an end, 157 for 6, 39 gone. Given the conditions in Australia, I think um, he would have been one of the, the persons, one of the all-rounders in that lineup. Maybe um, Shalon Cottrell, maybe, you know, not necessarily um, what about Rifa? having his time. Well, Rifa is, de is deserving of his place okay. as an all-rounder. I like Rifa. I like, I like Reefer too. I like Reefer too. He, yeah. he actually is in my squad. Uh, the 11 that uh, we had to name. You had to name an 11? Yeah. I, ha I had him in, in the 11. Yeah, I thought maybe um, you talked about Yannick Carrier. Yes, the right hand leg spinner. He's got a chance. But we know in West Indies cricket, strange things happen. Uh, sometimes the selectors think outside the box or think how other West Indians won't think initially when, you, when, you, when you're picking inside. It's a big discussion going on among the think tank of Burbis, Hetmeyer, along with Versam Mall, the captain, Nal Smith and Clinton Pestano. In the end, it will be Nal Smith who gets the ball, coming back for a Second spell, ball six on the trot, well, barring the rain. One for 25 before this. Also started with that new ball. In the gap, 50 runs to Quentin Sampson. Will come back for the second to complete his 50. Did not bat in the last game when Eskibo took on the President's eleven at Everest. Gets his opportunity here against Barbies at Border. And has brought up his 50 from 39 deliveries. Five, four, five sixes, in fact. 17 dot balls in that knock. So congratulations, Quinton Sampson. Well played half century. Coming at a time when his team really needed it. And now, now that he's gotten to 50, we can say job is halfway done for him. He has stamped his authority from the time he came in and a well-deserved half century, laced with a number of sixes. Excellent work from this young man. In the air and just, just short of Clinton Pestano. Clinton Pestano, the ball is following him around. And this time it's falling just centimeters short of him. And that's the funny thing about cricket. You don't give it away when you get to your half century. Sometimes you can relax a bit. And, you know, he, that shot really could have uh, been a little bit more circumspect to it. But 50, in good time, hitting the ball hard and clean, big sixes, especially, uh, I think, two into the GFC ground. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. It's an uppercut. And it's going to travel. That's a well-played shot. Ball that was wide outside his off stump. Uppercut. Slumped it nicely and got six. The Kyle Mears kind of shot. Over the point area for six. The uppercut sort of. We've seen, we've seen Kyle Mears do that. Maybe he, he's idolizing him. You could never tell. He's a big hit of the ball as well. Well, uh, maybe 
Kyle Mears idolizing Samson because the first time I saw one of the uppercuts like that, it was off the bat of Samson at a softball level, mind you. Yeah. But I think he's very capable here as well. The ball hit back over the head of Smith. This time, wonderful work from Pestano, diving full stretch to his right. And knocks it down. But a no ball again from Niall Smith. Yeah, no ball problems. He had it early in his first spell. And now guilty here again of committing the cardinal sin at this point in time in the innings. Uh, it's even worse in T20 cricket. But in 50 over, you don't need too much of this. You've, you, you're given 10 overs to bowl. So you can cat, catch your rhythm nicely. You can get into form because you're bowling 10 overs. So you can hear the crowd erupting because free hit is going to be sent down now and Samson is on strike. North Road, Church Road, where will it go? GFC. Oh, it's a wild swing and a miss. Looking for power. Not timing at all. Missed it into the gloves of the keeper. Pushed it just wide enough in that corridor there. That, that line that gauges the wide, that determines the wide, and he got it very close to that line. Samson went after it. Didn't get a touch. Sensible after bowling a no ball. 58 to, to Samson. It's 168 for 6. It's important not to be too full, especially when you're delivering that free hit ball. This time he over pitches. Good work on the boundary. Looks like substitute fielder Ian Hooper is on the field at long on. Yeah, Jonathan Fu not on the field. It's been good batting from Esikibo though. Nevertheless, even though it's 169 for 6 and not 369 or 269 as yet. That was a very well disguised short ball to Anthony Adams. Looking to play, looking to, meet, uh, to leave it alone in the end. It went by into the gloves of the keeper. 40 overs gone, 169 for 6. Smith 7 overs, no maiden, 1 for 37. Shepard 7 overs, 2 maidens, 3 for 16. So in the final power play, you can have five fielders outside the 30 yard circle. Dodger Nagasar, the man from the Essequibo area, East Bank of Essequibo, signaling the power play. Final 10 overs coming up. Shepard will be, in, uh, well, he will continue. A good spell. Kamal has done well with this team uh, for assaulting his captain. Into county level. Why not? He's done um, well with this side so far. But a lot of runs coming off the bat of Quinton Samson. He's set good standards, a high standards, to ensure that Tessica was not embarrassed at all in terms of runs. But to get past to 30 to 40 now would be uh, targets. Targets being set by the two batters out there. The captain is there. So he would have in mind targets along the way. Oh, that's powerfully driven back up the track into the, the wicket at the non-strikers then. And there's an appeal for a run out. By Nagasarsi is not out. That could have very well that could have been very close. Shepard did manage to get a finger to it, but you can see Anthony Adams bat was firmly in the crease. I wonder if Nagasar would have seen that one. <laughs> he was taking evasive action, Nagasar. Slightly slower, hitting in the air. And as Junior Sinclair overrunning it a little bit, and it goes into the boundary for four. Good camera work as well to pick up that one. Mm -hmm. 
Sinclair attacking the ball rather than trying to hang back to prevent the boundary. Eventually, give away the boundary. Yes, came in very quickly trying to cover ground to his right to use his right hand to knock the ball back in to play where we could probably gather some momentum and feel. He actually pivoted on the right foot to flash that ball, crash that ball through the offside. Now Smith on the boundary fields, one more to the total. So the big shots from Quinton Sampson continues. Wonder what he had for breakfast this morning. 64 on this belt, 174 for six. Yeah, that was one of the questions being asked by someone earlier. What does these, what are, what are, what does Quinton Sampson mean fed? That's not good batting, good support from Adams. Playing with the soft hands, so we get a single. Would like Quinton Sampson to take most of the strike. Shepard here, not getting the away movement he had earlier with the new ball. Now it was eight over. The ball obviously much older. 175 for six in over number 41. The cool conditions continue to be with us here at Border. Crowd has built up nicely. What he's done, John Quinton Sams, he's brought a lot of respectability back into the Asikibo innings. 175 for six when at one stage 27 for four. It looked as if the game would have been over early today. But this young man coming into bat at that stage and setting the border sword alight with some lovely shots, big hitting. Makes a big difference in the total. That was a lovely delivery from Shepard. Well up to the bat, he came forward, squeezed it out into the leg side, picked up a single. The over comes to an end, 41 gone. Samson is 64. Anthony Adams, the captain, is 13. And Esikibo, 176 for the loss of six with 25 extras on the board. Look at the Manhattans there, John. Over number six. And then you come down into the innings, into the deeper part of the innings. Big hitting from Samson. 13, then what, 12. You had 11 early on. Nice graph there. Showing the progress of the SQB side in terms of the scoring rate, runs coming off the various overs. They're not missing any cricket. I think the umpires are, what are they going to be doing? I think we're going to have the on fiasco coming out with what? Some balls? Maybe they, they, they need to change that ball. That ball is probably not in the best of conditions. And the funny thing, John, and the funny thing, John, is that they have two balls in the 50 over tournament. So you're seeing some of the guys supporting the Eskibo side. We saw Officer Ben, <laughs> Officer Venture sitting behind him. And I made mention earlier about Safra Sherifuddin of Vinet Communications and Kimo Paul's dad. And in the front, we're seeing Sadiq Mohammed, extremely good friend, very good friend of the man next to him, Kimo Paul, who's eating some lunch. So those are some of the guys that are holding things together for us to come get behind the scenes. Kimo Paul, dad, of course, supporting Kimo, the brand ambassador for Vinet Communications. Safra Sherifuddin, the CEO of that company. I can mention Sadiq Mohammed. They call him Tala. <laughs> Good mate of Kimo. They're having a chat there. The guys that play cricket as well? Maybe yeah. a lot of softball? No, a lot of, lot of hardball. Hard ball. So a little bit of T-ball. Mm -hmm. That's a strong Wakenham connection. Yes. Corporal Venture in the middle there from Wakenham as well. Nice island I've been there. Been to Leguan, been to mm -hmm. Hog Island. To island hopping, yeah. Pastor. I've done that. As you can go, it's a very nice area. Quiet. Breezy.
So we're back with the action. With Reese Nile Smith to continue. Now it's eight over. 176 for the loss of six. But it's a welcome return to inter-county cricket. I remember the days of inter-county cricket, the final going to the Burbies area. Skeldon, preliminary matches at Albion. Those were the good old days of inter-county cricket when the crowds were packing to the various venues right to the boundary edges, right in in the commentary box, literally, because the commentary was being done from a trailer <laughs> at Skeldon yeah, for a couple of years. Heard, uh, Naeem mentioned that. Short ball. This one is pulled away. Over mid-wicket. One bounce and what used to be the Kenny Wishard stand. That's a good shot again. A good hit from Samson. Yes, he's picking up the fast ball. It's very clean. That's a clean shot. Waited on it. Pivoted. Pulled it. Beautifully. Have a look at that again. That was played with disdain. A lot of bottom hand in that shot and, and, and powerfully hit. This time not in control of the shot, but it will drop uh, before the fielder comes in. That's Kevin Sinclair from square leg. Covering some ground to his right into the backward square area. Deep backward square leg area. One shot, umpire signaling. Not in control of that shot. Top edge in it. But dropping safe in the end. I think he wants to have a bat change. Signaling to the dressing room. 72 is Samson. Adams quietly has progressed to 13. And Mama Samson is in front. She's perhaps getting her family and friends on the... She's on her phone. And the father's there as well. So Mama Samson very proud of her son. She's perhaps telling her family and friends... He's on the go here at Border, the world famous Border. Parental support always good when it comes to sports. You've got your kids playing cricket, and it adds to balance. It brings balance. That's why, if in terms of female cricket in the Caribbean, parental support is very key to that as well. Because of course the culture is a bit different in the Caribbean, uh, and you need your girls. Parents would want their girls to be well taken care of. This one is flicked away nicely. Good connection from Samson again. He's motoring along nicely now for Estukebo. He's up to 76. I think, I think he can get to 100 if he stays there. He can get 100. 76 now. Still yeah, lots got of overs. time. Lots of time. Yep. Only in the 42nd over. And as we, we made the point, and as we made the point, as Jorman rejoins the commentary position, if he stays there to almost the end of the innings, if not the end, they're going to get 250 easy. Yes, um, you know, he's scoring well. He's, he's, he's striking the ball nicely. Um, you know, I think that what happened, he caught the, the Borbitians by surprise. I think little would be known of him just before the innings, but after the innings, I think he'd be well known. Um, good bit of button here by Samson thus far.
Oh, this is a healthy edge. But it's a feeler right back on the boundary. So just a single. So that's the end of 4-2. Uh, Nebo, I saw you walking around this beautiful ground at the border. Some observations. Well, basically what I could say is that um, the enthusiasm of the crowd, I think many of uh, many of have been asking, who is this gangster, who is this fellow, Samson, where he came from? And of course, I would have given them my bits, what I've known about him. But, you know, the, the, the old border sword always draws spectators from all walks. You know, some with vast knowledge and experience of this venue. And I must say to John that um, interestingly enough, uh, this fifth over format that is being brought back into county have drawn a lot of support and have drawn a lot of interest from, you know, lots of old cricket enthusiasts passing around, seeing a few around the ground. It's nice to see those. Yeah, that's one thing is for sure, the support. We saw it two days ago right here at Border. So Shepard will continue. This is his ninth over now, looking for further success. Look at the break. This partnership, a nice partnership so far of 83 runs between Samson and Anthony Adams, the captain of Esukibo. Quite interesting for your place in here, um, John. We're seeing a fine leg coming in the circle. And the, and the mid-wicket dropping out to deep mid-wicket was normally called what we normally call now cow corner. Quite interesting feeling position. Oh, this one has played into cover. Thought it was going to speed away to the boundary, but the feeling right back at cover point. Yes, one one kind of take away the support that Anthony Adams who had been given to young Quentin Sampson as he's on the go. Adams from the next end, as we'd say in different terms, that he's actually batting from the non-strikers and doing his thing quietly and guiding the young man as he continues to exploit himself. That's good running. Good running. I think the, the two was always there, but um, as I told you before, Anthony Adams, good head on his shoulders, you know, good cricketing brain, you know, hard worker, you know, always in the game, always thinking, you know, puts his best foot forward every time, and a very good leader. And this is he's doing, he's leading by example by doing the basics. Good feeling from Kevin Sinclair, but cannot prevent a single. Had he hit directly, it could have been interesting, however. Quick single taken. Yes, um, somehow I'm seeing that um, Samson seems to you know, be in some bit of a ball in the last few deliveries. I've noticed that he's not moving as, as freely as he was early on. Just hope from that standpoint that all is well with Samson. Oh, he's losing his shape there terribly. But this is good bowling from Shepard. Yeah, that, that was a slow ball there by Shepard, the leg break. It's good to see you adding some bit of variation, especially when you're bowling to someone who's having a go. Good bowling there by Shepard, mixing it up. Was a slow ball part of, part of your repertoire when you were bowling? Probably when I got to the age of um, friendly <laughs> cricket. <laughs> I remember yes. that uh, identical question was asked of a former West Indies great. And his, his answer was, no, why not? Because I was a fast bowler. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that, you know, the emphasis was always to bowl faster and faster. But as you got older, you recognize that, you know, you would need a little bit more. And that's when you begin to add a bit more in terms of slow balls and, and, and so forth. Puma will have some decisions to make because after Shepard and Smith, who may be given full 10, who will be given responsibility to finish the innings? 
Well, if it lived up to the two Sinclairs, Junior and Kevin Sinclair. Shot he was looking right. for that shot. Perfectly placed, right back over the head of the bowler. Straight as an arrow. Hit the wall and came back. Look at where it is. Almost to the pitch again. Beautiful shot. Well hit. Good match in there by, by young Samson again. He just held the shape and just went with a lovely flow of the bat. What a shot, John. As I told you all, Jan, when this youngster was coming in, I said to you guys that once he gets in, he'll be very exciting and he have not disappointed. I think uh, many have been asking around the ground, who is this young man? And I'm sure that after today, he'll be known. He's scoring runs against the very best. This Borbis attack is probably the best attack in the, in the county. Um, no doubt about it. They are the best attack. And he's making runs against the best. And this is what you need to do. Put your hands up. You have to perform or perform against the best. At 24, at 27 for 4. 199 now. Many felt it would have been bowled out a long time ago. 199 for 6 now. Projected score if we continue at this rate. 231. To go 6 runs and over 241. 7 and over 248. All to play for still. Definitely. We could still say, John, that, um, you know, given the, the, the circumstances, this wicket could have produced at least in the vicinity of 300. We saw it happen the other day. It's, it's, it's not a 250 or 240 wicket. It's no ball. Yet again, Niall Smith overstepping that front, that front crease and has brought up 200 for Esukibo. 200 for six at the start of over number 44. This should be a kind of, some kind of worry for young Smith. Um, we have overstepped a few times today, and especially these days when there is so much penalties in bowling no balls in particular, you know, you want to be very mindful of doing that. Um, you know, sometimes people believe it's, 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 it's that easy to just adjust your run and so forth, but bowling five no balls today, I think young Smith would really need to just take a look at what he's doing and just try to, you know, find where the where he's going wrong where which, which when in his stride he's actually in his delivery stride he's actually losing losing some rhythm somewhere along the line it's a free hit it was edged and taken by the wicket keeper bramble but it's the free hit you know it's kind of strange john that i'm seeing smith whenever you have to bowl for the free hit he goes to the slow ball and and it's amazing that you know he, he's not trying a little bit more variation you know other than when it's a free hit very interesting it was well disguised as well coming from back of the arm yes Smith. you'd want to use whatever you have in your repertoire once you're a bowler of any kind you know you'd want to use your slow balls your, your bouncers and and so forth your cutters Ball is driven straight to Shimon Hetmeyer. I haven't heard much of Shimon Hetmeyer in the field because he's kept so quiet. Well, not he's normally not such a vocal person in the field. You know, I always see him, you know, to me, you find him mostly at this part of the game, he would be mostly in the boundary, but probably just taking a little ease inside the circle. But he's one of the very good boundary riders in world cricket. He's at short mid wicket at the moment. This time the ball goes straight to him again. A chance for a run out. He throws the ball straight to Samson. Samson's well set on 84. 59 deliveries, two fours, and eight sixes. You did say that he is pugnacious once given the opportunity. We will see a good innings. We're seeing an extremely good innings from him. Yes, definitely. And I think um, we cannot speak about the way how he batted or how he continued to bat. With the support that you have got given that you've gotten from his captain um, Anthony Adams who may not be scoring that much but his presence at the crease has really been uh, uh, something to, to, to say about short and quick the partnership 95 runs for the seventh wicket so far that's the type of support you mentioned enough 
Quinton Sampson battled a little bit with Kimo Paul. Kimo Paul was dismissed for 46. And Anthony Adams now. Patient innings from the captain so far. 45 deliveries with just one boundary. But his role is just to support Sampson. Definitely. Once you understand your role well, you know, you could be able to execute. And I think that's what he's been doing. A bit of disappointed from the Barbies fast bowlers and not seeing them trying to bowl more deliveries in the block hole and not attempting more yarkers or the pitch sub delivery. Small just short and next length delivery there by Smith. Pace taken off. Adams unable to make contact. Samoti has finished his spell of 10. One maiden, none for 38. Pestano, five overs, none for 21. Virgil Sammy Pomal, eight overs, two for 30. Kevin Sinclair, three overs, none for 21. The bowlers used. So Shepard and Nile Smith coming towards the end of their spells. We haven't seen Junior Sinclair like you, you mentioned about a bit, a bit earlier. We haven't seen him in the last match as well against Demerara. That's a tough call, tough call, tough call, but uh, I think it would have been. <laughs> I still going with a tough call, John. Come on, give the fast bowler something. Good aggression shown there by Smith. White call by the umpire. But I guess Smith should tell himself, you know what? I'm getting some good pace out of this track. Getting the ball to bounce. Probably it's time for me to just look for a yorker. So by Lambert having a little bit of chat as well with Pestano. Pestano just give asking gently, was that really a wide ump's? So Nal Smith coming down towards the end of his ninth over. One for 51, expensive. Picked up one wicket. Very important wicket of Kevon Booty very early up in the innings. It's now down towards the end of over number 44. Looking to finish well. Dot ball to finish over number 44. Six overs to go in the SQ innings. 201 for the loss of six. Better over bowl there by Smith. Over in which we saw him bowl a few good shot lifting deliveries short and quick. Um, it's good to know that you know fast bowlers could come back in these later in these later overs and able to still get the ball to go through to the keeper. He saw among the pace. As we know, Nile Smith. It's one was, was touted as one for the future. Or the likes of Corti Ambrose spoke highly of him. Young man that when he gets it right is very balanced and bows with a nice rhythm, nice action. Good young fast bowler. So Pomal two hours up his sleeve will replace Shepard. Shepard did not finish his spell of ten. Nine overs, two maidens, three for 34. I'm getting some messages from Burbis, the Vendor issue. Just back from that road safety tournament. Saying he's watching and, and enjoying your commentary, Mr. Nublet. Well. Over at Everest, I must let you know. The Amrara batting first, 316 for loss of five. Johnson, 153. Barnwell 65, Rutherford playing his first game, 25 not out. Wow, good to see that um, Leon Johnson among the runs. Um, Barnwell also, those would have been around Ghana cricket for some time. And it's good to see that whenever, you know, these tournaments are being held, that they could put their hands up and, you know, really be stand out, so to speak. Johnson at 150. Many will have thought years ago, John, that Leon Johnson had it a bit, a bit of tough luck, tough deal. After the South Africa tour with the West Indies team, I haven't gotten a chance again. But such is life. You just have to continue to doing what you're doing well and continue to enjoy your game. And I think at this stage of his career, 
you know, Leon Johnson should be the ones to really propelling Ghana cricket in terms of leadership. So Pamal actually took the ball from Shepard, and now the ball is back with Shepard, and he's going to finish. I think there was a little bit of mix-up when he finished his 10th or not, but now he's going to be coming for his 10th. 3 for 34. There's no big scoreboard, no electronic scoreboard here at Border to give the full details, but Shepard now into his 10th over to finish off. Slow delivery from him to start. Samson on 84, 16 runs away from what will be a well-deserved century. And what's good about this tournament too, John, is that we're seeing good scores in terms of individual performances. Leon Johnson now racking up 100. The previous round we had um, the two wicket keepers, Bramble and Savory, scoring 100 or so. Oh, this time Samson holds out. Good catch to Niall Smith coming in from the cover boundary. And that's the fall of the seventh wicket. Partnership broken. 96 run partnership for the seventh wicket. Quinton Sampson goes caught cover by Niall Smith off the bowling of Shepard. Shepard gets his fourth wicket. Gone for 84 from six to one balls. Two fours and eight sixes. Good knock there by Sampson, but good bowling there by Shepard. You would have seen early on in the over. He would have started looking to bowl his slow balls and his cutters. And this is what you need from your experienced fast bowler. You know, it's not just about, you know, running up and bowl fast. You know, you have to use your variation, especially when someone is having a go. Well played, young Samson. Well bowled, uh, Romario Shepard. Good cricket all around. Parents enjoyed that knock. I'm very much sure of that. His mom and dad in the pavilion. And persons in the pavilion at, here at GCC, some of them on their feet, acknowledging a well played innings from Quinton Sampson. 84 runs, 61 balls, 2 fours, 8 sixes, 27 dot balls in his innings. Well played. Coming at a time when Eskibo really needed an innings from someone in the middle. Top water was blown away, and Quinton Sampson put his hands up and said, I'm going to do it. Yes, he did. Um, it would have been nice to see him get in that three figures. I think he played well enough. Um, to get 300, uh, to get that 100, but you know, as the saying always goes, you know, sometimes fortunes favor the brave. You know, he came and played a brave little innings, and he was, you know, he had his bits of fortune at times, but you know, to the better part, I think, was a well constructed innings, good positive batting, good entertainment, and one can really take anything away from young Quentin Sampson. I think he really came and really entertained this, this small but very vocal crowd this, uh, this afternoon. The batter is Neelan Cadogan. I saw you having a chat with the young man earlier this morning. Here he is with Bat now, facing the music. He's off the mark immediately, the left-handed batter. Coming in with five overs to go after this one. How important is his role now? Anthony Adams, the captain, has been there for a long time, 16 from 47 deliveries. Well, I think Anthony Adams now would be telling himself that, you know, um, probably we just take see Shepard off and it's over and probably look at uh, the remaining overs and try to see how far he could be able to push the score, being in a bit, and he could be able to probably just raise the scoring rate a bit now. He's not known for really muscling or hitting the ball around, but uh, he's still good enough to, to clear the ropes at times, and, you know, he he, along with the remaining batsmen, would have to tell themselves, you know, there's still a job that we have to be doing. You know, you can't be comfortable with a score like what you're having now against a strong Barbies batting lineup. It really is a strong lineup when you look at the likes of Shimon Hetmeyer, Jonathan Fu, Anthony Bramble. Shepard himself, Rampatab Ramnot. So these are some of the players you must look at. You can also give it a good whack. Romario Shepard, Pestano, and the Sinclairs, Kevin and Junior. Kadong looks good so far. Just two balls faced, two runs already. 
Yes, he's, he's, doing it, he's doing the little things. Well, he seems to know to handle himself with the bat. It would be a, very interesting to see how he bowls when he gets his chance. Saw him bowling at the Everest ground against the President's eleven. Was very exciting, not afraid to use the short ball. You know, he's very aggressive. You know, and I think that it will be very interesting to see how he goes against the this strong ball with batting lineup. Shepard towards the end of his spell. Looking for a 5 4. Will not get a 5 4. He will finish with 4 for 37 from 10 overs. At the end of 45 overs, that's Kibo 204 for 7. 104 for 7, I think, as you could say to themselves, getting a good chance there by by uh, by Quinton Sampson, you know, propelling them to that score. And Shepard is over, being 10 overs, two maidens, four wickets for 37 runs. Uh, I think he could say that, yes, it was a good day at the office for him. Um, you know, he bowled well, he used a lot of variation. And I must say that, you know, this is what you want to see. From your senior players and your players who play at the highest level to really come and show their worth when they're down at these at, in, in, at, at playing at these levels smith will not <laughs> be given his 10th over finishing with nine overs it looks like one for 51. five overs to go may come back you never know maybe switched to the bottom end Oh, yes, probably. I think um, what the captain uh, probably from Mal would want to do mostly is try to bowl the the, the, the fast bowlers, um, probably from the, the 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 short end of the ground, give it a, make it a little bit more difficult for the batsmen to hit. But it's yet to be seen. So we have Tandit Kadogan faces Pamal for the first time. I understand Kadogan plays for the Imambakas Cricket Club, down at Defiance. Left handed. Very strong young man, John. That Thank discussion this morning, what was that centered about? Because I saw you having a chat with him and you're gesticulating a little bit. I'm sure it must be fast bowling. Yes, definitely. I was telling him, you know, encouraging him to continue bowling the way how we bowl. I was telling him to try to bowl a little straighter today to the to these batsmen who are, you know, would have been better than the ones that he would be bowling against in the President Eleven. So I was basically just telling him to just back himself, you know, if don't be afraid to bowl the short ball, you know, look for the good areas and just, you know, go out there and and, and, and show what he have. Looking to take on Pramal. Misses a wide delivery and it's signaled wide by the umpire. So extras contributing 29 runs to this total. <laughs> this one is all pad. It's going to run away. Shepard giving chase. Two leg wise. Extras into the 30s now. 31 extras. We could see that's healthy, John, for the one extras. Three wickets to, to Pamal against Demerara, two now against Esukibo. Competition for places in this gun, Harpy Eagle side for Super 50 is going to be very tight. Pomal finishes his night over, remains 2 for 31, and at the end of 46, as you keep winning the toss and batting, 207 for the loss of 7. Yes, it seems to be Kevin Sinclair to be picking up the attack from the, from the, the, the southern end. And I um, haven't seen Junior Sinclair thus far. Just don't know the reason why he's not bowling. But I guess we may want to say that he's not needed. We never know. <laughs> A 
It is going to be Kevin Sinclair indeed. Before this, three of us, none for 21. Had three for 42 in the last game right here at Border. Burbies playing all three of their preliminary games right here at Border. This is like the home venue for this inter-county tournament. Just three venues being used in total for this tournament. Everest hosting matches in rounds one and two. Friday, it will be Border and Enmore. And Sunday, the tournament will conclude right here at Border. Short ball pulled away. Junior Sinclair, the man we're speaking of, is placed at mid wicket. He collects. This innings is going on quite a long time. It's now 142. Already the end of the innings at Everest. Them are 316 for five. Johnson of Mammoth 153. 65 from Christopher Barnwell and 25 from Sheffield and Rutherford. There's an appeal for leg before. Asking, begging, and this time given. Sukadogan, a judge leg before of the bowling of Kevin Sinclair. And now it's 208 for eight. Well bowled here by Sinclair. At this time you want to be bowling wicket to wicket and exactly that is what he did. Sukadogan just looking probably to just work the ball around the leg side. Missed it completely, played on the wrong line. I was a judge LBW. So Cologne gone for two. Anthony Adams is still there on 18. Nine deliveries faced from Cologne. He got his first two runs of the very first two deliveries he faced. And now disappearing into the pavilion. 208 for a loss of eight now in the 47th. We were speaking of 240 at one time, even 250. But now with eight wickets in the bag. Escribo will just have to battle to face the 50 overs and see how much more they can get now. Yeah, I think first and foremost that should be it. Uh, Skipper Anthony Adams would really want to take control of this, especially this time. You know, he has been out there for some time and he would want to really take control. Probably look to push on as close as possible, even to that maybe with 220, 230. Still, still achievable. The new bat is Garfield Phillips. Not a right-handed batsman. Ball is played down towards backward point and Jonathan Fu is back on the field. He collects. Hello to Simon Naidu who says Burby's all the way. I'm not sure if he's saying Burby's all the way as in where he is located now or he's supporting Burby's all the way to the title. Hello Simon. Good day to you. Hello to Mr. Hilbert Foster and everyone else in Burbis. Omanath Autar, Vimen Walter, chip back up the track almost carrying to hand, but that's a good way to end the over. So a successful over for Kevin Sinclair and for uh, Burbis. As you give three overs to go, 209 for eight. With three overs to go, uh, I think. Um you know, if they could look probably to just score at least about five runs per over in the next three overs, they would be good. Um, they get anything else, it would be a bonus. See, so just when Samsung's at a crease, you can see the high rise buildings on, on the graph. Since it's dismissal, some very cheap overs. Kiddies cricket going on. On the hockey court. Mom and an aspiring cricketer. <laughs> yes, I think he he would have been hearing a lot of stories about Shivnarine Chandrapal. He seems not to want to put on the bat. As a family of Graham Alley, executive member here at GCC. Pumal to continue. Phillips gets a second run. But it must say, it is a good effort for Eskibo after being pegged back early on. The established batters, Buddy, one, Savory, one, Ricardo Adams, five, bundled out very cheaply and very early. This is a good recovery. Most definitely.
This is the final over of Pomal. Two for 33 for the experienced left arm spinner from Albion. With international experience. This one is tugged away nicely. Very busy <laughs> body, Philip. Phillips. You would have seen Phillips in the last game. Yes, I saw him. I didn't, um, unfortunately, I didn't saw him bad, but he's a good little left arm spinner. Yeah, just two wickets fell. Mm -hmm. Oh. When they skip a batting, just two wickets fell. So. Yes, yes. But, uh, you know, John, he's a, he seems to know himself with the ball. You know, he bowls kind of flat. You know, um, bowls more wicket to wicket. Not much variation. Good little cricketer, anyhow. Just nine sixes in the innings. One from Kimo Paul and eight from Samson. It's a wide signal by the umpires. Helping the, the total along. Nine sixes, nine fours as well in the innings. Wow. I think um, Quinton Sampson would say to himself that he really came and, 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 and did a work for his team. You know, I think they were more than done and out. And uh, one could see from an escribble point of view, he came as a surprise package for the Barbicians. I don't think much was known about him before then. Maybe one and two players would have known about him. But today, I guess that he would be known. Or he has been known. <laughs> I don't think anyone will forget him after now. I'm speaking about the players. They know what he's capable of. And it's good to know that when you know players get used to you, um, you know the way how you would score and the things that you might have done, you won't be doing it so easy because they learned how to bowl to you, they learned their game and they planned for you and so forth. And it's up to you to continue to improve and, and better your game. And to make adjustments as you go through. Pomal, Pomal work with the ball has finished. 10 over is 2 for 36. The captain of Barbies, how well has he bowled? He has bowled well, I think. Um, oh, that's the 10th six of the innings. Hmm. There is captain of F. Esquibo lifting Sinclair over long on. That one has gone into the Ministry of Agriculture building. It's it's agriculture month, you know. Well, definitely, and you know the the guys from the Cinderella County. Uh, I think that we could say that Adams is now wanting to say, "I'm going to pick up from where Samson left off. I'm going to do some farming. I'm going to purchase some plants." And he decided to make his presence felt with uh, that six. Our colleague has left his chair, left his lunch. And going to check on his vehicle because that one was well hit onto Regent Road. Pass is your vehicle okay? <laughs> Good. Well, I, I, I don't think that it um, necessarily. I think maybe might be looking to see the direction if the ball went exactly in the, in the agriculture ministry, because I think that being an insurance man himself, I mean, a windscreen or a tail light, you know, that could always be replaced. You were mentioning. Pomal's work today, 2 for 36 on his 10. Yes, I think he bowled well. Um, good experience. Um, you know, he, he came on at the time when they... That was pulled ferociously. So Anthony Adams getting into the boundaries. Habit. And now on to 30 in quick time. Yes, he said Adams getting very deep in the crease there and swiveling on that delivery. I'm beating a man at a deep mid wicket. Junior Sinclair had no chance. That was well hit. And Mr. Smiggle on the uh, on the scoreboard left his scoring post to go retrieve that ball. Very helpful young man. Edged away. Pestano takes it at short third. That's the end of Captain Adams. Gone for 30. Caught at short third by Pestano off the bowling of Kevin Sinclair. It's now 224 for nine. Yeah, good bit of bowling there by Sinclair. Adams losing his shape there, probably looking to go for another maximum, looking to capitalize on this short end of the ground. Um, you know, missed out on 
and was caught with short toward man. Nevertheless, I think Andy Adams would have played a good hand today for his team. 30 from 60 deliveries. Two fours and that magnificent six that was just hit. Him and Singh, the final batter coming out for Esukibo. Just one over to go after this. And joining Phillips. So Kevin Bodhi, one. Kevin Christian, two. Kimo Savory, one. Kimo Paul, 46. Ricardo Adams, disappointing, five. Ignat Passard, 18. Quinton Sampson, innings top score, 84. Anthony Adams just dismissed 30. Neilan Cadogan, 2. Phillips is there. Garfrey Phillips, 3. And Heyman Singh, last man now out to face the music. 224 for 9. Eskibo. Shepard, 10 overs, 2 maidens, 4 for 37. Niall Smith, 9 overs, 1 for 51. Kurukesh Moti, 10 overs, 1 maiden, none for 38. Bestano, 5 overs, one, none for 21. Promal, 10 overs, 2 for 36. And now Sinclair, this will be his 6th and 5th and final over. 2 for 35 so far. It's whether it's going to be Niall Smith or Pestano. To finish in the next over if needed. Like before, appeal given. So him and saying this miss leg before for one. Escobar innings finishing 226 all out at the end of 49 overs. No need for the 50th over. 226 all out, 49 overs. Yes, I think uh, with the good, good, good bowling there by Sinclair again. Just hitting the ball, wicket to wicket. Getting his man out and a frustrated Garfield Phillips to the next end, hitting the pad. Know the feeling of the tail end, saying to yourself, Why did I take that single and give this man the strike? Nonetheless, I think that Tessie Kibo, they must come out with their guns fighting. You know, they can't, you know, just give up at this stage, even though you're bowling against or you're coming against a good batting lineup. You still have to back yourself, do the little things right, try to create some pressure, and then hope that things work from there on. As you know, in cricket, you could get wickets out of routes. You could get wickets by good feeling, runouts, and so forth. So it's something that you, you, should, you should put into your thought. Eskibo won the toss and decided to bat this morning. 46 from Kimo Paul, 30 from Captain Anthony Adams. But the innings highlight 84 from Quinton Sampson. Good support from Prasad. There was a repair work in the middle after Bodhi, Christian, Savory, and Adams went very early. And in the end, 226 all out, 49 overs. Bowling for Barbies. Pick of the bowlers, 4 for 37, Romario Shepard, supported by Kevin Sinclair. Not a three wicket haul for him. Following up a 3 for 42 against Demararo. Today, 3 for 35 from 5. Pomal in the wickets again, 2 for 36. 1 to Niall Smith. Moti and Pestano, wicketless today. 227 is the target for Barbies. When they come out to bat in about 30 minutes' time from their 50 overs. We'll be back to bring you the action. Do join us.
Well, welcome back to the action here at Borda. Overcast conditions here. You mean with us? Are we getting ready for the run chase? As Kipo bowled out for 226 at one over remaining in their allotment of 50. The highlight of the innings, Quinton Samson. Samson. Well played, 84. 6 to 1 balls. 2 fours and 8 sixes, as you can see. Kimo Paul supported nicely. He started the rebuilding process actually. For the six, made it two, three fours, and one six. Anthony Adams down towards the end. 96 run partnership with Samson. 30 from six to balls, two fours and a six. So the top order, the bottom order, did not stick around too long. 226 all out from 49 overs. 32 extras helping the cause as well. Pick of the bowlers, Romari Shepard, four for 37. Kevin Sinclair, 3 for 35, and Fierce Samuel Pomo, 2 for 36. Niall Smith, 1 for 51. Moti, economical, none for 38 from 10. Pestano, yet again, a bit on the expensive side. None for 21 from his five overs. So we're ready for the run chase. And it's going to be Anthony Bramble who will be facing the first delivery. Rampatab Ramnot is with him at the non-striker's end. Kimo Paul with ball in hand will be coming from the North Road end, the old media center here at Borda. Cool conditions, should be able to be favorable conditions for the cricketers. Clouds are high, no immediate threat of rain, but the weather changing very quickly these days. Two slips going down and settling in. Into his chair is Matthew Kisun. Matthew, trust that you had a good lunch. And we're ready for the run chase. 227 to get for Barbies for their second win in this tournament. Not a bad lunch at all. Thank you, John. Good afternoon to everyone. Viewers, listeners all across the world, especially in Guyana, the Eastern Caribbean region, in Canada, in the US of A. A lot of West Indians follow the cricket even in that part of the world. Kimo Paul starts first over to Anthony Bramble. And he plays a loose shot outside the off stump. But John, the key factor there, you look at uh, Quinton Sampson's knock of 84. Had he stayed on a little more, certainly 250 plus would have been on. And that, that, that is what we were discussing early on when they were batting Esikibo. Had he stayed there, let's say, almost to the end, 250 plus was definite. Yeah, and then you look at if they had a good start as well. We expected more from Kevin Bodhi. Kimo Savory, Ricardo Adams, those guys with reputation and some runs, especially Bodhi and Savory, runs under their belt from the last encounter. But cricket has played one day at a time. So Paul will continue. It's a very important wicket, Anthony Bramble. And if they can see the back of Bramble early, or if they can get a few wickets very early, S. Cable can feel that they're in this one. Because with Burby side, a very good batting unit. 363 from 45 overs for six wickets the last time they played right here at Border. And the pattern of Border continued then. Runs galore. Naughty shot from Bramble. Right across his thumbs and maybe looking to paddle sweep. Help it around the corner. Quick delivery from Paul. You talked about Bramble uh, being very important here for Barbies, uh, the Centurion from wrong one. Um, Kimo Paul, very important for Esikibo as well in terms of ball in hand, with ball in hand. He got a nice 46, didn't get up to the half century, but he's a main man here now. Lovely shot. True extra cover. Chase here for Samson, and they'll pick up two runs. To get Barbies going, Bramble off the mark. He's picked up from where he's left off. Fine shot along the ground to extra cover. Kibo Paul would have played three test matches for the West Indies. 23 won the internationals. 23 T20s. I remember it was 5 for 15 in T20s. Still a West Indian record. In fact, that was eclipsed by Obed McCoy. 3 for 44. Bowling. Best bowling in a one international. So he... At the international level, so has picked up wickets. 
at the domestic level. He has a 5-4, 5 for 49. Two five wicket hauls at the domestic level, 50 overs. So you can see the importance of him at the start of this bowling innings for Bobby, uh, for Eskibo. It's a no ball. That has plagued him as well. That one is traveling, almost hitting us in this high commentary box. And that one, Bramble got enough connection to a no ball and he got the first maximum of the run chase. Flem Roy Lambert has been amassing really no balls from his end mainly. I've not, I don't think I've seen Nagasar signal any no ball from his end. I might be wrong. I stand corrected. But, yeah, you're talking about Kimo Paul giving his stats there. His cricket has fallen away, but it's time for him to make a nice comeback. That was too short. And Bramble flat bats it down towards mid on and goes into the boundary at long on for four. So six of the no ball, the free hit dispatched for four. So that's 11 runs and two deliveries. And already Burby soft off flying start. Nine without loss, still in over number one. If they score at a healthy rate, the game could be over in about 35 overs, probably. Or even less. It's 13 without loss, in fact. 12 to Bramble, and one no ball. It's a good finish to the over. So, but an expensive one from Kimo Paul. Burby is off and running, 13 without loss. Akimo likes to put in the extra effort and sometimes when he does that, it, it throws him off a bit. A lot of runs are scored off of him. That's one of the things he's got to work on with his game. You know, putting in the extra is good. Yes, it shows your intent. You want to give it your best. But sometimes you can overchuck, as we would say. And he's done that many times. But I would love to see Kimo Paul get back into good stride with both ball in hand and bat in hand. He's a good all-rounder. He started off fairly nicely in terms of his career, but injury would have plagued him and he was out of the side for a while. But it's time for him to make a nice comeback. We have lost the win, Matthew. And some clouds building up as well. Nice buildings in the background here at Border. That's overlooking the Queenstown area. The Brazilian Institute in the foreground. This is going to be him not seeing left arm Seymour to pick up the attack. You're having one of the two new balls. Boarding from the southern end of Border. Bramble started playing for Guyana 2010, some 12 years ago. 31 years old now, Anthony Bramble. So as a 19 year old, he got his first opportunity. And it was at the 50 over level. Yeah, he's got, he's got a lot of experience, Bramble. I think when uh, CPL surfaced this year, people asked, you know, why isn't Bramble in the Ghana side and what not, the Warriors team? Uh, those questions were asked. And you were hearing things like, well, he's probably not fit enough and ready and what not, that he gained some weight, etc., etc. But to, to me, Bramble's always a, a fighting cricketer. He tries to give his best. He's had his ups and downs, but really he's, he's, he's a consistent sort of cricketer. One of your better keepers, of course, Singer Yana. Yeah. Very pleased with his, with his glove work since taking over from Darwin Christian. I think he did very well. Rampatov Ramnath, one of the teenagers in this year's tournament. Had a start in the last game, did not carry on. Oh, almost carrying to hand. Fortune favoring Ramnath, who's the brave one at this time. He gets off the mark in cheeky fashion. Down to third man, boundary. Yeah, flashing shot. The extra uh, 
back lift, as you can see, that extra back lift and then slashing it over that dangerous cordon. I don't know much about him, but um, yeah, he got a start in that first game. What, 30 odd? 36. I'm watching him more or less for the first time. But Barbies, Barbies are known for producing cricketers out of the blues, but they would have been playing cricket a lot uh, quietly, as we would say. Nice defensive stroke, pushed out towards cover, no run. 17 without loss, 12 to Bramble, Ram not 4. We're in the second over. Paul's first over was, was expensive, but he needs to make a nice comeback when he bowls his second over. Catch his rhythm and be that threatening bowler if they're going to make inroads into this Burbies lineup. He'll be a key man along with the likes of Anthony Adams. So Rain has stopped play at Everest. The President's 11, 41 for 2. Replying to 316 for 5 made by Demerara. Matu Nandu gone for 16. That's the big news there for President's 11. Nandu gone for 16. 41 for 2. Yeah, he's going to grow, you know, because he got 27 in that first game against Sesequibo. He's going to grow, young man. Another young man playing a missing. Ramnot. He remains on four. Two overs gone. 17 without loss. Give the good young players an opportunity. I always remember the Shea Hope scenario when he started for the West Indies. Um, not, not any particular average you can talk about. What, 16, 17, 18? But they kept him. And he developed, got back-to-back -back hundreds against England at, at Headingley, and we know the story of him. And then, of course, uh, in more recent times, not in the test team, but he was given a chance, and that's important. If you spot a good cricketer, give that cricketer a good opportunity. Give them a chance to prove what they're made of. I think about Barbies cricket, I think about the structure of the, their administration. Uh, the cricket administration is solid, it's good, I think they've got good vision. And that's why they've been churning out good cricketers over the years. Barbies cricket is solid, they play a lot of cricket there, and they produce some quality players. Ball starts his second over. There's Bramble driving it back up the track. Paul showing his skill with the f his footballing skills. But if Eskibo can pick up a wicket or two very early, can really open up this game. Yeah, left to be seen because you can see Paul. Paul, as we said, is putting in that little extra effort, but it hasn't produced anything deadly as yet face side. Bramble not timing that ball. We're looking to pull from outside the off stump. All along the ground, bouncing out to the man at mid on who came across this right. Very pugnacious, very attacking batsman. And a quiet young man, too, you know, John. Very humble and quiet, very mannerly. Anthony Bramble. Had a couple of chats with him. Sometimes a little bit shy, but, you know. Borby says, they, they, they've got the quality. And what we see here, Kimo Paul apparently cannot continue. <clears throat> Maybe realizing that what, what, what he's had a kind of an injury he's been, been carrying. Is it a sore heel or something? Um, it, it was a sore heel in CPL. CPL correct. Missed the last game because of an ankle injury. Mm. Now, after two deliveries in the second over, collected his cap from umpire Lambert. Now we see Samson marking his run up. So, this is going to be a big miss for Esukebo. This is services in the, in the entire for a strong match. 
Once for beaten players in that game. Both five wicket less overs, but now True. Timo Paul, after eight deliveries out of the attack. His experience as a leader with his cricket and brain is going to be well needed here. But the service is with the ball. Not sure if he's going to come back a bit later on. Looks like it, from the looks of it, could be the end of him for the day with the ball. Hmm. Uh, and sad, eh? because they're struggling in their fast bowling department here. No beaten, of course, the flu. Bowl five overs in that first game at Everest. And now, Kimo Paul, 1.2 overs. He, 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 he didn't come as close to beating at all there with five overs. 1.2. Chopped it onto Spaz and it bounced out into the offside. So his over basically will be completed by Samson, Quinton Samson. Very interesting though, John, in terms of scoring, the figures tend to read different. Huh? I learned that from Ronnie Gall, who actually taught us the score. Lost the sheep. We're going to go down the track to Samson. So Samson now with an opportunity with the ball. But he's going to be given an extended run. It's left to be seen. But he has an opportunity to finish off this over. And Bramble thinking perhaps he's a part-time bowler. Giving him the charge. Missed it. Two slips going down. Ricardo Adams at first slip. Kimo Paul at second. Well, he was a joy to watch with bat in hand when he got 84. Can he be the man with the golden arm today? To work some wonders for Sikibo. Good delivery, right up in the block hole. Bramble read it well. Just walked into that defensive stroke. Looks the part though, good all around there. You, you look to buy players like Samson in a T20 tournament any day, especially franchise cricket. You look at him, you see good all roundedness in him. He'll give you something. That's important. He'll give you something. He's in the game. His over comes to an end. Bobby 17 without loss at the end of three. See a send down four dot deliveries, which is very good. Three gone. He has an action. I'm trying to jog my memory to see that action that Samson is bowling with mirrors someone at the international level maybe past player if you give him the opportunity again you can have a look at him Matthew so him and Singh will continue one over for him before this none for four still at overcast conditions here at border the advultory steer down to third man looking to leave the ball looking to Allow the ball to go by, but getting the on the edge, Ram not. I just don't think Esikibo's got the quality fast bowlers to be threatening to these top teams. Um, they did allow the presidency them to get away, for my money, to get up after having them 90 for 5, to get up to 237. Uh, they've got a, a, a guy that bowls, Ek not person, but he's not fast. He's medium. So the, the, the fast bowling uh, department is wobbly. Leaves a lot to be desired. Mm. Because even beaten struggle, even though we know he had the flu, but he didn't really bowl at no particular pace. Good stop, short fine leg. Good feeling. The last game against Damrara, I'm not 36 on 50 balls with four fours. Bramble 106 from 86 balls. 14 fours, two sixes. 91 opening stand in that last game, and that laid the foundation for the likes of. Hetmeyer, Fu, Shepard, to really carry on to get that 363 that Burbis eventually got. So repair work being done to 
Brambles sneakers. Spikes perhaps broken and stuck. It's nicely bowled on the off stump. But John, if you analyze uh SC Kibble's performance with the bat two twenty six and you look at this Borbeast lineup, all you can say is it should be easy for them. Really should be easy for them, but a lot will depend on when the spinners come on, what they can get out of this pitch and if they can really threaten the Borbies batsmen. Oh, that's well bold. Full with 71 in the last game, some form. Hetmeyer, like we said. So, good batting lineup, and I think they can also play spin very well. And this track is good for stroke making. We've seen some good shots being played. Value for shots, good outfield. So it'll be difficult to contain Burbies. Hammered into the ground out towards extra cover. But but him and Singh doesn't look bad at all. Left hand medium fast. That's your reward, medium. Yeah, medium. Yeah. Doesn't look bad. If you see what I what I love to see is a little bit more pace from the left hand that's, yeah, fast that's bowlers. Correct. You need some more pace, especially to keep if you want to keep these batters in check. And Start with the new ball. And John, I can only assume that's why Cottrell was included in that World Cup squad because he's got the pace and he's he's gone down under to bowl on those fast pitches. Four of us gone. We're we'll looking to get 227 to win, 90 without loss. Because initially he wasn't in my squad when I picked my squad. He would have been in the reserve, uh, Cottrell, because I thought he didn't have, he wasn't fit enough and so on initially. Yes, Obed McCoy, but he's battling a bit too. But you're hoping that he would come good in the tournament. So the GCC flag, having its better days behind it. <laughs> yeah, fluttering away. You can see that the wind has picked up here at border. Earlier we saw the palm trees being very limp. This time the breeze has picked up over the GCC pavilion. Do you remember GCC recently won the NBS second division title? So their flag fly, flying proudly. Bowling change, spin. You called for it. Anthony Adams into the attack. So two overs from the northern end before this. And Adams into the attack already. So this is the fifth overall of the innings. So Kimo Paul assisting in setting the field. I don't think um, Anthony Adams would mind Kimo Paul helping him out. He's got the experience. He's got the ball. It's time for some action from the spinners. Starting himself as captain. Let's see how Bramble and Ramnock will face up to a young man who's growing in stature and he's got, got experience on this belt. First ball. Bramble looks to cut. Cut it into the ground. It bounced out to backward point. No run. John has left. Jarman has come in. In the air. Over backward square. The sweep shot. That's gone for six. So he's picked him up nicely. High in the air. Went over backward square. And he's picked up the first six of Bobby Sizzinins. Good afternoon, Jormian. Good afternoon to you, Matthew. Good afternoon to all our viewers. Anthony Bramble continuing from where he left off on Monday with a lovely little sweep shot for six. Oh, it was a dangerous player, this Anthony Bramble. Very stubborn. 
Plays a sweep shot again, went through the hands, I make it. Yeah. We'll have a look back at that. That's him and Singh. Plays for that shot inside the 30-yard circle. It went away for four. A chance there, gonna beg in by Esequibo. You can't miss such chances against a strong batting lineup like Borbies. Well, you shouldn't miss chances at all against any batting lineup. And I must tell you that the modern game is a game where you really can't hide anyone in the field. And I think Young Singh would have to really pull himself up. His team is under some pressure, and he would have to do something better. Anthony Bramble could say that he got away with a life. Anthony Adams on the next hand could be very much disappointed. So much it is a battle between the Anthony's, Anthony Bramble and Anthony Adams. Mm -hmm. The sweep shot again. Picks it up again. Into the place pavilion. Uh, just hitting the, the top of the second row of the place pavilion where his team is. Anthony Bramble, another six. Two sixes in the over. That's rubbing salt into the wound after being given a, a life there, Bramble. Making good use of it. Getting inside that delivery and actually still like sweeping that ball just in about the three middle and half. That's a very... Well calculated shot there by, by Bramble. He continues at this rate. As I said, the game will be over very quickly. We're seeing um, Ricardo Adams will be coming and play it straight from the bottom end. The southern end of the ground. And Ricardo Adams would have had a, a useful bowling performance against the President's eleven. Known more for his batting, but he's very a very useful left arm spinner. Mm. Ten overs, one maiden, two for forty against the President's eleven. Anthony Adams had 10 overs, 2 maidens, 3 for 14. So he had an excellent game with ball in hand. So both Adams would have contributed in terms of wickets column against President's 11. And why not? You need both on now. There are your two maybe better bowlers in the side. Knowing that you're struggling with pace, give them an opportunity to bowl early. And I think Machu, we cannot forget that the Esquivo team would have been hampered with the with the absence of Ransford beaten and now Kimo Paul not able to complete his over so they were hard hit so to speak back foot cover drive bisecting cover and extra cover picked up two Ram not he looks good looks good one didn't get so much of timing in that delivery. Mm -hmm. Put nothing to that shot. It wasn't so well timed, but able to get two runs. Ah, the bounce didn't do the field good enough there at cover. He had to chase, but he got a run. Awkward bounce to him. Just bounce just before he got his hands to it. And they picked up one. That's uh, Kevin Christian, the man at cover. But I suppose, Jeremy, if you, you're unable to bowl as Kimo Paul is unable to continue after 1.2 overs, contribute well in terms of your leadership skills in the field. If you, you want to see your team perform well and you've got experience, well, giving uh, Anthony Adams some help in that department is not bad at all. You can't do anything with ball in hand anymore. Bring influence. Bring something special to the game. That's outside the leg stump. That's going down towards fine leg. Kimo Paul giving chase. And he got a little tickle onto that. So one more to the total. It's gone up now to 39, 39 without loss. 
So as our small scoreboard to the right. Good to see the, the, the young men keeping abreast with the score, ensuring those in the pavilion and in the ground, they can know what's going on. Gain giving himself room off the back foot. And that's hammered down to mid-off. Quick hands of Savory there, the good delivery by Ricardo Adams, the delivery just pitched on about the line of the off stump and went through the arm. Good bit of cricket there by, by Savory. Nice use of the wrist, turned the way down towards backward square, they're coming back for a second run. But you wondered when Savory would have got into the act of things because he featured in the first three dismissals at Everest. He caught behind and then two stumpings. He was brilliant, absolutely brilliant at Everest. Really good, thorough wicketkeeper. He overcomes to an end. 39, is it? Or 41, I, I, I beg your pardon. 41 without loss at the end of the over. Yes, Savory have very good hand-eye coordination. Good glove work, good glove man, so to speak. Um, catches the ball nicely. Move nicely, nimble on his feet. Skips around nice, uh, especially if you keep him back to the fast bowlers. You know, he skips a lot. You don't really find him throwing himself, and that's the hallmark of a good keeper, able to cover ground by skipping. And, you know, one should hope that in this tournament he would have, you know, continued from where he left off. I think he himself would have been disappointed in the manner in which he got out today. And nonetheless, you have a chance to make up come Friday. What's it like working with him? Well, he's very knowledgeable in terms of, you know, where he wants to be and where he wants to go. Uh, so he's very good in, you know, working out, feeling positions and what bowlers would like to do and so forth. So seeing him out like that this morning was kind of a surprise. You know, he's the kind of player who could pick up things quite easily, work out feeling positions and work out what bowlers are trying to do. How do you compare him with a Tevin Imlak? Hope I'm not putting you in a hot no, spot. not really. I think um, it's a different kind of player. I think Imlak is more of a hard worker. And he's not, you know, the kind of player that you would say that Savory is more like a more free-flowing batsman so to speak but i think by and large he's a better glove man than hemlock i haven't seen hemlock within the last year or so but what i was seeing from him within that time i would say that savory is probably the or one of the best gloves men in the country savory in action again <laughs> slow delivery <laughs> see the smile on anthony see, adam's very face careful when i say glove man because you know when we talk about wicked keepers sometimes we include their batting ability. What I'm seeking purely on his keeping here. He's very good with the gloves. Nice thoughts for this young man, for his future. What did that miss? Everyone. Well, there's a whole thing that it missed everything. It missed everything and it probably passed through the stump without hitting the bill. Or it's in any of the stump. This is a big battle. Well bowled there by Adams. Well bowled. Big battle on between Anthony Adams and Anthony Bramble. Well bowled there, Adams. Well bowled again. Well bowled. Adams is now finding a good rhythm. Finding a good rhythm and giving Bramble some, 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 some trouble there. Anthony Adams is always a consistent performer at this level. It's been difficult for him to really break into the Guyana team on a regular basis. With the likes of Moti and Pramal. But I'm saying now is a consistent performer at this level. He would give you his all. He would come and match his skill for every with pong to pong with any player. And you want to like about him, he always backs himself, Anthony Adams. Yeah. 
the eight over starts, Ricardo Adams, as well causing a little bit of trouble for Ramnott. Lovely delivery that left him outside the half stump. Left hand round the wicket. Wraps him on the par. That must have been hitting him outside the line of the leg stump. It went away to fine leg. They came to for a leg by a signal by umpire. Nagasar? Yeah, as you look at it here, Machu, we're seeing a few things are beginning to happen. You know, there's equivalents, they're, they're finding their they're finding some kind of rhythm. And I think this is something that they would have to be consistent with. In the last two overs, we are seeing a few good deliveries sent down. And, you know, somehow the batsmen seem not that much in control as they were in early on. But I think this is where you have to be calm, you have to be patient. And just try to do the little things right. Just try to look to bowl in the good areas. Yes, I agree with you. We are in the eighth over. First power play. Just two outside the 30 yard circle permitted. And you've already got your top two spinners into the attack, knowing that you've got nothing in the bank in terms of your fast bowling department because Bramble and Ramnaut are going to put them away. They're just medium. A struggling Kimo Paul couldn't continue. Him and Singh bowl a couple of good overs. And they've still got. Eknot Pussad, he's not quick. So a lot will depend on the spinners. And these two men, the Adam Spear. I think Adam's looking, um, Bramble looking there to open up the hit through the offside. Look kind of ugly with that ball, dragging it through to the off onside. Looking probably to go over long off or deep extra cover. Lost the shape and just dragged it down to the long arm position, able to get a single. Uh, and you know, German, that has been one of Bramble's weakness. Sometimes he just gives it away. Some soft dismissals, plays some funny shots uh, after being set uh, many times, gets himself out. Brilliant work at point by Kimo Paul. You could expect such standards from such a man in the field on the offside. Nice little applause from the cloud to that excellent feeling by Kimo. Again, savory in action. Missed the stumps this time. Looking to flick it back. The over comes to an end. Eight gone. The total is 41 without loss. If you want to be a betting person, you'd want to, to place your bet on thinking that uh, most of the support coming in the crowd, coming from the crowd, has been coming in the corner of Desi Cribbons. So we could say that Desi Cribbons, they have came with their support, and their support, are, they are very vocal, especially in the wrong can I stand. Anthony Adams, two overs, one maiden, none for 16. Ricardo Adams, two overs, no maiden, none for 7. Bramble, 31. Ramnath, 10. Two extras. Eight overs gone, 43. Mind you, not 41 without loss. Anthony Adams will continue. You look at the Burbies camp, and you can see that they're all there watching on. High intensity here. Because it's good bowling from both spinners. Hmm. A drive from Bramble. Straight back past the bowler. Knock the stump out. That would be the off stump to the, to the right-hander. The other non-strikers there. Knocked it out completely. Looked very spectacular. Yes, I think <laughs> Bramble would have uh, probably... Adams would be saying, I would love to see Kimo Paul had his thumbs flying like this. <laughs> it wasn't to be. Naughty shot from Bramble. I don't think that shot was on. Looking to play a reverse, what do you call it, a switch hit? Trying to play the reverse three, but mm. I'm thinking that, you know, you've been playing well, been, been scoring nicely, 
Why would you want to play a shot like that? Gets a single this time. I think some of these guys uh, improvise too much in white ball cricket and it costs them. It's to their detriment. Well, you know, the, the, the nature of the game now is about improvising and, you know, we see it time and time again where players would be playing these kind of shots. But mind you, some of the players that you see playing those shots, 90% of them in war cricket practice to play those. So it's not something that you would just come in a match and decide, well, okay, I'm going to play a reverse sweep. I'm going to play a switch hit. It has to be something that you're practicing and you, you're confident in playing it also and you're, and you're good at it. So the left-hander comes in to strike. Adams will change his angle. He'll ball over the wicket. Left hand over the wicket. Adams was found the right pace for this track. You know, you'd say fast was both a good pace. Spinners too. I have to find the right piece, and Adams has found the right piece. You never tell yourself 226 might not be enough, you know. It's runs on the board. Yeah, yes, on. yes, it's a 50 over contest, Jormin, but it's runs on the board, and you've got to bowl to that, to yeah. that target. Yes, it's runs on the board, much, but I would think that. Um, you know, as people could say to themselves that we fell short, maybe by some 30 to 40, maybe 60 runs. But who knows? Um, they are still having a, a good total to work with. You know, cricket sometimes go in stages, go in sports. Even though wicket has not fallen as yet, I think they should still remain positive, keep fighting. You know, sometimes one brings two and two brings three. So they have to have that kind of self-belief in themselves and also saying to themselves, you know, we could do it. Nine overs gone, 44 without loss. Anthony Adams, three overs, one made none for 17. Ricardo Adams will start his third over. Two overs, no made none for seven. So he's been good. He's kept it tight from the south end of border. A couple of vehicles uh, in the background heading down Church Street, that famous street in Georgetown. And still famous. A lot of activity takes place on Church Street. You know that, right, Jeremy? Definitely. Um, I think the name Church Street came about because of the churches on Church Street, uh, probably. So they would have a lot of services with me in Church Street, I guess. Someone say night and day services. No, things have changed a lot in the city, you know, the capital city, lots of big buildings, big businesses have gone up. Lots of people have sold out their properties and have moved up the East Bank, you know, on the highway. Yes, and I think the Barbicians would be glad to say that the scoring rate has not gone up. Oh, brilliant effort from Ricardo Adams. Stuck the right hand out to a ball that went like a bullet. And it ricocheted it from his right hand and came down to the boundary for four. That was hit with sheer power, Jeremy Neblet. Yes, it was. Um, it would have been a brilliant take had Adams taken that catch there. Looking at his hands, I, I, I'm amazed that it hasn't done any damage. But let's hope that it's all is well. It seems to be. Ramblers move quickly up to 38. Oh, lovely, lovely. Down the track. Brilliant use of the feet to the left-hand orthodox spinner and picks up consecutive boundaries. Yes, Bramber has been batting well. You know, one must say that, you know, he looks the part when it comes to the crease. Um, wasn't particularly impressed with, it, with, with his wicket keeping, but I must say that he's batting and he's batting exceptionally well thus far. The 50 coming up, 9.3 overs, 52 without loss. So it's come up quickly. Oh, four more. You've got mid-off and mid-on inside the 30-yard circle, and he hit that straight between them, and that went for another boundary. Three well, consecutive boundaries, 56 without loss. Well, this is the, this is the challenge that, you know, that bowlers would find themselves in, especially in batsmen in the goal, where to look to, to place the two men out of the circle, and there it is with uh, the men inside the circle, Bramble able to capitalize on that and hit straight and hit well.
are sliced in the air between point and cover. Both fielders giving chase. Bramble will come back for two. 58 without loss. He's moved quickly on to 48, is it? 46, I ask 2-0. One of our scorers to tell me how many boundaries Bramble has scored thus far in his innings. Five fours and three sixes. He's not only continued from where he left off, he, he seems to have improved even much more. Yes, he's really, he's really taking the attack for the equivalent, so to speak. Bottom inside portion of the bat. Big drive again, got it down to backward square. Fielder came off the boundary, got one. He's 47 now. The over comes to an end. 10 gone. Burby's leading 227 to win here in the second round. GCB into county. Mill cricket. They're 58 without loss. I must applaud the way in which um, Anthony Brambler has gone about batting in this power play. You know, he came out and he's all positive. Played a few sweep shots and so forth. So the first power play coming to an end. And the umpire, that's Flemroy, Flemroy Lambert, has signaled the second power play where you can have four fielders outside the 30-yard circle. Kimo Paul marshalling the forces here as the captain, Anthony Adams, continues. About to continue. Three overs, one, one maiden, none for 17. So the long off, the long off will come up inside the 30 yard circle. Well, ball there again by Anthony Adams. Bramble looking to give himself some room. Adams cramped him for room. Even though it seems to be like Bramble is getting the better of this exchange, uh, uh, Machu, Adams seems to be very much ready for this challenge. See him ringing in some field changes. He's going to strengthen his offside field and, and he's saying to Bramble, let's see how good you are. Bramble 49, I make it, one short of a half century. Hope I'm correct, it's 61 without loss. Nice use of the wrist, turning it away to backward square and picked up two. Easy runs, playing with soft hands. 50 to Bramble. Down to fine leg for one, gets his half century. Raises his bat to his teammates in the GCC Pavilion. They give him a round of applause. They're supporting him well as we focus on them now. A very happy sight, the Borbis team. 62 without loss. A brilliant block from this young man. Yes, the Borbis team, from the time we have seen them, they seem to be very comfortable, confident. And they're gelling nice as a unit together. They enjoy playing with each other. You could see it. It's evident in their camaraderie. I think Adams would have to think about something else differently. Try and do something different. There's young... Neil Kodogan, the fast bowler, who in my estimation is could be very useful, very aggressive, and you need someone to just do something different, just to get you inside into the game.
Rob not gets it down to long leg for one. He's been quiet to the other end, you know, German. He's gone up to 11. I make it. Well, 12, in fact. He picked up two, 64 without loss. Well, you know, what he has to do, basically, is just, you know, play each ball in its merit. The young man now making his way into this format of cricket, and he would want to give a good account of himself. Anthony Bramble is there blazing guns, so he needs to just support his, be supportive. Oh, Wicket for Anthony Adams. We'll have a look at the replay, but they've lost their first wicket. And Ramnod goes. 64 for one. Let's have a look at the replay. Bowling over the wicket. In the air. Down to mid on inside the 30 yard circle. Catch easily taken. That's the end of Ramnod. 64 for one. As I was saying earlier on, Matthew, that um, Anthony Adams has found the correct pace to bowl in this track. And I think that, you know, that delivery was given a bit of flight, not much flight. But most of the deliveries previously would have been flat. But this was given a bit of flight. That's one thought that probably could have gotten on it a bit more. But didn't really get elevation that was required and hold out to the mid on. This would be a good, in, good little piece of battle coming up here. Seeing Hetty Meyer coming out to the crease. Bramble is batting well. Adams just got a wicket. I think that's equipment to be saying to themselves, if we could just get Hetty Meyer now, we could be able to force some more inroads into this strong and powerful Borby's batting lineup. Shemron Hetmeyer, big name. His name has probably been called millions of times all over the world of recent. But what's nice is that he's playing in the county cricket. He's here, he's at home, and he's made himself available to play. Got a half century in the first game, 58. Now it's time to see what contribution he will make now in his second match playing against Essequibo here. Coming out with Barbies in a good position, 64 for one. And so school is over now in the Georgetown area. A lot of the, the students are making their way down the streets of Georgetown, heading home. Maybe some will come to watch the game if they're aware of it. I think they would be aware, um, you know, the, the border cricket ground as it is now, um, it has been flattened, so <laughs> it's not anything that would prevent you from peeping in, and let's see that, hope that some could just actually come in. Ramble down the track with his helmet on, gets it down to wide long on for a single to bring Hetmai into strike. Bat him without a helmet or without a cap, 65 for one. Very talented, gifted cricketer. So much talked about him all around the world. His IPL exploits, playing for the West Indies, good 50 over cricketer, good record, good T20 player. Has missed out on the World Cup, but he's here. And I think everyone would be glad that at least, even though he's not in the World Cup squad, Given the circumstances and whatever situation would have arisen, he's playing into county cricket. He'll take his first ball from Ricardo Adams. And he's hitting in the air to the right of Adams, straight back over him to his right. And he gets off the mark. That wasn't a bad delivery there by Adams. I think Etty might actually reach for that ball and, you know, went through with a shot. Luckily for him that Adams wasn't able to get close to it. 
Not a bad delivery by Adams. Looking for the run, Bramble. And sent back by Hetmeyer. He had to turn around and scamper back into his ground. He's 51. He wouldn't want to be run out at all. I can tell you that. Good bit of cricket by the way he keeps Savory getting the gloves off quick enough and able to have a shy at the strikers in. 14 minutes after the 3 o'clock hour here in Guyana. That's played down to long on for one. So schools would have been dismissed at 3 p.m. Nice cool conditions. A bit dark. We're not threatening in terms of the light. German Neblet. Neblet has left us. John Ramsing has come back in. With one delivery left to complete 12 overs. 67 for one. Burby, strong reply. Big appeal. Is this the big fish? Is this the big fish? Umpire <laughs> Narasaj unmoved. Cut the mouse game. <laughs> Looking to get the big fish. So to say, he overcomes to an end. 12 gone, 67 for one. Anxious bit of cricket here at the moment. I think Esukibo felt they had their man there. Not sure what. What happened really? But I can tell you this. Let me put my little two cents into this. I think I saw daylight between bat and ball. It was a good delivery. Quicker one from Adams to end the over. So Hetmeyer still there. I think they really wanted that wicket. Might have been the plan to, to go up in unison after the, the outside edge was beaten. Now when you've got a top play out there, a man who's played all three formats of the game, Test Match, 50 over, and T20. You want to get him out very quickly. When everyone went up, they heard something. As you said, John, didn't look as if he got a touch, but we're, we're way back. Um, by Nagasar also uh, thought, like us, he was unmoved. And over the years, I think we've seen that Hetmeyer once they are just found and, and catch taken ten to walk. Outside edge from Bramble. This time Flemory Lambert was signal four. So that one has been seen easily. Take edge boundary. A part of Bramble's cricket that sometimes you you feel a little bit disgusted about. Um yes it's one day cricket, it's white ball, but you're looking for some better cricketing shots from him. That's the truth. And I think that has been his downfall on many occasions. Uh, Bramble is the kind of player that can perform much better. His stroke play can be much better. He's a complete sort of cricketer. But sometimes he plays some rash shots. Very rash indeed. Aerial, the slashes, looking for the pull, not in control, down the track. Not what you want from and Anthony Bramble at all. He sweeps well. Like this shot. Down towards long leg. He gets a run. He's, he's on to 57. Two extras on the tins. Hit Maya 1. 72 for 1 in the 13th. So we actually managed to pull back the clip to have the, the look at that appeal because he clearly the ball was beating the outside edge extremely good work from the lead technician on the project this time there's a big appeal as the ball goes past the outside edge and still be taking off the bills very quickly so the spectators realizing the value of Hetmeyer's wicket, they've gotten into the game as well. Look, Esikibo badly wants this wicket. They're working hard for it. Even Savory. On and off the field, <laughs> they're working hard for it. <laughs> Even Kimal Savory. Wow. Working hard for Hetmeyer's wicket. But he looks, 
you know, Hetmeyer looks uh, very cool. You know, looks as if he's changed a lot in terms of his style, his attitude, maybe out there. Not the frisky kind of uh, player. Looks very calm indeed. Well, let's see the situation. We'll get a better of him. He's going to absorb this pressure. It's a very difficult passage of play. Overcompleted. 13 gone. 72 for the loss of one. Hetmeyer still there on one. Has faced four deliveries. Bramble at the other end. 57 from 48 deliveries. Six fours and three sixes. Men mental strength always a key component in the game of cricket. I think I, I mentioned that Shemaine Campbell said to me a little while back when we had the female cricket in Guyana. She said that that's one of the areas that is so strong for Australia's cricket. Mental strength. So there are no Kenny Richard stand, no Clive Lloyd stand, and spectators have taken advantage points in front of the areas where those stands were. Nice little crowd on hand. I remember my days after school, the Bishop's High School, Comerical Street, I would ride my bicycle and find myself at border because in the afternoon, whether it was 40 cricket, the gates were opened after the final session. Even some club cricket, I would come find myself watching club cricket just after three o'clock, if not playing in the school compound. No need to open gates now because too many people don't come to watch cricket now. Cultures change a lot, the given the, the, the nature of the game. Okay. Four runs. Yeah, good cut from Bramble. Good connection this time. As you can see the ball was, the ball was outside his off stump. In fact, the ball was on his leg stump. He backed away nicely. Good shot from Bramble. Mm -hmm. Confident shot. Beating the man at point. 76 for one. Yes, but John, based on the, the level of cricket being played now, the gates are always open. So you, you can come in as early as you want. Well, it's good to see spectators coming back to to look at some cricket. Inter-County cricket is back as well. Kudos to the Ghana Cricket Board for bringing back Inter-County cricket. The franchise cricket has served. I'm sure there is place for franchise cricket still at the domestic level. Bringing back into county cricket is something that many felt is a good move. Yeah, franchise cricket is all about sponsorship as well. Very important. My never pounced on the opportunity is that you talked about to come in when the gates are open after four. I I hardly rode rode past border in those days. In my days, I always had this mental thing that said, "Boy, you're not." in the tick of things, you're not going to get into the ground just like that. So I hardly came around. It's a very attacking field set to Sherman Hetmeyer. Slip is a field that's very short, extra cover. In, in Buri. Here's Adams again. This time, flicked away nicely. Will get his second run. It's been there for a longish time now, We're not getting a lot of the strike. So it's 14 gone. 77 for the loss of one. 78 for the loss of one. One thing about Het Meyer, we say Het, he don't ball on his leg stump. He's going to pick you up. He's going to make you look like nothing, as if you're a sweet bread bowler. He's so very strong on, on the leg stump, very strong. At 78 for one, the runs required to win. It's now 149 from 36 remaining overs. And you can see the worm now, my good friend, the pasta. The blue worm, which represents uh, Demara, Borby, sorry. It's way ahead of the red worm of Eskibo. And hello to Pastor Stevenson worm. Yes. <laughs> Playing Grenada. Yeah, so if he's listening, watching. Borby's well ahead at this stage. One fourth and I needed from 36 overs. Required run rate of 4.14. It's a walk in the park, you'd want to say. Comparatively, you can see Barbies dominating here at the moment as well. With the cool conditions in Georgetown, it's a good time to walk around Georgetown too. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that was a good time to walk around Georgetown. 
So the blue skyscraper is dominating the red. So Burby's definitely ahead. Looks like Phillips will come into the attack. Speaking of walking around Georgetown, I'll tell you more about walking around Georgetown in a minute. Left arm spinner. Anthony Adams out of the attack. And another left arm spinner is into the attack. You saw Phillips in the last game. I think he, he, he tends to give the ball a bit of flight. There are times when he um, pulls it down quickly, tries to vary his bowling, but he's one of the bowlers that would give it a little bit more flight. A little bit slower through the air. Anthony Adams, five overs, one maiden, one for 27. Captain of Eskib out of the attack. After the last game here on Monday at Border, when Burbies badly beat Demerara, mm -hmm. after the game, I walked from Border Cricket Ground to Stabrook Market. Do you remember my car was stuck on the west side of Demerara? Yes. Played on. So the young man gets his big milk wicket. Stomps flattened. Anthony Bramble playing on to a full delivery, back and away, chopped on, and he's gone for 62. What a wicket for Garfield Phillips to pick up at this stage. Anthony Bramble bowled for 62. It's now 79 for two in the 15th. Absolutely brilliant. I was just looking at his figures from the previous game. I think he got one for four, the four from his 10 overs. He bowled well at Everest. Uh, could have picked up maybe another wicket or so, but uh, removing the big scalp, the man who got 100 in the first game, uh, bowled back in a way, quicker delivery. As I told you, he bowls with variety, and he got that one to nip underneath him, and comprehensively bowled, the off stick knockback. Uh, Bramble gone for 62, 79 for two. Essekibo would want to feel that they have a little chance here. There's a little snick, sneaky little period here that they can nibble into uh, to pick up a couple more wickets. As Jonathan Fu comes out now to do battle. Yes, Good so wicket. Good Br work done by Phillips, the young man. Bramble 62 from 53 balls, seven fours and three sixes. 30 dot balls in that innings. And what a sight for any bowler with a stump flattened after getting your man. It's a big wicket, Anthony Bramble. 106 in the first game, 62 today. So he's really putting his name on the selectors' lips, on their pens. 79 for loss of two wickets now. Jonathan Fu, who got 71 in the last game in quick time, is out there. Good to see Fu. This man has been around, I think, he, where, where, where he lives now, in the U.S., and plays a lot of cricket there. Just back from playing some cricket in the U.S. of A. Jonathan Fu. I like to call him Alexander. Jonathan Alexander Fu. A man to remember. Of course. For many reasons. But he's a big hit of the ball as well. He can play some lovely, clean cricket shots. Fools off the mark immediately. But Garfield Phillips, first time I'm seeing him, I haven't seen him prior to this tournament. I haven't seen the name either. So, good addition, you would say, for Esukibo. Looks very confident, I must say. He has to believe that he can also trouble hit my hair. He's going to come over the wicket, left hand over the wicket to the left hander. He's going to tor turn the ball into Hetmeyer. You can see a pep in the steps now of the Eskimo fielders. If they can pick up a wicket here, they can really open up this game a little bit. 80 for 2 in over number 15. The target, 227. Still cool conditions here. Heavily overcast. So the trap is set for Hetmeyer. Mid-wicket on the boundary and back with screw on the boundary. Oh, that's well pulled. 
Philips really getting some purchase of this track. Hit my asking for a change of bat. And that's the end of 15 overs. A successful over from Garfield Phillips coming to an end. The over which he picked up the wicket of Anthony Bramble for 62. Burby's looking to get 227 to win after 15 overs, 80 for two. Lord Hetmeyer to come forward, got the leading edge. He was looking to turn the ball into the onside. Took the leading edge, went to win to the offside. Uh, momentarily, uh, momentary victory for Garfield here. Phillips, 80 for two. Hetmeyer's asked for a change of bat. Is it 15 minutes after 9 o'clock? Short time is at 9. My watch says 3.30. 15 hours 30. Mine says 3.29. So the clock here at the GCC stopped. One of it stopped last night or a night a long time ago or this morning. Maybe need some help from Big Ben, but even Big Ben is struggling. <laughs> so Anthony Adams switching ends. He's now going to come from the, the bottom end, the southern end of the ground, the Regent Road end. Used to be the old GBC commentary box then. Remember the days, Matthew? 25 years of broadcast. Congrats again, Matthew. Thank you, my honorable comrade. <laughs> Leg slip and play. The front goes through him, Kimbo Paul. Myself and Inajit Pasada stood the test of time. Yes, I remember that famous 1997 tournament that you guys started. Had some nice guys along the way with us, but you know, the circumstances, things have changed for many people along the way. And then came a young man along the way. His name is John Ramsing. <laughs> so Adams to Hetmeyer. That's going to be runs for Hetmeyer. That's a beautiful square cut. He scores a lot of runs in that area. Don't mess with him if you're going to bowl short and wide outside uh, the off stump. That was too short, too wide. Trademark shot. Yeah, backing away nicely. And this pitch, tailor made for batting. No devils at all. Anthony Adams will have to do much better than that. Yeah, so in, in came John Ramsing to add impetus and quality to the. Radio commentary, star finger, you know? I can tell you that there are no regrets as well. well Jonathan Fu, who's going to come on strike now, started at a T20 level back in 2010 for Guyana. Do you remember the Caribbean T20 was held then? Then he went on to play for the 50 over side. Did not feature in any first class matches, more preferred against the white ball. But when he started with the Vinja Bishu 2010, they were the young guns for Guyana that really took the world by storm. Just 13 list day matches for Guyana. Two fifties, maybe not living up to the potential. Averaging just under 37. Jonathan Alexander. Foo. In 2016, he was with the Jamaica Tallowers in T20s. And one of the few Guyanese to lift the CPL title. Remember Rutherford in. 2021 with the St. Kitts and the Patriots facing glory as well and Shiv Chandapur this year as a coach in Fu's case it was against Guyana yes it was against Guyana at Warner Park that's right so Fu 32 years of age looking to prolong his career at the 50 overs level domest domestically Himself and Christopher Barnwell have been doing very well over the years for Ghana. I'm happy that I'm not in the shoes of Rabindranath, Siram, Peter Basad, Elroy Stephanie, or Albert Smith. The selectors have their work cut out. Over completed, 16 gone, 87 for 2. 
Yeah, I saw some of them earlier, Rabindranath Siram and company. Uh, having a look at the match, watching the players. Yes, but thank you, John, over the years too, being with the company and the likes of Jeet and Kisun and others. Good to see um, Naim Chan back as well. Always a good radio voice too. Traffic in the afternoon here in Georgetown, as you can see, just in front of Shelter Belt. Workers will leave their offices in about another hour's time. But the traffic has picked up in the afternoon already. And when it picks up, it really picks up. You hustle, you're hustling to get home after 4.30. Pull in, Hetmeyer, down too long on, wide, gets a single. Sway does he play that shot, sway to his right. A lazy looking pull shot. He's on nine in the 17th over, 17 over, 88 for two. Phillips one for three before this, before that delivery. And Anthony Adams, six overs, one maiden, one for 34. Kimo Paul is a very smart cricketer, marshalling the forces well here, setting the players in place. You've got what? Backward point is a square cover, cover the mid off. Then you've got a long on, there's a leg slip or a leg gully, there's a mid wicket, short mid wicket, and there's a mid wicket out on the boundary. And you've got a backward square on the boundary as well. Try to understand players, learn about them, study about them. Once you have good knowledge of players, you know how to, to play against them. I believe in that. I think West Indies cricket has got to improve in that area. Watch tapes of players, world-class players around the world. You're in a World Cup. Have you studied those players well? That's very important. That's a good catch. And you can see Hetmeyer walking this time. So Phillips gets his man. And that's the big fish. Hetmeyer caught out of wicket on the second attempt by Kimo Savory of the bowling of Garfield Phillips. And an over number 17, Barbies. 89 for 3. The big fish has been caught. Absolutely brilliant. And I think earlier someone was saying as we watched the replay, yes, Savory bubbled it behind his, his pads and then came up with it. Brilliant. From the young man, very efficient as Jeremy Neblet talked about him, working with him. Nice young man, Hetmeyer goes. Another big fish is gone. So two big fishes have gone for Burbies. Very expensive fishes indeed. These days fish is very expensive on the market. And that's a good one to have picked up. And, and you see, John, what we were saying. If you don't know about a player, for instance, they don't know about Garfield Phillips. He comes in, he bowls, he picks up Bramble's wicket. Now he picks up at my wicket. That's, that's what it's all about. There is talk about uh, many in the outer world there, the, the, the world class players not knowing about Yannick Carrier. It takes a little time to, to get to know about these players. You just have to watch some tapes and study them. Uh, in the second game, he bowled two overs to 24 runs. So the game has been thrown wide open now. 89 for three in the 17th over. Barbie is looking to get 227. Shimon Hetmeyer. Caught on a second attempt by Kimo Savory, fetching a ball from outside his off stump. Tick on the reds found. Carfrey Phillips picking up his second wicket. Hetmeyer gone for nine after facing some 15 deliveries, 1 4. It's a well timed square drive. But he's no more. Back in the pavilion. And some thunder storm you can hear brewing perhaps in the hinterland area towards the south of us. The new batter, St. Clair, takes strike. And cuts this one nicely down towards cover. He gets off the mark immediately this time. Just too wide and too short from Garfield Phillips.
Yes, he gave it a little bit of flight, but it was too wide of the off stump. And Sinclair latched onto it beautifully and cracked it through the offside for four. 93 for three. Gets himself off the mark in a very positive manner. This time he kept this one down, pulled it back, or pulled it down as we would say. Sinclair is forward defensive. Jonathan Fu is three. So two fairly new battles are decreased now. Another drive through extra cover. They've crossed a one, they'll come back for a second. Six to Sinclair. So that's another successful over for Phillips coming to an end. He has bowled two overs, picking up two wickets for 10 runs. So the left arm spinner supporting his captain who has the other wicket, Anthony Adams. Six overs, one maiden, one for 34. So 132 runs away from victory. Burbis and the required run with even Stevens at four runs per over. So 17 overs gone, 33 remaining. And the chatter this evening after the game will be about Garfield Phillips to some extent, picking up two big fishes. What can we learn about him? So many will be trying to track him down, see what they can find out about him as a cricketer. And that's the way it should be. You've got to be interested in finding out about cricketers that you've got to face that you've never faced before. Now you can see Jonathan Fu with a tentative push defensively. So now with that, they've picked up three wickets. Escobar really enjoying this passage of play. There a cock a hoop. Just held the line back just a little bit. Anthony Adams. Full and straight hint of turn as well from Anthony Adams. Full equal to the task. I like the fight in this Essequibo side, I must say, as compared to other uh, inter county sides in yesteryear. They've got fight in them. These young guys have got talent. You look at Anthony Adams, you look at Garfield Phillips. Yes, Kimo Paul in the team, big influence, yes, in that side. Beautiful over so far. Good line. Good lengths. Fu can't do anything much but just play defensively. Jeremy Neblet spoke highly of Neilan Kadogan. We'd love to see him, but we haven't seen him as yet. Now into the 18th over, towards the end of the 18th. Looking for a single. It's not on. So that's a maiden over. Bowled by Anthony Adams. So he has now bowled seven overs. One for 34, including two maidens. 18 gone, 95 for 3. Esquibo really enjoying this passage of play. But how cricket is so beautiful, such a beautiful game. Borbis 3 6 or 3 for 6. Uh, then Rara 174 all out. Now, Esquibo batted for us. 226 all out, 49 overs. So Borbis has got to chase now. And in this chase, it becomes a little bit challenging for them. 95 for 3 after 18. That's how beautiful cricket is. So Garfi Phillips will continue, no doubt. We get to date falling at 64, 79, 89. So after that opening stand of 64 between Ram North and Bramble, 15 runs between Bramble and Hetmeyer, and 10 runs between Hetmeyer and Fu. 64, 79, and 89. So three wickets going down. Relatively quick time. 25 runs. And that's it, you know, John. Partnerships are always important. That 64 run give them a good start for the first wicket. Then 15 and 10. These two will need to steady the ship for Borbis. But should there be another two wickets going down, it's going to make a really lovely game coming down to the end of the afternoon. 
there's still Romario Shepard to come. Junior Sinclair versus Sammy Pomal, Clinton Pestano. Nile Smith. So they'll require all of that batting. Still left to be seen. But they're set back here now, Burris. 96 for 3 in the 19th over. Bowling finger spin. He's bowling sometimes from front of the arm. Garfield Phillips. You did mention variety. He has variety. What we're seeing, yet another left-arm spinner emerging, not only in domestic cricket, but in the region. Well bowled. To complement Pamal and Moti, Ashmed Ned, Anthony Adams, and we're seeing Garfield Phillips. Kelvin Omra as well from Burbis, left arm spinner. Oh, we need spinners to threaten world class batsmen. That I'm I'm anxiously awaiting the day when a couple of our spinners in the Caribbean, whether left hand or right hand, can threaten world class batters. Really threaten them. Nice shot that went through the the hands of the field of texture cover. They've taken a single. Long off comes around to his left. Nineteen overs gone. Ninety eight for the loss of three. Bit of a struggle here now between Fu and Sinclair. Yes, yeah, Sinclair got off the mark with a, a four and then a two. Lovely shot through the offside. Was, the complexion is a little bit different now for Barbies. It's not a case where you're going to see a lot, a lot of runs just scored quickly as they did against Demararo. It's a totally different picture now. Yes, almost 100 runs on the board. But you look at Phillips, very threatening. 2 for 13 from 3. Anthony Adams, 1 for 34. The bowlers who've picked up wickets so far. 4. Esikibo. It's a little bit of a water break. I think it, with the conditions being this cool, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the players are asking for some warm beverage. Maybe some warm chocolate, some warm tea. You never know. It's a beautiful sight looking out from our commentary box. The magnificent Queenstown Jama Masjid in the background. A new high-rise building just on the corner of Shift Chandapal Drive and Church Street. Some big complex. People do not build small buildings anymore, you know. Machu Kisun. Someone said that one day Georgetown will be transformed into a little Dubai. Yeah, <laughs> heard that <laughs> many a times. So 98 for 3. 129 runs away from victory. Purvis. They need to score at the rate of 4.16 if they're going to win. Seven wickets in the bag. Seen the fall of Anthony Bramble. 62 from 53 balls. Rampatab Ramnot. 12 from 27. Hetmeyer. 9 from 15. Now Jonathan Fu. 4 from 13. And Kevin Sinclair. 8 from 7 at the crease. Three extras so far. One leg by, one wide. And one no ball. So very tight in that area of extras. Unlike what we saw earlier when Burbis were bowling. Still to come, Pramal, Pestano, Shepard, Sinclair as Junior Sinclair, Moti and Smith. Not necessarily in that order. But the, but the highlight of the, the 19 overs so far in Burbis innings would be a well-placed 62 from Bam Bramble and two wickets for Phillips. The young left-hand orthodox spinner. Uh, with both spinners being on at one point in time. Anthony Adams and Ricardo Adams, they troubled the batsmen somewhat, had them playing on certain shots. And then with the introduction of Phillips, he quickly removed Bramble and then Hetmeyer. So that has changed the complexion of the game a bit, but you'll still have to see advantage, Borbis. Yeah, let's keep it without the services of Kiva Paul as a bowler. Just bowled one over on two ball and then did not bowl. Suspect that he's troubling from that 
ankle injury that has plagued him recently. So he's out of the bowling attack, but he has been helping in the field. So Kimo Power one over and two balls, 13 runs, no wickets. Heyman Singh two overs, none for six. Quinton Samson finished the over for Kimo Power four dot balls. Anthony Adams seven overs, one for 34, including two maidens. Ricardo Adams, who's back into the attack now, five overs, one, sorry, five overs, none for 31. And Garvey Phillips, three overs, two for 13. There's an appeal for a call behind. Keeper is confident. The fielders around the bat are confident. Kevin Sinclair indicating to the umpire what are you getting excited for. It's just the leg, pie, leg pad. The tight pad. Yes. Kimal Savory always in the thick of things. <laughs> but then what you don't do as a batter, you don't have to indicate anything to the umpire at all. Just hold your own. Let the respect remain out there. Continue to play. So Ricardo Adams in a good spell before this five overs, 31 runs. A little bit expensive, We're roughed up by Bramble. It's causing some issues like that. A good delivery coming back into Sinclair, the right-handed batter. Sinclair keeps his acrobatic skills for the, the bigger games against the bigger teams. He didn't, he didn't perform today. <laughs> bigger audience, you may want to say. <laughs> Outside the leg stump, quick delivery but wide. 99, one short of 100 now. Just four extras. Think, I think as you give up discipline themselves here, but you don't want to lose it now. You don't want to lose it and give away too many extras at all. You don't have a big total to play with. I don't think Ricardo Adams would want to slant that ball down the leg side. Off the pad, what, bat pad? Let's wait for that signal. That's right. Bat on to pad, bounce the way down to the short fine leg area. They got a single. Is that the 100? So the 100 has come up, 100 for three in the 20th over. Two deliveries left by Ricardo Adams to complete the 20th over. I think the umpires would have loved these conditions. No heat at all. It's like English conditions now. It's a bit cool up here too. The over comes to an end. 100 for 3. 20 gone. Foo is 4. Kevin Sinclair 9. Jonathan Fu, 15 deliveries for his four. Unlike what we saw two days ago when he tore into the Demrara attack, scoring 71 from 45 balls. So, Borby side still looking very relaxed. No worried faces there just yet. I guess you're thinking they have it all covered. The likes of Pestano and Shepard in the front, padded. Still go to Kesh Moti with a first class 100 on this belt, still to come. Captain Pomal with all of his experience there as well. A relaxed looking dressing room. Yes, but you've got to admire the fight of Esikibo. Oh, definitely. I think the crowd here recognizing that as well. The, they're making a game of it. That's yeah. important. They're making a game. They're, they're in a keen contest here. And if they can sneak in two more wickets... Even though you've got a shepherd to come, a Pestano, and so on. Um, don't ever be afraid of names. It's another day of cricket. Go out there and work hard. Fight the good fight. Cricket's, cricket's a powerful game. It's a game of mindsets. You know, you've got to fight hard. It's a mental game as well. We talk a lot about fitness and so on. Make sure you have mental fitness when you're playing cricket. Inside edge. So this game still wide open. Required run rate moving from 4 to 4.25 for Boris. Still within reach. Seven wickets in hand. Over at Everest, you think that Demrara 
firmly in control of their contest against the President's eleven. So President's eleven could very well be slumping to two defeats in two matches. The America Chalk up their first win. One of these two teams will go two from two. The gap found two runs taken. Do remember each team in this tournament playing each other once. Top two teams will meet on Sunday right here at board in the final. It's a wrong robin format for the four teams. Eskivu, Demrara Burbis under President's 11. That he came down the track, advanced down the track. That would have created the impact of the ball onto pad. A little bit of a distance there because he advanced down the track. Six from 17 balls is Jonathan Fu. 26 minutes to decrease. 12 dot balls. Yeah, today is a different day. And came into the crease the last time with a foundation being laid. Ram North and Bramble dominating. Hetmeyer came and played freely as well. But today, Ram North went for just 12. Wicket falling 65. The first wicket. Bramble riding his luck and getting to another decent score. So that's the end of the over. So 21 overs gone. 103 for the loss of <laughs> three wickets. Uh -huh. So we're right next to the botanical gardens and the zoo. And the, the wildlife here as well. So the parrots in the palm trees. Exotic birds of Georgetown. I remember while at university, I was told that there were 206 species of birds in Guyana. And that, that number has gone up significantly. So in the Georgetown area, lots of birds as well. I have a part of my own. Got them all the way from Burimawaini, Region 1, Mabaruma. <laughs> I live in a street that has the name of a bird as well. Gone. Soft dismissal. Gone. Caught at extra cover. Christian takes the catch. And Kevin Sinclair pushed a bit too hard at that one. In the air. Catch taken. Four down now. Well, game on. Burbies have got to work hard here. Let's look at the replay. Pushed in the air. Uh, a little bit of a bounce there. On that occasion, pushed in the air straight to the man at extra cover and snapped him up very quickly. Sinclair is gone for 10 in the 22nd over. It's 103 for the loss of four. John Ramsing, the game has changed. It has continued to change. It's a different game to Monday. Yeah, the, the Eskimo side keep attacking. And we see once again good bowling from Ricardo Adams. Just following his man, he was shaping to go through the covers, playing deep into his crease. Backing away, opened up the offside, but hit it straight to the field at extra cover in the air, not in the gap. And now Burby's looking at a different side. Four down, 103 on the board. Still 124 to get. And the big man, Romario Shepard, is joining his partner, Jonathan Fu at the crease. Lots of work to do. So since the first wicket went at 65, we've seen four wickets going down at regular intervals after that. 65, 74, 80, 89 or thereabout. So wickets continue to, to go down now for Burbies. The required run rate, 4.30. You know, 3.0.3 .3 is not a run. So there's going to be five runs and over you're looking at right now for Burbies. Ricardo Adams getting his first wicket. Kevin Sinclair. He's toiled away hard, you know. Uh, one for 33 now in his seventh over. I think he's worked very hard for that wicket. Mm -hmm. 
Shepard made 40 from 28 the last time he played right here at Border against Demerara. Two fours and four sixes in that knock. Good delivery on the line of his middle stump. Adams bowling stump to stump. So Shepard is off the mark. Fools kept quiet. 19 deliveries faced. Yet to hit a boundary. Jonathan Alexander, the man from Albion on the quarantine coast. Is an appeal for a leg before? What is the umpire hand doing there? <laughs> umpire Nagasar, you want to give these guys heart attack or what? That's a good appeal for a leg before. Yeah, that's going down the leg side, angling down. Didn't turn back at all. Uh, umpire Nagasar, I thought, was probably rubbing something off his face. <laughs> Nicely cut away, up the back foot, down through cover, that'll go for four. Easy boundary there for uh, Shepard. Fu, in fact, moves up to ten. His first boundary, 104. Beg your pardon, 108 for four. That's a bit short, the width was there. He, a, he had all the time in the world to... Drive it nicely through cover. Is that a chance of the bat to what leg slip? Yeah, body is there. I would love to see that again. Are we having a look at it? Over completed nonetheless. Let's see. That fell short. Fell short. He stopped it. So good work as well. Good camera work. And that's the end of 22 overs. One weight for four. Anxious moments as well for Barbies. Yeah, lovely game in the making here. Essekibo fighting very hard. This is a different team to teams of yesteryear. And um, you had the Ramesh Narines and the others in the Essekibo lineup for many years. But you look at these youngsters and you just get the impression that here, we've got nothing to lose here, you know. We're fighting hard. All we need to do is to put up a good show, play hard cricket, and show that we can put Barbies on the back foot and even win this game. 226 seems to be a, a very good total now, John. When you look at the four back in the pavilion, Ramnod, Bramble, Hetmeyer, Sinclair. Four overs, no maidens, two for 16. And Garfield Phillips is out of the attack. Anthony Adams backing himself from the northern end of the ground back into the attack. Seven overs, two maidens, one for 34. I don't think Shepard is patient enough to spin bowling. That's his weak point. He plays the pace as well. Bit aerial, but no one close in at cover. You've got short extra cover. Out towards the, the sweeper position, he gets a run. But, but John, I mean, as you look at Shepard playing spin, it's really not very certain to spin bowling at all. Had Kimo hit there. Had a non-strike is then Jonathan Fu could have continued running to the pavilion. That was very close. Good piece of work from Kimo Paul. But Fu and Shepard looking to break up the momentum of the of the Eskibo side. Trying to break up that momentum by getting some quick singles to get momentum back in their camp. It's now 110 for loss of four. 117 to win on the required run rate. Just kept in check. 4.25 now. Keeping Shepard thinking with a slip and a leg slip. An area of his game he would want to improve in. Playing against, playing to the, the spinners and playing them well, getting on top of them. This one has cut away nicely. He runs for Shepard. He'll beat the fielder running to his left and four more. So Shepard gets his first boundary. He's now on to six. 
114 for four. Just too wide on that occasion from Esukibo Skipper. Into his eight over now. Anthony Adams and see him apologizing to his side for bowling too wide on that occasion. We haven't had the sunshine for too long today. All those solar panels around Georgetown. Need some charging maybe tomorrow. Slightly quicker delivery from Anthony Adams to end the over. 23 gone. Werby set a target of 227 to win from 50 overs. 114 for four. Comparatively, you see Burbis well ahead, but they've lost four wickets. Four wickets slowing them down just marginally. And then towards the back end, Eskibo had a little flurry. They lost some wickets, but they had a good scoring rate towards the back end. And that can make a big difference. But Eskibo picking up four wickets, but the rate is still good for the scoring rate is still good for Burbis. Current run rate is just under five. And they have set battles at the crease now, both right-handers. Fu 11, Shepard 6. So Ricardo Adams now into his eighth over. Oh, over pitching, but on the line of leg stump. Two easy runs to Jonathan Fu. An important period here of play for Borbis with these two phone shepherd. If they can milk the bowling, pick up the singles and twos, they're right back in the game nicely. And you can see that again. A single turned away down towards backward square. Foo has moved on to 14 shepherd six. Now, if they bat for, let's say, another uh, 10 overs, 10, 15 overs, game could be over quickly. But if they milk the ball and pick up the ones and twos, they, they continue to ensure that Borbis is in a good position to win this game. And win without panicking. Oh, this one is it. Back over the head of the bowler. And onto the shed just in front of this com box. So Shepard getting into the six hitting mood. That's his first six, the fourth of the Burbis innings. He's known Trade, the double figures. Trademark Shepard shot. He's known for this. This is what he's made for. A man made for this moment, Romario Shepard, consecutive sixes, this time just a little bit wider of where he hit the first one, 129 for four, for five, beg your pardon, well, four, I'm seeing the wrong figures, Jonathan Fu, 14, Shepard, 18 already, and he's taken a liking to Ricardo Adams, this time he's respectful to that delivery, pushed through a bit quicker, on the middle stump, and he defends. You can hear the crowd saying, ooh, after that dot ball. Lifts it again, effortlessly. And six more. Romario Shepard just off of playing CPL. He was hitting sixes at venues like Darren Sammy Cricket Ground. The Brian Lark Cricket Academy, the Queen's Park Oval, and Providence. So board a similar size to Warner Park and St. Kitts and Nevis. So that's the end of 24. A very expensive over from Ricardo Adams coming to an end. Adams now eight overs, one for 59. And suddenly, the required run rate, three and a half runs. <laughs> yes. And look at that spike in the, in the <laughs> worm. The worm certainly looking to come out of the ground. It only takes a couple of sixes to get it up again, you know, to ensure that 
you you you're making the run rate look like nothing. But you're talking about uh, six hitters, and you look at Dong on in Australia. Uh, I think he would have had to hit hit that ball with a bit more power to clear those those uh, fields in you know those grounds in Australia, because it's not easy to hit sixes there. But he's a power hitter. He's got a lot of power. Depends a lot on his power. Even when he bowls, bowls a lot with his shoulders as well. Right? Big strong man from Barbies. But you know what? Uh, since his entry into international cricket, um, he's looked the part. And I know he would want to continue improving in, in his bowling department especially because he's been a bit too expensive. 21 runs came in the last over from Ricardo Adams. So... If you're looking to pick up wickets, you need the attacking bowler in Garfield Phillips to come back. You haven't seen, seen Neelan Cadogan. Just two overs from him and Singh. I don't think you have enough pace to threaten these batters on this feather bed here at border. Twenty runs in that over number twenty-four, perhaps knocking the wind out of the sails of the Eskimo side. But add two wickets to this, and it could be game one again. From the body language, you look very optimistic, and Kimo Kimo Paul ensuring that he gives leadership out there. Has moved across to a very short, straight mid wicket. More of an unorthodox position, but uh, long on is there, uh, long off is there as a backup. That's swept by Shepard. That's going to go away for four, is it? Yes. Down to fine leg. Nice sweep shot. Didn't have to put in a big effort. Just helped it around the corner. And he picks up an easy boundary. Yeah, it's a big gap there. Nobody behind it. We can keep on the onside. Feel that deep wicket had to run all the way there to retrieve. So, sweep shot. Very productive at this stage of the game. The thing with Shepard, he accumulates his runs very quickly. He's on to 28 very quickly. That's how dangerous he is. Just 13 deliveries now faced by Romario Shepard. Two fours and three sixes to go with six dot balls. Uh, he's a brilliant fielder. Really the perfect replacement for Andre Russell. For my money. Shepard. And Any we, day. And we have lots of that commodity. Money. Finding the gap nicely. Taking an easy single. So 25 go on halfway stage in terms of overs. 141 for four, the target, 227. I don't think Borbis is panicking, panicking in any way here. They've lost four wickets, yes. But that total is good, 141 at the halfway mark. Just need to steady the ship. You've got spinners on and just play them on their merit. When the bad ball comes, you put it away. It's not a case where you're chasing down 226 at Providence when the wire is at a, when they play Jamaica. This fielding from Anthony Adams, who's generally a good fielder. Allows a single. The thing is, you're chasing 226. You have to get 227. But in 50 overs. <laughs> Not 20. As was the case when the Warriors played. The Tala was up at Providence. So you're more relaxed. It's 50 over cricket. It's not a big total. Take your time. In the air. Full off the inner portion of the bat through mid-wicket. 
feeder comes in from off the boundary. And, and you want to cut down on those aerial shots too. You want to play shots like Shamar Brooks across the ground, all across the ground. Very fluent player. Very a, a class touch, touch player. You need more of that in T20 cricket in terms of good quality batters. Oftentimes, too many shots are played in the air. Nice shot. Goes straight to the fielder. That's the captain at cover. Which is Yuna Ryan, former Guyana all rounder, following on the stream. Enjoying the fight from Eskibo. And that's a good over. Well, still in a good over, being bowled by Ricardo Adams. After being taken to the cleaners, you expect that he would come back and be a bit similar. That's a good delivery to end. His ninth over, Adams, one for 61 from nine. And after 26 over, is 143 for the loss of four. So Vijay Sinai, remember that name, man? Yeah. Yes. No, that's one of the things about uh, cricketers in the Caribbean and, and Guyana, of course, a part of the Caribbean region. Uh, they follow the cricket very, very carefully. They're always interested. I got a friend in um, Atlanta who follows the cricket as well. He said he didn't pick up the ball by ball commentary for the CPL. Of course, he watched it, but he wanted to hear the radio commentary because he felt that the television commentary was not being fair enough uh, you know well I said to him of course radio commentary is totally different and it's a pity you didn't get to hear 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 us <coughs> he's a good friend of Neil Barry our colleague as well so yeah follows the cricket well People all over the world follow the cricket. The live streaming is a beautiful feature in this tournament now. It adds to the positivity of the game, whether it's in the county, whether it's franchise cricket. It adds to the flavor. It brings more, uh, the, the audience is a large audience in terms of the viewing audience, the listening audience. You don't have many people that come to the ground now. But when you flow with live streaming, you get an audience from all over the world. And the thing as well, with the smartphones and the smart devices these days, you can really pick up the cricket from anywhere. There's going to be a bowling change. Anthony Adams out of the attack after bowling nine overs. Nine overs, one for 46, including two maidens. Him and Singh, who sent on two overs at the start of the innings. Two overs, none for six, is back into the attack. Over at Everest, President's 11, 141 for 8 from 34 overs. Do you remember they're replying to a mamma 326? Almost similar to the Borby Zemara game here. Oh, so Hemant actually was taking his car, his run up. Now Neelan Kadogan <laughs> has been switched. So Neelan Kadog will be having his first opportunity. And this is the 27th over of the innings. And German Neblet was speaking highly about this young man. Mm -hmm. So he has lots of time for him as a former national fast bowler. I think he really would know what he's speaking of. So Fu was on 16. 30 to Shepard. 19 deliveries faced from Rom by Romario Shepard. Two fours and three sixes. Rampatab Ramnaut, 12. Hetmeyer, 9. Kevin Sinclair, 10. Not really troubling the score as much. Here's Kadogan for the first time from the Northwood end. Starts with a no ball. Very naughty young man.
So 317 is a victory target for the President's 11. After them, Ramid 316 for 5. With Leon Johnson, 153. Christopher Barnwell, 65. And Sherfin Rutherford, 25. Not out. So moments ago, the Ghana Cricket Board, President's 11, 141 for the loss of 8 wickets. a little bit of a discussion going on a little bit of play as well uh, hold up and play and the umpires having a discussion not certain what a discussion is and as a domestic umpire yourself Matthew soon maybe you can pick up what's happening there I'm wondering if they're asking for a light meter to come out not sure if they don't have a light meter with them which we're not seeing but well, they, well, they're looking in the direction of the pavilion. Maybe the third umpire has to come out with something. He should have a walkie-talkie as well. Um, <clears throat> but I believe they, 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 they'll be concerned about the light. I would want to think. It's now 4.20 in Ghana, Eastern Caribbean. Uh, I'm not seeing a problem with respect to the ball. No. So could be the light situation. So if the game is going to stop now, they expect Burbis to be at 118 with, with four wickets down after 26 overs. According to the Duckworth Lewis calculation, 118 after 26 overs. So they're well ahead at 144 for four. So a little bit of hold up in play, not sure exactly what's happening. And with Neil and Kadogan, the first ball that he has bowled was a no ball, and right after that we saw a little bit of hold up. He is pace on. Not sure if because pace on, they're saying that they cannot see the faster balls. Still to be seen. And there's a discussion going on with Captain Anthony Adams. And now he's having a discussion with his players. Of course you know that the umpires are the sole judges of these situations. Now, all right? So the law gives the umpire the room to use their judgment and make uh, song decisions, especially with respect to things like the light and so on. You can see the umpire's back is Mark and telling the guys to get on with things. But the two batters are not in their creases. They have a mid-pitch discussion as well. It, it tends to serve as a bit of a disadvantage to the bowling side too because uh, if you cannot bowl your fast bowler and you know you want to give him an over two suppose he picks up a wicket or two but you've got spinners uh, Adams has bowled nine overs Ricardo Adams uh, Anthony Adams has bowled as well we'll go through the bowling figures for you but you're looking at what you've got in the bank in terms of the bowling department so We do have a hold up. We're trying to figure out what's going on. And it has to be a situation with the light. The light is not good, to be honest, for the fast bowler to be on. It's not good. Right? I can say that clearly as an umpire. Right? It tends to happen in Georgetown cricket as well. I think uh, Fiasco down uh, the place Pavilion Gate there probably has the light meter. And they, they probably need to check the light condition. All right, mm -hmm. so. Seems as if the two batters are. That's what we're trying to understand. So, Kimo Savory has taken off his wicket keeping pads, handed them and the gloves to Kevon Buri. Fiasel is at the gate, indeed, like you're seeing. Yeah, it has to be the, the light. Because if Savory is going to bowl, if he's going to have a bowl, it means that no more pace in this innings. And, and when you look back, John, at the, the, the fact that the competition is starting 9 in the morning, it says a lot about the fact that uh, the place gets dark quickly now. We come down to the end of the year. Correct. And the early part of the year is different. 
or like now, Sun will be out at 420 what? 424, the Sun will be out. I remember, so, I remember yesterday as well, sorry to cut you there, but yeah, it same was thing. sunny at this time of the day. It was bright, but today it's, a, it's an overcast day, rain in the air. All comes Fiasso, the standby umpire. And there goes the standing umpire to have a word with him, and the umpires are having a big discussion. We haven't seen Omar Bacchus, who was the, the match referee. He's on radio, maybe. <laughs> Very heated discussion going on. The players were about to resume, and then out came umpire Fiasso. You know, John, as an umpire, that's why it's important that you be on top of your game in terms of knowledge of the game, understanding the laws, the conditions, the playing conditions. Very important. I have to be honest with you, and I hope no one beats me in my head for this, but I don't read the laws of cricket uh, every day like I read the Bible, if to put it that way. But I learned from one of my mentors in umpiring that you really have to read that law book like if you're reading the, your Bible every day or your, your, your holy book every day and it, it makes sense because when situations like these pop up it presents a problem and and sometimes uh with the three umpires working as a team you can get a little bit of confusion in the midst uh, based on uncertainties and that's why the laws of cricket are very important they're very very serious laws very technical laws someone was asking me about it the other day a lady in fact john was asking me about the laws of the game she said that she find the laws to be very complicated. I said, yes. But if you take your time and you, you, you go through these laws carefully, let's say you study one law per day, you have a right to understand the laws uh, at some point in time. And then, of course, now, John, you have adjustments to the laws. Look, for instance, from the 1st of October, changes. All right? Changes. <laughs> right? You have changes now with the run out, uh, not the run out, if you cross for a run, the new batter has to come and take strike. So you've got to be on top of your game in terms of amendments to the laws, understanding the game well. So I, I, I rather suspect it has to do with the light factor, and we'll have to wait and see as the game progresses what will take place, what decisions would have been made. So over to number 26, and the 10 minutes ago, and now. We're it seems as if we'll have the resumption. True, true. Dark clouds there over to the east, blocking any any sun, any rays of sun coming through. I don't think it will get any better at all. I know you're a man that reads a lot, but have you d uh, done some work with respect to the laws of the game? Yes, of course. You have? Yeah. You've gone through it very carefully? Every, every, ever so often we tend mm. to go through under playing conditions of this tournament to right. through that as well. The umpires now having a word with the batters, and it seems as if they're telling them, we don't think it's, it's good enough to continue. The batters are walking off, and the stumps are being taken out of the ground, and this is not necessarily the finest way to end the match. It will not get any better. And I think the batters are going off. It will not get any better, so it means that it will be the end of the game. We cannot say that Bad Light has stopped play. The Bad Light has ended play here today. And after one hundred and after 26 overs in the run chase, Burbies should have been at 118. But they're well ahead of that on the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method. And it means that Burbies have won this game by some 20. The six runs. One eighteen. They should have been at. And you really can't blame the situation. You know, it, it, the cricketers are there. They they wanted to play, but the truth be told, after a couple of overs t this morning, uh, the con conditions became a bit hazy. Then we had a bit of sun in between, and then conditions got a bit hazy again. You you've had some clouds over and over border and then uh, you didn't have much of a change in the conditions 
And uh, here is where you see how important the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method is in cricket and that net run rate situation. So very important uh, uh, because I've had a lot of people say to me that the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method they don't like at all. They think it's very unfair. And whoever came up with this, um, they, they did bad for cricket. But on the other hand, you, you have to look at it the other, the other way around. Uh, you don't want matches to end in confusion and uncertainties. And therefore, having such a method plays a very important part. We see that today in this game. Yeah, just about 4.18 p.m. The 26th over ended with Burbis 144 for four in reply to 226 all out made by Ezekibo. And since then, there's a big, it's been a heated debate. And at 4.28, 10 minutes later, uh, the umpire seems as if they've offered a light to the batters, saying that they don't think it's good enough to, con to continue. The batters have left the field. It means that with light not going to improve, Burby's winning this game by some 26 runs and remain winless after two matches in this year's tournament. They will continue to play on Friday. We're going to take on the President's 11 right here at Border. 9 a.m. start. Demrara, who had just confirmed of one their game against the President's 11, will take on Esukibo at Enmore. So two matches on Friday to end the wrong robin phase of this tournament. The top two teams will meet on Sunday. Look, how important it is for someone like a Bramble to have got, uh, picked himself 62 runs in this match, 12 fours, three sixes, uh, when he was dismissed with a score of 79. Um, it shows that your top order, you've got to have rhythm. Look, he was bowled by Phillips at 62, 53 balls, uh, seven fours, three sixes. Ram not, caught Phillips bowl Adams 12, 27 balls, 49 minutes, one four. Uh, Hetmeyer didn't last long. He got nine, one boundary. Fu not out 16 from 30 balls, one four. Sinclair went for 10, uh, one four in that knock. And Shepard, Romario Shepard's unbeaten knock of 30 from 19 balls, two fours and three sixes. You'd have to say himself along with Anthony Bramble ensure that even though the game was cut short because of bad light, Burbies have won this game. So, I want to speak about this partnership just for a little bit. 41 runs partnership for the fifth wicket. I think this partnership is, was very important in Burbies winning this game. As we see, by Fiasso putting the stumps back up. <laughs> Let's not jump to the gun just yet. But, with Jonathan Fu playing very sedate, allowing, trying to basically keep Eskiva out, without them picking up another wicket, which could have thrown the Duckworth Lewis and Storm method wide open. And there we see as well Romario Shepard blasting some quick runs, taking Burbies way ahead of the Duckworth Lewis and Storm method. So we've seen that partnership of four to one runs for the fifth wicket, a very crucial one. Now the umpires have planted the stumps, replanted the stumps. The covers that were coming on disappeared, and there's a mid field discussion among the three umpires, the two standing umpires, Nagasar, Lambert, and now the, th the third umpire, Fiasso. We've seen it all already We've before all. in many matches, right here in, in the country and especially in Georgetown, maybe in the outlying areas as well. Bits of uncertainty, they had a discussion with someone I saw who came out, might have been the manager of Esikibo, and it would appear as if they're going to continue this game. But we'll have to wait and see. But John, what's important uh, in, in, you know, when you put the elements together in this game of cricket is that you've got to take all things into consideration. You look at, you look at the fact that when, when Barbie's bowl, light was good. It was the first innings, right? Now, at the back end of the innings, light seems to be playing a, a role here, right? You want to get a fast bowler on. It's a disadvantage to Esikibo. If they believe a day fast bowler can, can perform well, pick up a wicket or two, simply because the light is not good enough. So we'll have to wait for this decision here, but the stumps are back up. Uh, the three umpires... We've, we've seen Esikibo as well not leaving the field. They're just on the, 
on the boundary edge there, just in front of the main pavilion. And I want to believe they've humbly protested the decision by the umpires to call it off as a result of bad light. But all three umpires are in there, back in the pavilion, walking up the, step, the steps now, the pavilion steps. Um, We've seen the president of the SQB Cricket Board, Dilip Singh, having a chat with Territorial Development Officer Ghana Cricket Board, Colin Stewart. It's all happening here. Lokesh Reed. Captain Lucas Reed, who was piloting one of the aircrafts. Right. Earlier, he's in the pavilion as well, alongside Safra Sherfuddin. On Burby side. Seems as if they're getting ready to hit the bus, to hit but, the road. But it's a serious decision when you, when, when you look at it in the context of these days, players being hit. You know, the, the, the safety of players are important. They've got to be protected. And even though it's exciting cricket, yes, Shepard has hit some lovely sixes and whatnot. He's entertained the crowd. Bramble as well. The crowd roars with these shots, and even when wickets fall, um, the player's safety comes first. And um, at the end of the day, the umpires are the sole judges, uh, the sole judges of the game of cricket. And if they've decided that that's it, John Ramsing and Matthew Kesun cannot uh, encourage the umpires to come out back and call play again. Right, so there we see umpire Lambert on the top floor with the official scorer. And I think they're going to... Just confirm the final scores, but I don't think that they'll be re-emerging here at Border despite Stumps going up back. Umpire Lambert there just going into his go-home bag, you may want to say. But it's not the type of finish we're looking for. This game was building up to be a nice one, looking for an exciting finish. And this Esquivo supporters with the Esquivo side, they're having a discussion as well. You got to feel it a bit for Esquivo though, because 144 for four, they still fancy their chances of being in the game, right? Yes, the run rate is was pretty good. Barbies way ahead, but suppose two or three wickets would have fallen in a period of time, uh, and that's what cricket is all about. The probabilities of the game is very very important, but here we see, um, I don't think the probability of the umpires coming out back would be in, in favor of Esikibo being able to bowl and defend the, their runs. Uh, the umpires are nowhere out in the middle. The Esikibo players are uh, down at the right gate uh, of the place pavilion. And they're having discussions. But at the end of the day, we know, as the law says, the umpires are the sole judges of a cricket game. So, I'm afraid it, it looks as if that's the end of the game. It looks as if that's the end of the game, but we will have to get an official word on that. So, I just got off the phone with one of the seniors of this game, and they said the umpires have not made an official decision as yet. All right. So... Hold on, John. They couldn't, be waiting. they couldn't be waiting for the light, light conditions to get better. I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so myself. But I think it... it, it, it to my mind, and when you look... We don't have the luxury here at border of the artificial lights. Right. And when you look at the body language of what happened out there, it may have been a premature decision initially, yeah. uh, given how I uh, judge the game of cricket. But my judgment is not necessarily what it should be. But the truth be told, they, if they were playing now, you would have had to have spinners on, for sure. What Kimo Paul and Anthony Adams would have had to decide was here, let's bowl out our spinners. And then if it comes to a decision where we cannot have any paces on, well, the umpires have to make a decision from there. You cannot tell me, John, that... The spinners would not have been able to keep them down a bit. Hence, dropping that, that run rate. All possible. So, those are the mechanics of, of the game of cricket that sometimes many people miss, even the pundits. But that's what the game is all about. So we saw the third umpire, Fiasso, and one of the standing umpires, Lambert, a moment ago on screen. Still in discussion. Umpire, the match referee, Omar Bacchus, is way back into the main members' pavilion on the upper level. 
He's also doing some work there. Not sure what's his take on all of this. But as it is, Barbies 144 for four after 26 overs. Set a target of 227 to win from 50 overs. There was some. There's still way, still some way away from that victory target. But if the game had stopped at the same time, it is it has stopped. 26 overs gone, 118 would have been that. That DLS score would have put Burvis ahead by 26 runs. There's still some 83 runs away from victory from 24 overs, scoring at 5.54 runs and over currently. But a required run rate of under four runs at 3.46. And from our vantage point, that stumps, we can see that, that wicket there clearly. But at ground level, it tells a different story. Maybe the iris has been turned up a little bit. So we can see it's a little bit bright, but it's dark out there. So the light will not improve in any way. It's been one of those days, here's the sunshine just for a little bit. And no sunshine for most part of the day. Correct. Did you see any light meter out there? No. I saw no light, no light meter. And I thought that's an important part of the game. Uh, you, if you've got a view in public, you have to have that light meter out to test. But I saw none. I can only assume that the, the, the umpires don't have light meters, which would be strange when you, when you talk this level of cricket. Right? Um, I don't want to... Assume, presume, and then consume. So let me say, it's either they didn't have a li have light meters to test, or in using their own judgment, the light was bad, bad enough. So the lights in Georgetown are on as well, the street lights. We're seeing that very clearly. So the street lights are on outside of the ground. And then GR, as he called you too, there was talk of the finals being played at Albion on the lights and so on, if I'm correct, but that's changed. Yeah, because there's But a I get the impression now, if the light fades quickly in the afternoon and you got a finals on Sunday, it's good to cater for the artificial light coming on. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, there was a big discussion uh, two days ago when the first match was being played about a final going to the national stadium to encourage more persons to have a look at the final because border with, with no permanent seats around just in the run can I stand and the members pavilion would want to encourage more persons to come out there's talk of having that match played at I the agree with stadium. that I agree with that and also the players will have an opportunity to play at that facility knowing that they have to go to the Super 50 to play at the Royal Arquic Academy Queen's Park Oval Sir Vivian Richard Stadium at Coolidge in Antigua. So we want to give them another facility, a facility to look at. I agree with that in terms of the finals, yes. I totally agree with that. G because you don't want another scenario like this in the finals where it comes down to a situation of uh, bad light and you've got to go to net run rate using the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method. So... That, that, that's not what you want in the game of cricket, but it happens. Uh, sometimes, sometimes bittersweet, bittersweet for teams, as we've seen in the CPL tournament when Guyana lost to, it was Barbados, 20, what, 2014 or thereabouts. Uh, that provoked a lot of uh, discussion, the way the game was handled and whatnot in that CPL final. So you you got to take... take all things into consideration. Um, I really think that if they're not going to come out to bat, give an official decision, let's get the official report that the game has come to an end and Borbis has won using the Duckworth Lewis and Storm method. Simple as that. You can't take too long on that.
uh, from the looks of it, you see the official score, Trevor Hussein, along with the match officials, having a discussion, very relaxed. But as you can see on the monitor, Eskimo side still on the field. They're not leaving, I think, like you mentioned, protesting the decision maybe. And they're still out there. But we still have to wait, we still have the official word. Not certain what's happening just yet. The official scorer has packed up. He's leaving. His, um, his uh, laptop is in his bag now. And he's gone. Like I said, Eskimo is still out there. Still having a discussion. <laughs> there can only be one winner here today. <laughs> so I'm not sure if Barbie's packing up and thinking that they have won. Or Eskimo thinking that they're on the field and they have won. Manager of Eskibo side, Fredericks is there as well, among the players. So we're still waiting on the official word. cross in front of the Escobar side. We just saw one of the book scores as well. So from all vantage points, this game is over. The official score has just walked in front of the Escobar side, bringing back the book to the Ghana Cricket Board office. I saw the official score, Trevor Hussein as well, packing up his laptop. But the umpires are still, we said that they're still waiting to make an official decision. I, I think overall, when you look at the, the the atmosphere and the situation of the game, the Eskibo side wanted a wanted a better game of it. Yeah. They wanted to come down to the wire. They wanted to know that if they're gonna lose, they lose with a full game being played. But uh when uh light steps in like this, you know, when you have a situation where bad light uh steps in to stop play, you can hardly do anything about that. That's the truth. I don't see floodlights here at Border. That would have had to probably be in the playing conditions as well uh, to use the artificial lights if, if lights fade, right? So, a foregone conclusion that that really should be the situation, that Borbis would have won this game easily given the Duckworth Lewis and Storm um, method. So, Esquibo with one win before this, the Mara winning their first game today, it means that when these two teams meet Eskibo and Demerara on Friday at Enmore, mm -hmm. that could be a virtual semi final. Correct. Because the president Presidential they're, they're out. Two. Right, right, right. Basically, they're out. Burbis Correct. Winning their second today, we're looking at what is in front of us. Right. And they have to play the President's 11 in their final game right here on Friday. So, from the looks of it, Eskibo will have an opportunity to get into the final. If they beat Demerara, ten more on Friday. And and the way they've played today says that they're going to put up a good fight against Demerara, right? Demerara is not going to win that easily, right? Given the fact that they've got a good side, reasonable players. You look at the performance of Samson today. You look at the forty-six from Kimo Paul, a thirty from Anthony Adams, and you look at their bowling department with their spinners, both Adams, uh, as well as um, well. Kimo Paul can't bowl at this point in time, but they've still got good bowlers. Look at Garfield Phillips. Uh, came in and he's been a bit of a revelation in this game. All right. Picked up two big fishes in Hetmeyer and, of course, Bramble. So you, you, look, at, you look at their side and you, you, you know that uh, they're a fighting team. They're a better team than teams of yesteryear in, the, in, the, in terms of results-oriented. They're looking for results. They beat the President's 11? Yes. Uh, most likely they would have lost today, given the run rate situation. But they've got to play Demerara on Friday. And as John said, that will be a very, very interesting game. Because if Essekebo 
beat Demerara, they obviously will play Borbis again in the finals on Sunday. If Demerara beat them, they play Borbis in the final. The all too familiar as being seen in, in, in this level of cricket in the county, Borbis and Demerara meeting in the finals on many, many occasions. Could there be a change? It all depends on what will happen on Friday, knowing that Essequibo have got to play Demerara. But I think it will be a good contest. And I'll tell you, from a cricketing standpoint, from a cricketing standpoint, I'll say it one more time, from a cricketing standpoint, it will be nice for Essequibo to get into the finals. Honestly speaking, that's my honest opinion. Well, after Friday's game, with the better team on that occasion, Essequibo against Demerara will go on to the final. So, still left to be seen. i tell you what, the lights are on in the buildings around Border, and they're getting even brighter, which means it's getting darker at Border. The official word is not necessarily <laughs> it's close. We haven't heard anything from the officials as yet. Seems as if they have packed up already. We're still awaiting that official word. So we just have to perhaps give it a minute or two and then we'll come back to you with, with what we may say is the official word.
So as you can see on your monitor, the umpires, the two standing umpires, Nagasar and Flemroy Lambert, along with the third umpire, Dion Fiasel. They're out there in the middle. And you can hardly see them because it's extremely dark here at at border. Right, so there you can see, you can hardly see the umpires. We know that they're there because we we have an idea who are the umpires. Um, I was told that they'll be making a decision at 5 p.m. And it's now two minutes to five here in Georgetown. And they're on the, f the playing wicket, standing at respective ends. I'm not sure what this decision is going to be, but this does not look good for the intelligence of some of the the big ones in cricket. Eighteen minutes after four o'clock, the twenty sixth over ended. It's now one minute to five o'clock, some forty plus minutes for the one minutes later, and now the umpires are in the middle having an inspection, having an inspection. On the Duckworth Lewis and Stern calculation, Burbies are ahead by 26 runs, and because of light, the only victors we can see in this game, based on the rules of the game, will be Burbies by 26 runs. But the umpire said they're gonna be making a, this, an inspection at 5 p.m., and here they are, an umpire fiasco has taken off the bills. The third umpire has taken off the bills. <coughs> White Flemory Lambert at the other end has removed one of the stumps. And they're making their way off the field. So whatever decision they'll be making, like I said, it must be cricketing decision. Must be a smart one as well. Burbies replying to two twenty six all out made by Esukebo, after 26 overs, 144 for 4. Jonathan Fu, 16, Shepard, 30 for Mario Shepard. 26 runs ahead on the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method. And of course, the covers are coming on because there's a game in two days' time right here at Border. So the ground staff will be preserving their wicket. So the umpires will have a discussion with the two captains now. And that, that discussion has started now with the three umpires and the two captains. Anthony Adams of Eskibo versus Samir Pamal of Burbis. So the iris has been turned right up. Iris turned right up. So that's why it's looking a little bit brighter, but it's not. That's not the state of play here at border. Last of gesticulation going on, Kimo Paul, Kimo Savory. And they're all having a little bit of discussion with some of the other players on the other side. Well, the umpires continue their discussion and not sure where it's going. So the umpires who should be ruling the game, they're shaking hands with the players now. Players shaking hands and of course calling it a day. So we'll just have to wait on the official word of what it is 
But from the indication, like I said, cricketing wise, it will be a victory for Burbies by 26 runs under the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method. Hoping that that is not overturned or somehow twisted. Players are shaking hands of the respective teams and the match officials. So we've just gotten a word from the officials, the match officials, and it's indicating what we said earlier. Burbies winning this contest by 26 runs under the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method. Burbies 144 for four, replying to 226, all out paid by Esquibo when the match ended, when the match stopped at the end of the 26th over. The Duckworth Lewis calculation had Burbies if, they were, if the game would have ended at that time to be tied would have been 118. So, they were 144 for four, which means they're 26 runs ahead on the Duckworth Lewis and Stern method. And that is the end of this match. So it is the end of our coverage as well here from Border. It's the end of rung number two in the Guyana Cricket Board Senior Intercounty Men's Championship 2022. Looks as if Romario Shepard has been given the Play of the Match Award for a spectacular bowling. Four wickets and now 30 not out. So Romario Shepard, player of the match, Barbies winning by 26 runs over Esquibo. The tournament will continue on Friday with two more matches at Enmore Community Centre Cricket Club. Demraro will take on Esquibo right here at Border. Barbies will be back in action against the President's Eleven. Barbies, two wins from two matches. Demraro and Esquibo, one win from two matches each. President's Eleven, two matches, two defeats. So that's the end of round number two. Friday at 9 a.m., the next set of matches will begin. Round number three, the final preliminary round match. And then on Sunday, right here at Border, the top two teams will clash in the final. My name is John Ram Singh on behalf of Machu Kisun and Jermaine Nablet. Thank you for your time. To your that, saying Sunil Ramlal, Ronaldo, McGarrell. And everyone else who has assisted technically, we thank them very much. We thank you for your company. Until Friday, it's goodbye.